Man, I, I got to tell you, I really like that music. I don't know why. <clears throat> I'm sorry, my voice is a little shot. Um, I'm helping it today, but before I, I, I can't say anything more, um, my, my voice is actually gone. Uh, first, rum and coke night. I am drinking night, but I, 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 you know, people say that Steve never admits he's wrong. I was wrong, and I'm going to apologize to Cheshire on air. Probably the first time ever happened. Probably the last. Um, but but Cheshire, are you there? Because I owe you a, 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 an apology here. Ready? Yes, you're there? Yeah, I, okay, I'm here. So, I'm probably not going to accept it, though. Probably not, because you're a real, well, you're a goblin. All right, so anyways, you can see I've got, like, my cannonated dry here, right? Right? Yeah. So I got cannon, well, you, I don't know if you can see it. It's a little small. The outside can see it better, because I, I have a little window. So I got, so the I other, yeah, I told you that I was out of, like, my rum. I ran out of rum, because I finished the dark rum, and I thought I finished the, the spiked rum. But as you can see from the outside, I was incorrect. I actually have a little bit left. So I lied to you because I'm a dirty, dirty, dirty liar. Uh, you should never rely on me for anything. I'm untrustworthy and I kick puppies. So I have put that in my, my smug. I'm drinking what's called a uh, Captain Morgan. And a you know what? Screw it. Let's be done. Internet's over. Go home. But this is basically a Moscow mule, but it's with spice rum instead. Uh, normally on a Moscow mule, what is it? Ginger beer and... Uh, Oh my God! What is it? I know I had one the other day. Copernicus five dollars. Mensa Canada should donate to Steve to apologize to the Glober community for supposedly allowing Orphan Red into their now questionable membership. Orphan Red is a po, by the way. We've already established this. I don't believe she thinks. But anyways, first things first. What are you guys drinking? I'm just finishing off what I was drinking before, which is just water. Lightweight. All right. Fine. Be that way. Um, <laughs> Lawrence, what are you drinking? Hey, sorry. I was just trying to uh, hear you guys. I couldn't hear you guys for a while. Uh, I am drinking my absolute favorite rum. Which is Captain Morgan's? Uh, yes. Captain Morgan's uh, Cannon Blast. Well, this is close. Although, Not as good as that. I, I I just picked up, uh, I don't know if any of you guys watch wrestling, but Chris Jericho's A Little Bit of the Bubble. I do not. I do not. It's fantastic. But uh, we, have a, we have a guest here, which I'll introduce in a second, but let me get to Vegan Atheist first. Vegan! Hi, how are you? It's been a while. I, just, I know. I poured myself a drink, though I'm really excited. Um, let's see. It why, is why are you not on camera? How can I use you for views if you don't go on camera? Oh, it should be there. No. She is certainly on camera. Wait, I, don't see I don't see her. You don't see me? No. It's because you're blind. No, oh, literally, the outside's not seeing squint, it either. Squint a little more. Squint right. a little more, Steve. I right. see I see Do I don't know what the hell am I look I don't know what the hell this is. It's a screenshot or something. What? I think you just screen sharing. Oh, oh yeah. just your screen sharing. Oh, that's why. See, was it just me? Call me a liar. See that, Lawrence? You just think I'm lying to you? Okay. Yes. <laughs> I'm a dirty, dirty lying. Lying boy. Um, so, Chesh, um, can you like hold off for a second? I'm showing off my art. <laughs> and it's really very good. Thanks. Yes, you're, you're pro. I wish I could draw like that. I'm jealous. I can draw Stewie. I can draw. Uh, I can draw a stick figure. That's about it. Can you sound like Stewie? <laughs> no. Hey, there you go. There she is. Uh, you guys are gonna... Now I can see her. Now, now there we can go. use her for views. <laughs> right. So I'm actually drinking uh, some whiskey. Nice. See. Is that the whiskey you um, bought the other day specifically for this rum and coke night tonight? That's right. It's bourbon whiskey. So I'm really excited. She wasn't kidding too. She was really kind of prepared for this. She was like all proud last week, like a week, like so five excited. days ago. Saying, Steve, I've got whiskey for rum and coke night. I'm like, but it's rum night. But you I don't care. Yeah, <laughs> <you're right>. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to juice our guests. Nice and then too. We're going to juice, uh, um, you know what? I'm going to pronounce this wrong, but it's Vegeta. Marari uh, Vegeta. Are you still getting Vegeta wrong? I, you know, I can't Vegeta. do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Words with V bother me. Oh, don't worry. Fight the flight. I mispronounced it in the most horrid way I've ever heard. All right, how do you? Okay, because I sent him a super. We are. We are. This is your virginal <laughs> debut. You've never been on a live hangout before. We're popping your cherry. 
So for yep. in perpetuity, how do you pronounce your name? It's just easier if you call me Myrai. Myrai. That's the first part. That's not Myrai. easier. Myrai. My, and then rye, like Myrai. bread. Oh, Myrai. Myrai. Okay, Myrai. I can do that. See, phonetically, I can do that. That makes a lot more sense. Myrai. So, yeah. Myrai, I've known you a long while. It's just that you haven't really ever popped into one of our Hangouts before. Well, usually I'm a sleeper. I'm already playing Star Wars, and I don't want to stop playing. I don't blame you. No, I don't blame you at all. But you're now officially um, in the in the group. Yay! Yay! You get, you get prize. Sorry. You get prize. I regret uh, this decision soon enough. Oh yeah, most people usually do. Every year yeah. is a what is it, what do we call it? The culling and cultivating. It happens. But a uh, couple things. One, as you can see, I am monetized through the membership benefits now. Yay! I, I, you know what? I, yeah. I guess I was for a while. I just had to activate it. I don't know. I didn't, I really never cared enough to pay attention much to it. But it's like the latest cool thing, right? So, but I will tell people, uh, I'm never going to turn it to members only chat. That's not going to ever happen unless obviously trolls, you know, you, you actually do need to do it if you're overwhelmed. But I have my mods for that. I don't see ever having to, I'm never going to do a, a grab there, like that. It's there ridiculous. are times where it might or may not be utilized in an extreme situation, right. but in general, it's just happen. Right. So if you want to become a, a member, uh, I've, I set up like two, five, ten. Uh, 20 and stuff like that. I'm not expecting too many of the high end stuff, but you know, just for two, five dollars a month, that's I'm thrilled to death. It gives you a little symbol and you know, put you as a member. And uh, I appreciate it. Like I said, I've had people that have been with this channel for seven and a half years, like from my original hangout, still. Like Scott Spangler was in my original hangout. Um, uh, Chucky Darwin was my original hangout. He's in the army now, but he'll be back soon. But uh, he comes around. I mean, I've been, I've been lurking for a long time. It's not anybody's members or anything okay so what was the first thing you looked on i my very very first introduction I, it was a g-man thing that's all i remember oh you were watching g-man mm-hmm who's got all the pop count noise helios is that you is that me i think it's helios by the way thank you for becoming a member Ooh. helios yeah, you're welcome. My pleasure. You are the man. Uh, also got Manya as a member. Copernicus uh, was my first member. He will always be my first, by the way. You always remember your first, don't you? Sort of. Aww. I know. Aww. By the way. God's Auditor. Before you join. We move Thank on. you, God's Auditor. Yep. Go ahead. Before we move on, since no one else is doing this, Myra, renegade for life. <laughs> I, can't, I can't imitate the laugh, but I am the hype. I am hype. I don't know what this referring to because I don't watch any of this stuff. I'm too just I'm just out of it, I guess. I'm not That's a little cool too kids. deep in the nerd culture for you. Probably. So let me okay, see. Here. Um, <laughs> so, anyways, uh, we're gonna be hopefully talking about science as soon as we get some science people in here. I I sent out the link to like forty people, <laughs> so it takes a while for them to like come on in. But I figured we could do some science talk because people want science nowadays and. I got some science videos, but the thing is, is my science videos don't really watch that much. Um, they'll get like 300 views. It was like, well, we love the science to get 300 views. I'm like, okay. I mean, I don't mind that. It's just, it's, it's kind of funny that they say, well, we want the uh, science, but they never really um, watch those things. But you know what? I like them better too. So I do it for me. Um, but I figure I got to know what kind of science that people want to see, uh, who to get on for next year. Cause I know a lot of people, what, what, what do they want to watch um, about? I got a bunny. You want to, That's a big ass bunny. This is a big ass bunny. I mean, that is a, a that is a gargantuan size. It's bunny. A dog. Everybody meet Hagrid. Aw. Oh yeah, of course. Why would it? Why would that not surprise us? Right. Why wouldn't his name be Hagrid? Yeah. He is a Hagrid. Giant. Just right, right out of Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> Was was that the birth name of uh, Ray, Ray, Ray before she was? I don't know. Is she by the way, is she a Skywalker? She is, isn't she? Ray. Roundabout. No. Yeah. Well, she's not. She is. Kind of. Kind of. This is why I hate the movies. No, just... This is why I hate Star Wars. No spoilers. <laughs> What's in the comics? Yeah, I really hate the. Those really are hate Though Darth Revan is. 
Who is that? Darth Revan? He's from the uh, Star Wars games. Oh. What happened to Vader? That's the only one I really know. Maybe Maul. Oh. I remember him. Darth Maul. Did, did you not see the, um, uh, the Return of the Jedi? Yeah, yeah, years ago. Well, I'm pretty sure we know what happened to Vader then, right? Oh, no, no, because, <laughs> yeah. no, 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 no. Lucas did a Hobie vision and he came back in the sky with Yoda and he's all, you know. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's a ghost. <laughs> okay, but no one what ever What happens to make you a ghost, Steve? <laughs> you die. Yeah, by the way, we got Dr. Kroon in the live chat there, who is a science dude who I invited to this, but unfortunately his voice is worse than mine right now. He's sick. So we were going to talk about astrophysics and black holes and all kinds of stuff, but we're going to have to settle for like, what's somebody asked, what's your opinion on quantum gravity? Yeah, I, I wouldn't be the person to ask about quantum gravity. Dr. Kroon would be, though. Yeah, that's a little out of my depths. Um, a lot out of my decks, actually. Uh, I barely understand above basic math. Uh-uh. What, what is dark <laughs> matter, in my opinion? I okay, read well, a single book on quantum gravity years ago. Okay, you're the expert then. What do you want? You answer I, the question. I don't think I'm the expert. I barely remember it. Well, we it's got a, something about loop quantum gravity. Loop quantum gravity, yeah. Um, somebody asked, uh, that's required in like string theory, if I thought. But somebody asked what dark matter is, in my opinion. Uh, okay, my opinion, then we'll have... Uh, Dr. Kroon in the live chat since he can't talk. He'll go, Steve, you're an idiot, or sure, I agree with you. Uh, dark matter to me is non-baryonic matter. It is it is something that doesn't have photons that are released from it, so it doesn't have any kind of light emitting, so it is uh, something that's in, uh, basically universally inert. Nothing really interacts with it, and it doesn't uh, reabsorb or emit uh, any kind of photonic, photonic energy, so it's dark. So it's some kind of matter that's not based upon... Um, uh, hadrons, it's not based upon, you know, protons and neutrons, electrons. It's some type of a matter out there, uh, but it is something that is invisible because it doesn't absorb nor release photons. That's kind of what I think is probably the most likely thing. And Dr. Kroon could probably say if that's close enough or that's, I'm an idiot. We're going to say wimps, whatever. We, we can intera weakly interacting, what is it, matter particles? Yeah, we do through the weak reacting mass of particles. Yeah, through the weak nuclear force only. Yeah, that's why they're wimps because it, the weak nuclear force is what controls weak nuclear decay. For example, if you have beta decay, gamma decay, alpha decay, uh, these these processes are because you have uh, what's called intermediate vector bosons or WZ uh, particles that will cause the decay to, to mediate for the decay. These are bosons are force vectors or force particles. So if you have like a um, like gravity, the force particle is graviton, right? Right. So, so for, oops, got a feedback there. For weak nuclear decay, you have uh, Z and W bosons. Um, if you have um, like light uh, gra uh, electromagnetic radiation, the force carrier is photons. So these are bosons. So every force has a, a boson that's attached to it. Again, Dr. Kroon, halfway, you know, he'll, he'll correct me on here. I'm you want to tell me again why I didn't pre-drink for this? I told you we're doing science tonight. Oh, wait. I'm a liar, though, because I had rum, and I lied to Cheshire about it because I thought it was empty, and it wasn't. Cheshire will never forgive me. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry, Chesh. I mean, I thought we had I believe you if I it. gave a shit if I believed you or not. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. That's, Chesh doesn't care one way or another. She, she's expecting people to lie to her. That's what she likes. The message of reveals is the member too, by the way. Thank you, message of reveals. Hey. hey, I have a specific thing when it comes to when it, when it comes to people. I trust people to be people. I trust people to act in a way that I have witnessed them act before. So, if somebody acts within their what I would expect from their character, I trust them to do that. Yeah, well, I get that. But uh, that's about it. Now I'm watching uh, for more questions here. Um, Cheshire, Steve, apologizing. You got to get him right where you want him. Yeah, use it to your advantage. It doesn't happen often. But I got to tell you, this really is good. Um, it, it is uh, like a Moscow mule, but it's with ginger, ale, and um, spiced rum. A lot better than I thought it was going to be, actually. Ginger ale and spiced rum is a good combo. Yeah, that's it's actually delicious. Good. 
Uh, Tom says, have astronomers ever observed violent shifts like they have blue shifts or red shifts? I don't know what that question means, um, but I can tell you what a blue shift, red shift is. Um, when light violent shifts violent. like where it's, violent. Where it's like in the violet stretch to oblivion <laughs> well ultraviolet yeah i mean what happens what happens is if you have something that's traveling away from you um it'll be red shifted if you're traveling toward you it's blue shifted now normally if things are red shifted <laughs> such a degree it'll actually go, leave the visible light spectrum and go into infrared that's why if something falls into like a black hole um, you will actually never see it once it hits the red event horizon fall into the black hole what you see it will be dissipating as it turns from visible light to infrared light. Red light. Dr. Kroon, is that correct? So a violet shift would be the opposite. So if you have a blue shift and you get a high, in, you know, blue shift would be coming toward you and it shifted so much, it would be shifted into the ultraviolet spectrum. And I think that's what the question he's asking. So if it's, if it's oh, coming well, oh to God. us. I thought he said violent. Violent, oh, violet, like ultraviolet. Okay, that makes way more sense. Yeah, so if it's blue and it's coming toward you and it shifts from visible blue to ultraviolet and it's going away from you, it'll shift from red to infrared. Is that correct, isn't Dr. That, Kroon? Isn't that how they were, like, when they were calculating the age uh, from the Big Bang, they were looking at the red shift and blue shift? Y yeah, we can... We can well, we it was don't... microwaves, so they were stretched out a lot. A lot. Okay. Yeah, my, the cosmic microwave background radiation, right? Oh, I feel like we're attacking Dr. Kroon while he can't defend himself. Oh, he calls the violet shift the same thing as a blue shift. I don't know about that. I mean, he, he's the expert, but I my terminology is different because I would say that a blue shift, it's a violet shift. All violet shifts are blue shifts, but not all blue shifts are violent shifts, right? Because all blue, all red shifts, um, all infrared would be a red shift, but not all red shifts will be into the infrared spectrum. Again, that's just how I things, but what do I know? <laughs> yeah, nobody calls it a violent shift. <laughs> it's just a blue shift. Yeah, that's well. I'm just I'm interpreting his questions, Doctor Kroon. Seth, after I asked him a question, he answered you. <laughs> Prendergast thinker, two dollars. Steve, commercial nuke fusion by 2050, ever or never. You know, there was supposed to be in by 2025 a fusion reactor that was about the size of a trash can. Ironically enough, the reactor I work with was was E2G, which meant uh, destroyer second uh, first destroyer second generation combustion uh, general electric uh, d2g and so there was supposed to be a fusion reactor that was supposed to be on the market by 2025 and they seem to have got fusion reactors to work and that are not uh, they're not oh god Keep i had a cat on my headphone thing uh, hey nikki get my get in here um but yeah i i think i think fusion is the way to go i mean if they can overcome certain things and somebody, I just read an article the other day that they've really kind of um, think they've harnessed the power to do it. But a lot of it deals with the magnetic containment because you have to have a high temperature heat. And if you have any, any kind of magnetic flux, that's, that's not um, strong. It'll, it'll find the plasma will find its way through that plasma, that, that weak point in the magnetic field and burn through whatever it is. That's not good. You, you How know, did he you get know. in here? King Steve Hogan. No, you cannot eat the cat. I mean, the, the cat. You can't eat the rabbit. Yeah, you'd have to get through me. And remember, I was a gunner's mate, so. I've had rabbit. It's good. Hey, We've had rabbit in the I Navy. like it. It's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I'm talking with a guy on a project that maintains they will have commercial fusion within two years. Not commercial. I don't, don't think commercial. Maybe. I'm, let me commercial see. as in like, commercial for businesses or commercial for con like the average consumer yeah res instance welcome to the right hand person oh my god thank you man you pick one of the higher levels thank you res by the way going forward like in like 2020 you know um as you, the longer you've been a member you get like more benefits and stuff like that i figured out something we can do but um I, I, I like the fact that it's green and it shows that people are actually supporting the channel because it looks like you go to some of these other channels um, of people that are not people that I would ever support in my life. And you see all these green stuff and it's like, really? Really supporting these types of people? Okay, whatever. <laughs> whatever. I, I, what are you going to do, right? But thank you, God's Auditor. I still have God's Auditor Scotch, though. I haven't finished that out. I have a Glen Live at 12, which after I finish this, I'll crack open that. How, do, you, how do we know that's true you lied about the alcohol last time 
<laughs> yeah. Fair point. Fair point. I'll always be known as the alcohol liar. <laughs> um, Got to have a chat with you offline about this blue violet shift issue. Sure. To me, there's really no difference. I mean, uh, a violet shift would be a blue shift. But I'm just saying, with his question, I can see why he was talking about shifting to the the you know the violet ultraviolet. But whatever. Um, I don't see like a, a real main difference. Uh, how would you explain the Heisenberg uncertainty principle? Um, what is it? Delta X, delta M is greater than or equal to H bar over. 2 pi? Is that it, Dr. Crone? It's been a while. But the Heisenberg, I'm doing it by memory, by the way. Actually, I'm drinking. Uh, Heisenberg's certain principle basically states that you can never know the exact position and a uh, exact position and momentum of a particle um, 100%. So if you know more about one's position, you lose uh, information as regard to the momentum. If you know the momentum with any great precision, then you lose, you have imprecision with the position. That's Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. And it's one of a couple different... There's another uncertainty principle, too, called the energy time uncertainty principle as well. But I need to present for a second because I have Go to ahead. ask the chat a question. I need, background, I need a choice for a background color. So if you guys could uh, let me know what I should do for the background, that'd be great. I was going to go with Vegan Atheist as the background, but this is me. Vanta Black. <laughs> no, I was thinking like a bright ass fucking purple. I was I, you read my mind. I swear to God, I was thinking the same thing. I, not, I'm I, oh yeah, I'm a liar. But I, I seriously, purple was the way I was gonna say too. Like a like a, a royal purple no, color. Like this kind of bright purple, like the magenta -y pink, or like this kind of bright. Oh, like that. That, that the darker royal purple. Darker, yeah. Yeah. Well, violet, since that's what y'all were just talking about with the shift colors. Right yeah. there, you go. Science and <laughs> art. Like what? Like what do you think the inside of a fairy's vagina would look like? <laughs> well, oh, well, that's gonna be that's gonna be a little bit of extra work. What would you, what would you, wait, what would you use? A pair of tweezers to open that? As the fairy. Like that big? Yeah, go with purple. How do you describe quantum entanglement? Jesus Christ, I'm not a quantum dude. Why do people ask me quantum questions? <laughs> quantum entanglement's so fucking weird. Okay, so <laughs> go for you, it. Uh, I know. So if you have two particles that are entangled, and you know the like uh, the you know which direction one is facing, then you know the other one immediately. And it's not like I don't know. I, I don't think it's a causal thing because then in that case you have to be able to move faster than the speed of light. But they're they're entangled somehow. I don't understand, and nobody understands it. But if you know uh, what one like what direction one is pointing into the spin, I'm not 100 percent sure well, on that. Uh, then you know the other one. Quantum entanglement just means that they're superimposed to act in the same quantum state. So when you have something that's uh, in a that are that, that, okay. In a quantum state, means they have the same wave function. They haven't, they haven't been um, what's called decohesion. Deco decohesion. Decohesion when you have decoupling of the of the quantum state and they're no longer entangled. But as you said, if you have like something like I think it's I think it's cesium one thirty seven. Again, Doctor Kroon could just fill us in here, but cesium one thirty seven or some similar cesium uh, will produce two particles: one photon going to the right, one photon going to the left. One will be hundred spin up, the other will be spin down. So if you measure with spin one, you automatically know the spin of the other. Um, but quantum, you, the thing you're talking about, whether it's like a causal, that's called local realism. And local realism is basically the position. Like I said, I have no, I have no idea because like not a, not a quantum physicist here. I, I don't I don't accept quant a local realism. But local realism is that you have a particle that actually travels from one particle to the other. Um, and it's within um, uh, what's called locality. So it's not actually going faster than the speed of light, but you have something going from one particle. to Some information is being transferred from one particle to the other. I don't think that's the case. Um, I think that most theories will break local realism. Um, in fact, I think all of them violate um, locality, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but Dr. Kroon, is that right? I think all of them, but one violate locality. I don't even remember on the uh, pilot wave theory for... Um, Bomia mechanics. I mean, it, it it might make sense if it were act, were interacting with like a separate field, because like I I subscribe to QFT, so I feel like that might you know have some explanatory power. But I don't you, know. You think there's an interaction between two particles that way? Because you can't use the you can't use two entangled particles to really communicate it. Um, wouldn't do any good because anything you do to describe to disturb one 
you, you would have to know ahead of time and you couldn't actually right. know ahead of time. So it doesn't, you can't really get any information from two entangled particles. I, I would love if we actually had a quantum physicist here because all I've ever learned about quantum mechanics is just things I've read up on books that I've you know, read myself. So I can't guarantee that I have any knowledge that it's actually accurate. I may just be misunderstanding. Um, but couldn't you theoretically use quantum mechanics to break the uncertainty principle? As long as you use two separate measuring devices? No. And let me explain why. But pilot wave, somebody says pilot wave doesn't violate locality. Okay. I wasn't sure about that. I think the other ones do. Um, but pilot wave doesn't violate locality, but does violate realism, right? Um, my unfinished journey for $2. Hot chai with a splash of Christian Brothers apple brandy. Oh, damn. Somebody's going high class tonight. Wow. Um, that's nice. Um, but uh, no, uh, Heisenberg uncertainty principle is, is is fundamental. Um, that fact, one of the the papers out there that shows the universe could have been created from a, a what's called a metastable false vacuum. The the fluctuation, the quantum fluctuations would have been produced because of an uncertainty principle called the energy time uncertainty principle, which is very similar to Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. So these are fundamental things of reality. I think there's no way of violating them. I don't believe. I don't see how you could ever violate them. Yeah, Dr. Kroon's like, I can teach quantum mechanics, but not not over a 200-character chat. But go for it. <laughs> what is the bottom of the black hole? The server That question's kind of um, nonsensical because there's no bottom of a black hole. There's no there's no directionality. Uh, black holes only have three things to it called an O'Hare theorem. You have uh, mass, angular momentum, and charge. Those are only three things that remain after something goes in a black hole. Everything's converted into just mass, charge, and angular momentum. But again, Dr. Kroon is in the live chat. We were going to talk about this stuff, but, you know, his voice is worse than mine, so he won't come in. Original Nielsen had a really cool um, topic in the chat. What's that? I didn't, Nikki, you're on my mailing list. You didn't check your email, but I will give you the, I will give you the directly because you're just cool like that. There you go. Now what? This still didn't hear a word you said. The Steve's playing favorites. I do. <laughs> I have favorites. Uh, what's your opinion on LIGO? LIGO is cool as hell. Uh, LIGO is awesome. There's also it's the, the, so precise. It is done to such a T. It is incredible there's gonna that be, we have created something like that. There's going to be one in outer space one of these days too. It's not called LIGO. It's something similar. Um, I go, but uh, yeah, LIGO, you, space edition. Yeah, exactly. Can you imagine though a LIGO in space where you don't even have any kind of perturbations whatsoever? Because you have you, even with LIGO, you had to be somewhere where it was uh, not going to be vibrational because you have to, you have to account for all that. But in space, Ooh, yeah, you're, LIGO. Uh, LIGO is a light interferometer. Uh, hang on, God's order to two dollars drinking. The Balvin Doublewood Single Bot, 12 year. Damn. He, he's got good taste in alcohol. Unplugged for Worldly yeah. Thinking. Became a beginner. Thank you for becoming a member. Unplugged Worldly Thinking. Uh, I got a tough stuff, so I'm just going to show you guys what I did while, uh, while this was going on. Go for it. Boop, boop, boop. Do, do, do. Oh, that's captions. Yeah. <laughs> Ta-da. I'm waiting. Excited. Oh, they see exactly. Perfect. I like the way that came out. See, we picked a good color for you, huh? Yeah. Like but the only color. thing, Chesh, is because you have dark hair with a dark shirt, you can't see her tits. Fuck, you can't. I like it there, but uh... yeah, I just need more highlight. And, and why are you looking yeah. at those anyways? Does, did she give you permission to? Yes. Okay. You can always do the sexualizing the cartoon. Window. There you go. All right. So oh, you asked about LIGO. LIGO is a laser interferometer, um, G laser interferometer gravitational wave um, observatory. And what that does is it, it, there's a couple of them. And when it, when black holes converge, right, and again, uh, Dr. Kroon, let me know, um, 
Fail, uh, failure in engineering, two dollars. Yeah. Emmett work missing this amazing live. Well, you're here with us in spirit, girl. You're here, here with us in spirit. But so, who even is she? Why is she here in part of this conversation? She has a master's degree in, electro, in electrical engineering. We need to get her in. We need to talk about electrical engineering because I, I like that subject too. All right, so long story short, when two black holes converge, um, there's like a, a, a bell ringing that occurs and a lot of the mass is converted into gravitational waves. And so when the, when the first one they detected, there was, I, I don't know the exact masses, but there was about three solar masses of energy that was directly converted from mass into gravitational waves. When, when it went through LIGO, it made a very specific signature, a very specific ringing pattern that they were looking for. They were saying, if we detect the collision of two black holes, this is what that signature would look like. And what, not only did they detect it, though, they had the same signature halfway around the world, almost at the same time, because the wave passed through us, right? So it, it was clearly from outer space. It hit the, hit the LIGO, then it hit another one, and they both had the same signature. This was clearly a, a cataclysmic event of two black holes hitting each other and all that energy going into gravitational waves. How cool is that? So wasn't it? It wasn't them actually colliding. That's not the signal we picked up. It's, you know, it's the ring before, the, actually. Yeah, it's yeah. the moment before when right. they're rapidly spinning around each other. They're right. throwing off waves, kind of like someone rapidly throwing pebbles into a pond. Right. Yeah, that's the that's the bell ringing. It's, it, the actual gravitational waves it, it comes from right before they meet. Um, happy New uh, Year. Yeah, Geo Sam says twenty dollars. Thanks. Happy New Year. Thank you, buddy. Uh, All right, I got to take off. I'll see you guys later. We love you. Bye. I love Bye. you too, Steve. You're the greatest. Whatever. Okay. We love you, Chess. See you next year, by the way, because I don't think I'm going to do another hangout between now and then, obviously. Um, let's see. What other Cosmic rays, let me ask about. Okay, so we'll give this one to Milwaukee Atheist. Tell us how muons decay changes because of general relativity. Um, because normally they have about 20, 22 microseconds, I guess. And it goes down to about two microseconds. They, no, excuse me. They have about two microseconds. They live and it goes about 22 microseconds because of gravity, uh, what's called general theory of relativity. Why is that? I have no idea. Why don't you tell me, Steve? Ah. well, I will do that since we're doing science. There's something called the Lorentz transformations or Lorentz contraction. It is the formula L equals one divided by the square root of one minus V squared divided by C squared. And what that formula does, it gives you a factor called the Lorentz factor. And since these particles traveling near the speed of light, when you're traveling near the speed of light, time dilates. And so the amount of time from the cosmic ray hitting the atmosphere to where it hits the earth is, is, is much longer to us because we're seeing down a slowing down effect. We're actually seeing that particle last much longer in decay than it normally would to itself. That is called the time dilation factor. So that's a, that's a way we can put general relativity into practice. Um, and satellites do the same thing for GPS. Actually, it's funny. We confirmed time dilation is a real thing with GPS satellites because when they initially launched the GPS satellites, they didn't include um, general relativity um, equations in there for time dilation. And slowly but surely, the GPS satellites began going extremely off as the timestamp between the satellites and the ground weren't the same. Yeah, this, the general relativity and special need to be accounted for GPS, obviously, because one, you're at a higher altitude, so you have less gravity. So obviously, general relativity takes into, has to be taken into account. Special relativity has to be taken into account because they're moving pretty damn quick. Um, most of the time, special relativity doesn't really have much of an effect. So you get to about 0.2 on the, for Lorentz contraction, which is about 20% of the speed of light. Well, actually, it is 20% of the speed of light. Um, prior to that, then you just use regular mathematics because everything factors out. For example, if I want to know... What is the, the time dilation between me walking to the store? Nikki? Nikki, yeah. you're, you're killing us. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, if I want to measure the time dilation to, to like for me walking to the store, it's zero. So I can use regular math for that, right? But if, I, if I'm traveling at half the speed of light, then you have relativist effects. Then you have to take into account the Lorentz contraction formula. 
Isn't science cool? Aren't you going to like this stuff next year when we do a lot of stuff with actual scientists and we talked about this stuff? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Hmm. So what does Dr. Kroon wants to ask hmm. me? Cyclotron radiation is emitted from charged particles moving in a magnetic field. It has a sharp distribution. Syn cyclotron radiation is for relativistic particles moving in a magnetic field broadband. Does anybody want to explain that? Because I can, but I'm not going to. But yeah. It, you, can you explain that, Lawrence? Anybody? Helios? Okay. So, all right. So, when you have a magnetic field, okay, a, a, you have a strong magnetic field and you got a charged particle like an electron going through it, that'll produce cycl uh, cyclotron radiation. Okay. Another type of radiation is when you have particles moving faster than the speed of light in a medium. So, in other words, it's not going faster than C, it's faster than the. The medium itself allows for light to be going in a magnetic field. A type of uh, radiation like that would be Chenyankov radiation. Chenyankov radiation is when you have charged particles moving through a magnetic field faster than the speed of light, and you get the cyclonic radiation produced from it. Uh, that's called Chenyankov radiation, and it makes this nice blue go glow in a reactor. Is that correct, Dr. Kroon? Because he won't come in here because his voice sucks. Why am I... Why am I the Q and guy guy tonight? This wasn't supposed to be my Q and A. I was supposed to have John in here. I asked him earlier. No, oh, do I have it backwards? Did I make a mistake? All right, I made a boo boo. Correct me. It happens. Oh, I okay. I did fix. Okay, so I fixed it. He says no. I'm, it wasn't right. Now I'm right. So I must have fixed something. If we were talking about Bible stuff, I could answer a whole bunch of questions. Yeah. But we're talking about science, I can answer less questions. Oh, right. Chenyakov, Chenyakov radiation is irrelevant. Um, well, it's, it's Chenyakov radiation is when you have um, charged particles moving faster than the medium allows for uh, light, right? So it wouldn't be cyclone radiation. It would just be radiation due to the fact the electrons are moving fast or particles, charged particles are moving faster than the light allows for medium. And the other one, the other one I know is Bremsstrahlung. Bremsstrahlung was. Okay, Bremsstrahlung is breaking radiation. Bre Bremsstrahlung is actually producing radiation or photonic radiation because you have a change in vector of the particle in a magnetic field. Is that correct? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, no, okay, I, yeah, okay. Uh, John says, Chenyakov radiation is to describe a cyclotron and cy synchrotron are not related to that. That makes sense, you're right. Because a cyclotron radiation would be literally, uh, you have the charged particle in a magnetic field and then Cyclotron or synchrotron would be if you had uh, special relativity involved, so particles moving very, very fast in a magnetic field. Is that correct? I have to work through this myself. It's been a while. My God, I, this is spur of the moment stuff. Like I have time to, I have time to review any of this. Yeah. Can I join the chat but only use audio? You can do whatever the hell you want, dude. I'll give you the link right now. You guys want Doctor Kroon to come in here? Yes. PhD please. in astrophysics? Yes. Does that excite you? Absolutely. Do you want to get excited? <laughs> do, I have to, uh, do I have permission to talk this way with you? Yes, please. See, she pays me for Any it. Any way you want. Yeah. <laughs> I love how people white knight for other people. It's like, are you, are you, they have no idea, right? I know, right? <laughs> okay, so... Say, I, was, yeah, I was an aircraft maintainer that worked with all guys. I'm pretty sure I'm going to make them... I would make them run blushing. Oh, I never I know you're say. capable of. Yeah, you, 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 you're, <laughs> yeah, you're dangerous. I mean, same. Come on. I was a gunner's mate and uh, a fireman when I was in the Coast Guard, so I worked with all dudes. Don't you love, so don't you love military women, though? Yes. Girls with guns. Hey, Smitty, why don't you get your ass in here for a goddamn change? Come on, Smitty. Right? Right? I would love to hear him talk. Come on, Smitty. He's never, he's never been in here before. Let me break your cherry. Come on, Smitty. <laughs> you want to come in, Smitty? I will, Please, pop, Smitty? I, will pop, I will pop you so hard. Mm -hmm. I will pop you yeah. like a zit. I'll pop you better. Oh, hey. oh. Yes. will pop you harder. I don't, I don't know who this person is, but but I'll I'll do him and I'll do him well. Smitty's the one mod I keep around. Uh, that talk massive shit if you to could me. like back off, that'd be great. Because you know people can't Smitty's be critical mine. of me because they get they get blocked and shit. But I keep Smitty around as my token person that I allow it. <laughs> yeah. 
<sighs> I love it. This is, this is really a good drink, by the way, guys. Seriously, drunk drunk science is fun. I am running out, though. Um, Sean G. Hey, what's up, buddy? Hey, Sean G. By the way, um, he probably hates this, but Sean G. used to be a flat earther, and we we made him see the light. That was such a good non sick episode, too. So when people say that we don't change minds, they can kiss my ass. We do have an effect on that. I... I actually remember that non sec episode. Yep. yep. Yeah, it was such a good one. I, I it, it was so good. And yep. then the one immediately after, like, showing, you could see, like, the wheels were turning and the right questions were being asked. And he really did seem like he came in wanting to learn. And I think that that is absolutely sexy that people come in and just like well you yes. got you got to remember um i prepped a lot with sean g i was in hangouts with him on the geek room and uh i think pimp monk maybe i i don't there was something else i was with him i i, I had already explained to him all this prior so him going on the non sequitur show he was already pumped he was already primed and ready to be taken i was grooming i was grooming him with science but yeah. what happened with sean uh is though a perfect example of why we don't turn away people who disagree with us. Exactly. As long as they're actually willing to learn something. If they're just coming to be trolls and, you know, say their memes and close their ears, we don't care. But you want to learn, we'll teach you. And that's, and that's how I made my entire life. I had to block the person a day because they weren't really listening to, to the truth. They weren't really listening to things. I block people. I block you on my Facebook. I block, block you in real life. Um, I'm more, I will spend hours trying to help people to understand. Like I spent hours helping G Sanji and he knows it, but, uh, again, he always showed that he was willing to learn. He was willing to ask questions, right? That's what we're looking for. If you're not one of these people that have an open mind and you just want to run narrative, you're done. You're going to get blocked. I'm just going to tell you right here now. If you are a narrative runner, you have no business in the great debate community, no business around check, me and you being around. Hey, check. Dr. Kroon, my buddy, hey, one of my guys? besties. I love you so much in a hey, man kind of way. I just, you guys were killing my fingers. I, was, I couldn't type fast enough, and there's this annoying delay, and I'm blowing my nose and shit. So I just got to come on board and just uh, hang out for like an hour. Or we'll love see how to. it goes. Well, first of all, um, hey, you got to remember one thing, though. I have not looked at this shit in ages, so I'm pulling this out my ass as people are asking me questions. Dude, uh, I could I could provide any any info you guys want. Just don't ask doing me so about far? quantum computing. Because the best knowledge right now about quantum computing is classified, but, although not by myself. How, how am I doing so far for somebody who literally is just on the shotgunning this? Okay, you're doing good. Not bad. You're doing good, buddy. Navy Text, 37 $2. Stuart Bunn, you're my boy. So did we clear the air on the synchrotron, Brumster lung, cyclotron, yes. and all that stuff? So let me run it by you again to make sure I, I get it right, okay? Huh. Okay, ready for this? Yeah. Chanyinkov radiation is the radiation produced when you have charged particles moving faster than light in a medium. Yeah, it's sort of like, you know, like the sonic boom in air. It's essentially the luminous analog of a sonic boom Perfect. in okay. a medium. Bremstelung is breaking radiation where you have um, a particle releasing photonic energy as it changes vector in a magnetic field. Yeah, it's because like the, it's like a quadratic quantity and acceleration. So that the dentist office, they they decelerate electrons after accelerating them through a, a large potential really suddenly by uh, slamming them into the cathode and then um, picking off the residual current. But by that point, the x-rays have been produced, and it's a broadband sort of distribution that ends up going through your bones. It's all in, the, in the 165 to 250 keV range, some, some dentists use softer x-rays like 100 or as low as 65 is the, is the lowest. Now, those are going to have less them. penetrating power, though. Yeah, but it's it's certainly sensitive to different um, different bone densities and different um, like anomalies in the bone marrow and the just, just the bone material. So, um, but typically it's it's higher up, one hundred and fifty to like two hundred keV. 
So that's your Brumstrong. You know, my first two papers in grad school on the what are called X-ray time lags from accreting black hole binaries used exclusively the uh, Brumstrong radiation phenomena to sort of rewrite the books on uh, what people had been stumped on for so many decades. A little red back with the Russians. A little quick, little red, two dollars. Thank you, little red. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm glad you're sticking around since we're moving on to like sciencey stuff and um, not all that that what people call drama stuff. Although I'm sure we'll get back to it at some point. But whatever. Tonight's science. Um. All right. So those two we got out of the way. So, um, c- cyclotron radiation is when you have charged particles, um, emitting radiation in a magnetic field. Yeah, sort of like. Okay. Um... Yeah, it's a three for three. Wait, let me finish the fourth one, then you can, then we can go yeah, from there. Yeah. I want to make sure I get all out. So, and cyc- a, a synchrotron radiation is radiation that you have from special relativity from particles moving very fast in a magnetic field. Yeah. Dun dun dun. Who's your daddy? <laughs> Who's your daddy, vegan? I'm your daddy. So, so, guys, have you ever swung a a mass on a string or rope around in a Rude. circle of your head? <laughs> I love you, Nikki. <laughs> yes, uh, centripetal versus centrifugal force. Yes. Yeah. So you swing this thing around, so the tension in the in the string allows it to move in a circle. And so when you're moving charged particles around in a circle, like let's say in a cyclotron, you're using photons uh, mediating uh, the magnetic uh, force to impart a uh, a curvature force, a centripetal force on these charged particles. And, uh, and they're moving at a constant speed. So it's a very narrow band distribution of radiation, the cyclotron radiation. Uh, can you explain real quick for the audience why centripetal force is not actually a force, is an inertial force as, as opposed to a uh, centripetal force? Yeah, the centrifugal force is um, a reactionary force that you have to invoke in order to explain um, motion in a... Uh, and a non-inertial reference frame, uh, one's a frame that's accelerating where the laws of physics are, they, they look a little different. Um, like if you're looking, okay, if you're looking at a um, a person in a car as you're going around a corner, when you're that person, you feel this like force, but that's, that's the reactionary force. It's almost a matter of semantics, but it's not really an actual like force. The only force acting on you is the friction force between the road and the tires that are allowing you to move in that curved path. Without that, you just go in a straight line because there's no forces. And that friction force gets transferred all the way up to your butt. <laughs> your butt in the seat and so you uh yeah of course we're not point particles i certainly after christmas and thanksgiving i'm not a point particle maybe a blob particle and so i have a an extended distribution of matter that comprises my body and so torques can be felt about my center of mass that causes me to lean over to the side um and so you in that frame of reference you would say that there's something pushing you to the in the opposite direction of the center of the circle it's, it sure feels like that but it's a reactionary pseudo force because you're in a in a, um, a non-inertial reference frame. you have to be moving at a constant vector for um all the real forces to uh, be readily apparent to you and there's also like the coriolis force you know that's how hurricanes rotate and uh, all and there's 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 at least those two a centrifugal. And well, do, you have to, do you have to be moving at a constant vector or constant? Uh, well, because if you're if you're if, like say you're spinning something over your head, that is constantly changing your vector. Like, yeah. Uh, uh, constantly. I mean, a change of vector to anybody outside in the outside, uh, you have two components to a vector. You have a scalar magnitude and you have a direction. So if you change mm-hmm. direction or you change the scalar magnitude, you're changing a vector. Yep. Yeah. And I also Absolutely. remember. I also remember that. The orthogonal, excuse me, the the dot product of two orthogonal vectors is zero. Ha ha! Science be yeah, I took go. vector theory. I did there took I go. took vector analysis, by the way. Um, hard subject. I remember tip it's, and tail and all that kind of crap. But when you're doing the transforms, not easy. It's a little easier to think of pseudo forces when it's a linear accelerating frame. Like you're in a drag race car and you floor it, you go zero to two hundred in like what, like four, five, six seconds or whatever it is. And you're feeling like the seat is pushing on you, but you're moving forward. 
So you feel like this, you're feeling like you're getting sucked back in your seat, like there's this for, like horizontal gravity force going the opposite direction of motion. It's a reactionary uh, a pseudo force resulting from you being in an accelerating frame, a change of vector. Yep. Nick, Nikki's down today. So, Nikki, why don't you ask some science questions? We'll, we'll, we'll cheer you up with science. <laughs> we know you like science. You do like science. You're sapio. I'm kind of done with it, though. Come on, you got John Croon here, the smartest, sexiest man alive. Come on. <laughs> I mean, What's I liked wrong it with when you? he was talking about butts. <laughs> I was like, yes, more of that, please. Okay. Can you think of any science question for the guy? He went to school for like eight years to get a fucking degree in astrophysics. I'm not really butts. retaining. I'm not really retaining any it's information today. It's not for you, today. it's for us. I just like to hear it. How about literally the only like legitimate thing I want to hear about is like, I don't know. Wow. Um, right now I'm really interested in the evolution of organs. Oh. Because that was always like, yeah, I know. You realize so, he's not a biologist, opposite. right? Not, yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm telling stuff. you. Yeah. Dang, I wish I knew more about everything. I like knowing stuff. Yeah, no, I like biology too. Um, and no, I'm not reading that super chat, but thank you for the $2. Um, I, got a, way, I got a question. Well, 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 like, like the video. Come on, we got like 125 people watching. This is science. You guys say you wanted science. I'm giving you science. I have an astrophysicist on here. I'll be having other doctors and PhDs on next year. Um, and you guys aren't, aren't like liking it. So come on, we're drinking and having alcohol and talking science. Well, who the hell knows when next year is going to be? Three, three days from now. Oh, that's no. Right. no. <laughs> I do. I, 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 I have. Let's keep a, it monetized today. Inquiry. Uh, so recently, I was talking. Uh, I haven't like looked into this, but recently, I was talking to one of my buddies, and he was saying something about one of the uh, something being completely overturned in astrophysics or like at least getting to about, that point yeah you're talking about super uh you're not i'm sorry you're talking about gauge theory i think because i think i just read something um john maybe you can help us out but uh i just read that they might actually found a new boson that doesn't fit into the standard model yeah i read about that it was like 70 uh, mev mass that somehow modified um the radioactive decay rate of something i just skimmed the article because how, I was how cool state. would that be yeah that'd be pretty legit padme well curious follower thank you padme for becoming a member we're talking I, science I don't know. and doing membership drive get padme in you get padme i don't know if that was the link i don't know if that was the thing that we were talking about uh because uh they were saying that it would you know, bring our uh, questions about, you know, like the age of the universe and the distances to, to you know, galaxies, the distant galaxies into, into questions. No, it wouldn't change things like, at all. Oh, oh, I remember. I remember. I remember now uh, that uh, it was the the expansion of the universe. Like, You're talking about Hubble's constant. You're talking about the uh, Hubble's constant. Yes, yes, about Hubble's constant. But... Uh, that apparently different parts of the universe would it be expanding at different speeds yeah, and we only just recently found that out yeah i don't know what that's all about though all right john what do you got for us on that because i've also read the same the thing that, uh, that, that i've also read that in space that hubble's constant might not be homogeneous and nor actually the fine structure constant <clears throat> fine structure constant either there might be regions theoretically in space where these natural units are not what they are locality to us how would that work? Well, no, no, the fine structure constant is locked down, but there has been a lot of um, no, well, hey, um, no, because they 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 looked in two different directions and they found up to a six sigma difference um, from one directionality on the fine structure constant to the other. There's they, they might have resolved it, but there was a problem with that at one time. No, you got to show me a reference, man. That doesn't sound right. Okay. Uh, but there's uh, we're tr we're having some uh, some you. problems with the the Hubble constant right now. You hear about that? All these different space missions coming up with yeah. uh, wildly disagreeing values. And so I haven't been up to date on that, but uh, I never heard anything about uh, space expanding at different rates in different directions. I've been under the weather for over a week. So if it's if it's been in the last week or maybe even two, then I yeah, this is really new stuff. Yeah, it's really yeah. recent. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but the, the problem with the fine structure constant that's been out for quite some time. Uh, I think they might have resolved it. I don't know, but there was some talk 
that there might have been a directionality problem with the fine structure constant. But I, but recently the whole Hubble thing was only within the last week or so, because if it's because yeah. the problem with that is that if that was the case, uh, the universe would be a. It's so funny. They'll say, well, it's a lot younger than we expected. And younger creationists go, see, we told you. No, we're talking about like millions of years younger, maybe a billion or something. But it's not like going to get you down to 6,000 years, regardless. <laughs> you need a factor oh, of like God. 22 million <laughs> times change to that was constant or something like that. Yeah. Oh, but you know, but you, dude, you know as well as I do, younger creationists will latch onto anything, right? They'll be like, look, yeah. we told you so. No. Yeah. No. Oh. Key difference between a young earth creationist and a scientist. We hear we've just discovered something which may completely destroy everything that you learned, and we think I would love neat. that. I would love that. <laughs> yeah. Would it be awesome to have a whole new theory out there that just obliterated relativity? Yes, yeah. that would be amazing. That's a true scientist that could find something new and go, "Hey, we have something new to explore." I mean, That's like John. That's what, what? That's why we give out the the Nobel prizes and stuff like oh, that. Yeah, yeah. That actually, um, prove and turn things uh, upside down. It's, it's what makes the the search for knowledge um, exciting and interesting. On top of the gaining of the knowledge. Original says for five dollars. You didn't thank me for joining. Thank me, damn it! I now own your ass. Two nine nine AUD a month. I'm your sugar mommy. Thank you. Christine, we appreciate it. We love you. Uh, keep it, keep um, keep Twitter alive for me because uh, I, I my Twitter's down for a while. Um, I'm keeping it that way for a while, at least after vacation. Um, oh my God, you guys don't even know how much quieter it's been with no Twitter. Oh, I don't know why I didn't do that sooner. Twitter's a cesspool. I have never used Twitter. You ain't missing much. Yeah. Show us your face, point blank. Uh, I um. Are you sexually uh, harassing? You have to ask them permission. If you can, you can sexually harass me, and I can sexually harass you. I see my picture from my icon. Could you guys not see that? Mm. Just see your picture. I want to see your live face. Can, can she harass you? Is you okay my with that? Hold on, let me let me do a face check real quick. I guess that's a yes. Oh my god, hell no! <laughs> well, the man's really sick. Cares. Why would you do that to him? Do you like to go on camera when you're sick? <laughs> And by the way, I've seen you at your I best mean, and your worst, okay? Come on. Uh, hey, Steve, just show yeah. my picture. You see that right there at the top of your screen? In the top right? Mm -hmm. There's a little thumbnail of my, my goofy self smiling like a crazy person. By the way, Sean says, how do I get onto the panel sometime? Okay, good news and bad news. Um, I, ha I had a Google group that all these names were in there where I can just send out one email and they all get it, which I did today. But... I can't access that group for some strange reason. Uh, my admin, Paul, hasn't figured out why. We're making a new group. So nobody's been added to that group for like two weeks. Maybe three. So anybody who's wanted to well, join that group can't, can't, because uh, I can't figure out how to add them. <sighs> Mr. Sirius says, Steve's the reason why I signed into Twitter. Thanks, Steve. You, you're going to blame me for that, Sirius? You serious, serious about that, that I'm the person why you went to Twitter? <laughs> Don't blame me for that. That is on you, man. You. I, I cannot be held accountable for that. Um, you should know what Twitter's like. Bragwin, welcome to the cult. Curious followers. Yay, Bragwin. Uh, got another follow. Got another member. Going to be green across the board. Steve, what are your thoughts on the ancient astronaut theory? Just curious. <laughs> Um, okay, I don't know if Dr. Kroon knows this, but back in the day, John, I actually was reading books by a guy named um, uh, Richard C. Hoagland and Eric Von Donikin. Recognize those names? Uh, no. Oh, you're going to hate this. The Eric Von Donikin wrote two books, and I read both of them. One was called In Search of Ancient Astronauts, and the other one was called Chariots of the Gods. And they were promoting the idea that um, we were, had been visited by ancient astronauts, and they used the most ridiculous methodological approaches to run a narrative. Um, and as a kid, I didn't say, I can't say I didn't buy into it, but I was leading toward it. I was like, you know, this is really cool. It's in a book. Must be true, right? As a kid. <laughs> and so like Richard T. Hargland, he started a group called the Enterprise Mission. And he ran a narrative that there was a face on Mars in the Sardonia region. And he made a living. Yeah, he milking made a people. living milking people. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah. So, so he was a big, big time scammer. Yeah, you, that sounds pretty. You don't remember that? Swifty. I don't remember any of that. Wow. I don't remember what I had for dinner last night. Are you really that out of it? I mean, <laughs> but, we're like, we're but like he's a up. he's a renowned scientist. <laughs> uh, this isn't really science play, but somebody had asked me what the Mandela effect was, which is something that we will be doing. He's probably on the non sequitur show. The Mandela effect was actually started because there was a um, person who thought that Man Nelson Mandela was dead, rather than in reality, he was um, he was in prison, but he was released. But he he was never he, he wasn't dead. So this was a false memory that they had, right? So they have done studies on false memories and how people do not uh, their memories form very very bizarrely. And how their memories inform, and so they do not remember things according to reality as actually it happened, but they remember it to their own narrative. And, oh, I read about that. Yeah, they did a study on this a long time ago. Um, it was Sigmund Freud that actually worked on it actually years ago, but they did it. They did a study where um, they would have people watch this, this, these car crashes, right? And they would have like, a, I think it was 100 or 150 people that did these car crash, watch these videos. And the car crash was a video, right? This was testing your memory. And how they described the car crash, whether they said it was the two vehicles were smashed together, they bumped each other, they touched each other. And they would show videos that one was like 30 miles an hour, one was like 40 miles an hour and different speeds. And they have found that people remembered things differently on what they heard about the video. So if, I, if you watch the same video, and we, we like two cars crashing at 30 miles an hour. And they said, uh, hey, did you see any glass? Right. Was there any glass that was on the ground? Broken glass. The people that had been told that two cars smashed together said yes. The people that heard the two cars had a fender bender said no. Those there was are, also, Those are false memories. Those lead into the Mandela effect. There was also something that I was reading on where they did a study on um, kind of similar uh, deja vu where if you have like say a routine and you're constantly doing the same things the the reason why you sometimes have feelings of like deja vu is because it's the memory that you get it, it's almost just like a placeholder and so as long as there's something similar so they took like these scenes um in a parking lot that were pictures that is uh, from their daily lives. And so when they had a sense of deja vu, it was because it wasn't the exact same as their daily routine, say a parking lot at their work, but it would be something that was similar, like maybe the outline or whatever. And so it gets imprinted into the same memory. I heard something differently. I heard that the, the that might be true, but the way I remember it, the deja vu is because you have a biocular, you have, you know, your two eyes. And so light would reach one eye a little bit faster than the other eye, or at least your brain would process it a little bit differently. And so your, your brain, which thinks really quickly, recognizes one image before it does the other. And you have this um, deja vu effect. But again, who the hell knows, right? But that's how I remember it. It had to do with how the light hits your eyes. But anyways, this is a really good drink, by the way. How do you guys I like it? I got a funny Mandela effect story. Uh... Yeah, Don I Imus. I thought he watching. was dead a long time ago. He died yesterday. Don Imus. I, don't know I thought the guy died that. ages ago. Yeah. Don Imus. I'm missing the morning. No idea what you're even talking about. Oh my god. Oh. Okay. Anyways, I uh, in the so morning. I was he was watching. A, he was a shock rock like um, like um, Howard Stern. Anyways, go ahead. Uh, I was what? This is a while ago. I was watching a video done by this uh, done by this girl who said that uh, like that uh where's a uh, fermi lab uh that she said that that was like a mandela effect kind of thing because like she doesn't remember there being a fermi lab in chicago i'm like fermi lab is always has been there for a while uh so just because she recently found out about it she was saying it was a mandela effect <laughs> yeah oh yeah oh, no. <laughs> yeah yeah uh, 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 mandela effect is you like for example like the movie um Interview with I know the what vampire. it is. No, not you, but the, the Are outside. Are you explaining this to me? Or okay. No, the outside. I know you know. Interview with the vampire was the name of the movie, but people remembered it with interview as an as with a vampire, 
But again, things are marketed overseas too. Like could be differently. Like there was the books that were, and things marketed as interview with an amp with a vampire. They might have seen it that way. But the original movie was interview with the vampire. Yeah, uh, also like, uh, there's the a stains, the the bear stains or something bear like stains, that. Bear stains, bear stains, yeah. Bears, yeah, yeah. I don't even remember <laughs> either. So. I don't... Uh, yeah, I wouldn't even know. There, uh, like, uh, there's Hell in a Cell, and then there's Hell in the Cell, uh, and it's called Hell in a Cell now. Uh, but the first match card said Hell in the Cell, so there's that. <laughs> if anyone knows what I'm even I, referencing, no, but I, no, see, no, I, I, I get that. Right I remember you. I remember yeah. you as Jim Majors. I don't know how you ended up being this. this... Uh, Lawrence, dude, but whatever. Yeah, me neither. Yeah. I don't know how this happened. Mandela. I've really gone downhill. Yes, and also then you have um, Star Wars, one of the famous ones where everybody remembers it as Luke, I am your father, and it, they never, Darth Vader yeah. never. He said, it. no, I am your father. Yes. Yeah. That one I do know. Can we bully Smitty into the live chat? Can we? <laughs> we don't bully we, we, I, I feel like I just want to like yeah. harass him until he right. joins us. <laughs> You're really like needy today. I know. Why? Are you okay? <laughs> do you need Only to talk, a little bit. Do you need to talk off air? You want John to like call need... you? Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> You're only gonna love him for his mind. Yeah, smart men are attractive. I wouldn't know. What's up, guys? Ah, well, up? I'm out of the running. Yeah. John's <laughs> like, yeah, I got it going on. Ah. Guys, I was, I was playing around in the chat telling people about light duality with this guy named Navy Tech 37. Yeah. Well, and... I, was, I, was just, I was just answering. Oh, wait, hold on. He just pinged me. Hang on. Did you hear that they've actually, it was a couple years ago. Oh, normally, normally you can, when you observe something, you observe it as a particle or a wave, right? But they did for the yeah. first time observe both at the same time. Like it was like two years ago. Oh gosh. It's one of the things I struggle with is people that are um, sort of one. Um, they have a mindset where when they're trying to classify things in order to understand them, they're single minded. And I don't hope that doesn't sound rude. I mean, like they, it could, it's one thing or the other. Like uh, the human mind doesn't do well with like superposition and Lorentz contractions and w wave fields and stuff like that and so sometimes it's hard to use english to talk about very non-english things oh yeah anyways uh zach is this who i think it is yes my son logged into this account this oh. is the messenger yeah, reveal so yep i thought it was <laughs> what's up buddy doing well doing well how's god doing God's awesome. I would say God is good all the time, but I don't like Christians. Uh, William Peterson became a member. Yay, William. And let's get to 100 likes. Come on, guys. 100 likes. I don't really care. I, this is just seeing if people do it. I don't really give a crap about the likes, dislikes anymore. They mean nothing to me. No, I just wanted, <laughs> I I just wanted to, anything for you. I thank you. I just wanted to share basically how the Mandela effect works because of how we store and unpack memories. And, and one of the stories they did, or the studies we did in my master's program, is there was 500 people interviewed after 9-11 happened the next day. And they asked them where they were, who they were with, and what they discussed. Interviewed the same, 600 pe or the same 500 people six months later, asked them who they were with, where they were at, and what they talked about. Over 65% of the participants remembered being someplace else or with somebody else. But roughly what they discussed was more closer to what was uh, their, their official memory the next day. And the reason being is when, when any time that you recall an old episodic memory, you're unpacking part of the memory that did get stored and you're filling in the blanks with things that seem most reasonable to you. And then when you put that memory away in that moment, it stays that way until the next time you access it with that imperfect remembrance of it. So, you know, the kind of the thing with the Star Wars, if people were given, you know, a false, you know, thing of what Luke said, no, Luke, I am your father, which is the false thing, then that will store as the real memory or as a, you know, false memory. And then people draw, you know, illusory correlations with like the car accident, because 
in their mind, they saw the window break, but there was no window breaking sound, but they're drawing what makes most reasonable sense because they didn't store all the information. They only oh, stored I, I part of the information. I think that's perfect. Yeah, I, I think that we do fill in uh, missing information in the brain. Well, in fact, Zach, do you remember the... Um, do you remember the uh, experiment where you would go into a bathroom, turn off the light, have a candle, look in the mirror, and say Bloody Mary three times? Scared the hell out of me. Yeah. Well, what ha you know, a lot of people have actually seen things, right? And I believe that they have. And the reason being is because because you're in a sensory deprivated environment, your brain is filling in with things. And I've, I've we've all had this happen. We've all seen shit. Come on, let's be realistic. Uh, but it's your brain filling in things. Now, I happen to see Dr. Kroon when I look into the mirror and say Bl Bloody Mary three times, but it's the same principle, right? We all have our own Bloody Mary. So I have a question. Yes. So what about repressed memories? Or I don't want to talk about repressed. that. I repressed them for a reason. <laughs> it's Steve, there's another one. The um, yeah, last time, yeah, last time I had somebody lie. Okay, last time somebody says lie, told me to lie down. That's one of the memories I'm repressing. Was okay. it me? Clearly not. I would have wanted to remember that. <laughs> well, again, I don't think bounce. at a certain point, I don't think you would. Yeah, you already told me certain things that, that would cause more pain that I would no, probably no. be. When it comes to, when it comes to repressed <laughs> memories, it's, it's the brain's way of protecting people from, mm -hmm. from traumas that they can't process in the moment in a, in a healthy way. So, you know, it, we're, we, we're very malleable and surviving type minds. So we repress shit that just is going to be too painful or too traumatic to remember and for us to <gasps> continue to survive. Pad may ask, um, any interesting, oh, sorry, any interest in discussing either gravitational singularity? I have a hard time picturing the orgy of physical laws there or Dennis, <laughs> Daniel Dennis. Conscious <laughs> is an illusion type stuff. Yeah, one day, not right now. Um, I don't read much of Dennett. Um, you know, he talks of qualia and things of that nature. I don't understand philosophy of mind very well. That is probably my hardest subject to understand is philosophy of mind because you get to what's like what's called physical reductionism. You get non-orchestrated reductionism. You've got all these types of weird things, epiphenomenalism. I don't understand these concepts very well. So, like when Doctor Kroon says, "Hey, trying to talk about these concepts with with certain people, the main the mind is is hard to talk about." The philosophy of mind is very hard for me to talk about. I don't understand certain concepts when it comes to dualities. Um, I mean, I understand the mind-body problem, but whether consciousness is something that is epiphenomenal, whether it's an emergent property, whether it stems from physical properties, uh, who knows? It's a weird question because the, the thing with the, the mind-body is this, guys, and this is philosophy, not science, but if mind is thought, then what is the mechanism by which thought makes action? That's the mind-body problem in, in a nutshell. I have a want to do something. I want to move my hand. I have a thought to the do it. How does a thought actually make something happen physically? Well, look, feel their people, Steve. What? Electrons. Just say electrons. Electrical <laughs> impulses. <laughs> how, how does that? But you, Thoughts. They're people, Steve. That's how they do things. But you're still mixing that that fundamental connection between a thought and an action. But thoughts are just, you know, neurons firing in different parts of your brain, specifically the neocortex, <laughs> the think frontal we, lobe. This is why he's a this is why he's a physicist and not a philosopher. Kawasa has become a devoted follower. Ah, oh, the cult is growing. No one's at her you my know, desk. I kind of Smitty. wanted to bounce off of the whole Bloody Mary thing. Uh, when we did our demon summoning a while ago. Uh, like the entire point of it is like, you know, low light and you have a black mirror and oh, wait, we, we have, you, and... wait, you, we have you, you, we have you to blame for Katie George. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get that in there. It's not, the, it's not the end of the year yet. I get one in, I get one. Okay. I'm allowed one. Blaming you. Well, it's, uh, it, well, unless, unless Katie Joy can uh, bend trees, I don't think it, and, and she's a unicorn, I don't think that we, in fact, su uh, you summoned, summoned her. Wait, you summoned a uh, unicorn? We, the, we were trying uh, to summon uh, Ambitious, who is a uh, unicorn demon that gives you the ability to bend trees. Uh, and it did not work, of course, because demons aren't real. Uh, but the Assumption. whole point is... Okay. You know Sorry. what? We did, we did a very good experiment. We went super esoteric, went all out, uh, and it was very, it was a classical summoning. Uh, but you know, you're looking into this black mirror for, for like an hour straight in low light, uh, and 
you do start to see yeah. a bunch of weird oh, I've things. I've seen weird shit, dude. I and there's a lie. bunch of random stuff too. Yeah, I'm not. I have. I have. I should probably do it on Halloween, but um, it doesn't really matter. I've told the story before, but I've actually like seen like a like a demonic figure like hovering over my bed, like something out of like a, a crypt keeper type thing, just hovering there. Um, I've heard that? I've heard auto uh, auto uh, auditory hallucinations. Um, it, it, it clearly out of one ear. I mean, just on one side. It wasn't like in my head. It was here rather than in here. Yeah, I get get auditory hallucinations a lot and it's a problem because it like jolts me awake when i'm trying to sleep. right like i hear like a scream or like a, a shout or something or words or really sentences loud, like, ringing yeah, yeah like yes it's, uh, yeah. It's a we, we all get those i used things. to get like visual normal. ones a lot i've had visual everybody but... I think Whoa. the thing okay let me ask you this um lawrence because we know visual visual and auditory they're called hypno hypnagogic hallucinations these things do exist they're they're studied these are not up for discussion whether they happen or not. They happen. But would it make sense that as somebody like myself, if I lived 2000 years ago and I saw a vision like that and I saw an, or heard an auditory hallucination where I heard a voice literally outside my head being of a religious nature, would it be possible <laughs> they thought those were supernatural? Would that be make sense? I mean, yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's a, a big reason for, you know, at least... Uh, when it comes to uh, uh, why religions, uh, I guess, originated, uh, or the separate traditions, at least. Uh, not all of it, obviously, because uh, some of it, you know, has to do with, you know, war and sacrifice and whether or not you win. And, you know, there's a whole lot of historical reasons. Uh, but that is definitely a part of it, and it's exacerbated by the, the uh, culture that develops uh in part from those all right so let's ask the message of reveals because you you believe god exists would that would that make sense i i don't know <laughs> that, is, that, is, that, is, that doesn't fit in with my theology okay well, that's fair enough but you know that they, they do happen right you do believe auditory and visual hallucinations do occur right those and yeah, yeah, sleep but... paralysis happens yeah. But but I look at but I look at how DMT affects those type of things as well. So oh, the messenger took the DMT. Dr. Croon I mean, took I, the DMT. I, 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 I want to take the DMT. Don't we all? Yeah. I mean, after For one, real? after one, Joe Rogan uh, experience <sighs> episodes on them actually doing it, I'm I'm actually curious to experience. Mm. It. Oh my God, I you would know. totally be down for I that, know. dude. The, the other, the other, the other thing, up. Have you yeah. guys heard of the Gansfeld experiment? No way. No. Mm -mm. There's this thing you guys should look up. It's called Gansfeld experiment, and it's supposed to test extrasensory perception. And, it, and it's basically having, I don't know, they, they do binaural beats in your ears back and forth between headphones. Uh -huh. And they place these like ping pong, half ping pong balls oh, over your that. eyes yeah, with I've a red that. screen. Yeah, yeah, I've done that. It, and well, I mean, I haven't you done, have that, done that. that? But, well, You've done that. Well, hang on. Yeah, sir, okay, well, hang on. Let me, let me phrase this. Okay. okay. I've done the binaural beats thing. I did that. Time. I've done the blind thing. I haven't had the red light, but I have. Okay. I have induced myself. I have done an induction on myself uh -huh. on more than one occasion. I'd say I've about induced. four or five. But I've okay. induced a um, a hypnagogic state, a a state of what people call transcendental meditation, or um, out of body, or um, on another plane, or whatever. You literally, you know, you're out of your. You. You. you I mean, I don't feel really believe you are, but you are in a different realm of consciousness. You. Your brain has shifted. You are no longer in the same conscious state as you were before. It is not easy to do, very difficult. Um, but the binaural beats uh, didn't really help much. The binaural beats are this: is really interesting. Um, if you have a frequency played in one ear, and you have a frequency that's a little bit off in the other ear, your brain will actually make up the difference, and you'll hear um, like a beat frequency. You'll hear the difference between the two frequencies, and that binaural beat is actually not a real sound, but your brain interprets it as such. And, sure. and they they can trigger um, these types of things called delta delta and um, what's the other one? delta delta is around three three hertz I believe it is or is that um, alpha I don't remember I don't remember the frequencies but it's very low frequency but they really kind of do trigger them they get up to like 500 megahertz but the very low 50 uh, hertz and the 100 hertz uh, the binaurals yeah I've I do, I've tried those I've tried driven frequencies but I gotta tell you the the best is a little bit of um, uh, Nyquil. Mm -hmm. you don't have to have it but it, it helps but what you want to do is you want to minimize your sensory perceptions you want to make sure that you you cannot hear anything earplugs which right. i do use 
Uh, you want to have no visual light source, so something covering the eyes. You want to be very, very comfortable. Um, you, some people will use these tanks, like the uh, like Skeptic, uh, Deep Skeptic has, these sensory deprivation tanks. But you want a bed that's comfortable. And you want to start by like moving your toes a little bit and just flexing them and then your arms and your legs. You just want to relax your entire body. And you just want to focus on these photophosphorus lights in your eyes, those little lights that go around. And you'll see them make patterns. And you're just, it's almost like a hypnotic thing. And you'll feel yourself be falling. You'll feel yourself falling. And all of a sudden, sometimes you'll see this world comes up to you like this. Like literally out of a movie. Boom, there you are. And you're like, this is cool. Where am I at? I swear to God, that's exactly how it is sometimes. Most, most see, of the time you just you kind of fall into it. But have you ever had it kind of like peer right in front of you? Like a movie and just go zip you there? See, that reminds me a lot of Altered States, which was an old movie where oh, yeah. they would go into that that that, uh, that tank where they're kind of like floating in water and, you know, experiencing alternate realities. Yeah. So yeah. I, I've been I've been I've been interested in doing both DMT and the Gansfeld experiment just to just to see how it affects me. As someone who enjoys control, I would I just nope, not interested. I love it. Oh, it doesn't feel like you're losing control at all. It is amazing. I heard, well, I heard with I heard with DMT, it's that way, and I think that's what she's referring to because they often talk about in the first like two minutes of the trip, you're out of control and you're and you wish. Yeah, you wish you were you're back in, but after after you get past that initial fear, I think that they talk about how, at least, people on Joe Rogan experience it that had done it talked about what a calming state of being it allowed them. Yeah, to uh, I don't believe these are OBEs. I believe that they're actually um, they're not they're they're not you're not actually well, it's generating it. It's yeah. generating a near death exper experience. You know. Which is putting I your, your body journey. into. But uh, I do think that the DMT is okay. One thing about the DMT is interesting is that they have similar uh, constructs. <laughs> these these elves, the mechanical elves, right? <laughs> and and there's different theories of whether they they have some tangibility to them, whether they exist or not. And I think it's kind of fascinating to kind of dive into that. And we have dived into it before. We're going to talk about DMT on the non sequitur show as one of the, the episodes that we're going to be doing. Uh, but it's very fascinating that there's a shared collective. V visions that people on the DMT have had um, of these mechanical elves, you know. But whether they're actually real entities or not, uh, I don't really know. Do you? I mean, do you guys think I they're? I, I don't think I, they're real entities. No. Mm -mm. I, I, I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. But then again, there's just there's just I too think... much. Yeah. There's too much on a, on, a, on a conscious and subconscious level that we still just don't understand. Yeah, but I mean, okay, this, you know, it actually gets into philosophy. I'm not even kidding you. There's a there's a there's a philosophy. There's a, okay, on the DMT, you know, Dr. Kroon does the DMT, but I, I got to be really drunk for this. It's like esoteric shit. Okay, this is why everybody. This is why everybody leaves my channel when I start talking about science and stuff like this. I really am going to finish this tonight. Okay, so on, when it comes to ontology. There's different ways of looking at these mechanical elves. Okay? TMT is not legal. There's... TMT is not legal. <laughs> yeah, it's not legal. Highly and legal. that's just—it's that. actually a felony. We're it? not saying drink, take it, but one no, of the. No, but if you if you get in with some universities that are doing experiments with it that are government funded, oh, then you can participate yes. in those studies. All right. So one of the one of the one of the views out there is called a constructivist view. Uh, it's also known as a neurotheological reductionism. But this view is that these entities are just because there's a certain amount of of thing in our brain because of brain chemistry and so the way our brain chemistry we all have the same brain chemistry like even though dr kroon is a hell of a lot smarter than i am we have the same brain chemistry you know for all practical speaking right so the entities are what we see on the dmt is based upon physical relationships on these the, the chemistry okay and so it's basically um it's something hardwired in all humanity this is why all humans will see the same thing Another way of looking at it is called the contextualist approach. And contextualism says that um, you all, we all have unique experiences, but they're based upon our culture and understanding of like the American Indian taking a DMT might be different from what, you know, the, the messenger reveals taking DMT. They're going to have something culturally related to them, but similar in nature. You see a divine being, um, mm. a, a, one person is going to think it this way and one person is going to think it another way, but there's some similarity there. The other view, there's two more views. Hey, I, I like this shit, okay? You, you, you got me going. Um, the, it's called the essentialist or perennialist view. They actually think that these, these entities, these mechanical elves, are an archetype 
that it actually exists in some higher dimensional being uh, level, some higher dimensions, right? And then the actual, the fourth one is called the literalist. And the literalist says, these are real entities. They do exist. And what happens when you take the DNT is that you access the dominion that they're at and they're giving us this information. I don't think it's that one. And I don't think it's the, um, I think it's more of a contextualist probably thing more than anything else. But isn't that, this is actually a philosophy on taking DMT. Huh. There you go. Huh. Science, bitches. Actually, actually Oshkosh, it's, it's not DMT. It's uh, specifically ayahuasca. ayahuasca. Yeah, ayahuasca makes yeah. you sick, though. Ayahuasca is way, way, way more powerful. And yeah. it cures way much more than DMT Yeah, does. ayahuasca makes you sick, though. But DMT only lasts for about 20 mm -hmm. minutes. Um, unless, exactly. If you have a breakthrough. But uh, the little, yeah, the literalist thinks that the elves are literal. Yeah. Yeah, they're actually real entities with real um, thoughts and, and uh, they're agents. So I, I don't take to a literalist or ex existentialist, uh, ex uh, essentialist view. I take more to a probably a contextualist or constructivist view. But again, th this is why philosophy is important because we're looking at something we say, why do we have these shared things? Well, based upon your philosophy, how do you want to look at it? Who knows, Evolution. right? Evolution. Well, that would be more of a constructivist view, right? That's produced yeah. because of brain chemistry. Yeah. Mm. Well, that means I mean, I... By the way, did you guys think that I knew shit about DMT? There you go. You're going to do a if show you, on if, this one. If you're experiencing this. auditory and, 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 and visual things in your brain that aren't really there, no different than, you know, hallucinations, then, of course, you're going to interpret them based on what you believe to be true about life. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna draw a relationship and we know that DMT is present, uh, present during sleep cycles. We know that DMT is especially high, you know, as people are dying and going comatose. So I think it's most likely a way to ease people into death without probably, you know, causing the last minutes of your life to really suck. Uh, Iron Charter says, do you think when we get further into the nanoscale, we <laughs> might discover a spirit molecule? DMT is a spirit molecule. That's what they say. Yeah. Smitty just asked, what's the evolutionary benefit of double penetration? <laughs> um, um, I thought he was going to sleep. I have sleep for that. Pleasure? Wrong hangout, guys. <laughs> we can have an after hours hangout. Uh, something, right. something about good times had by all. Oh, when, when Nikki's around, there's a good time had by all. Oh, absolutely. Hey, if, Steve, if Steve hooks me up with some DMT, I'll do it live. <laughs> How yes. the hell am I supposed to get DMT? That's illegal. Actually, um, if you come Kyle? to Denver, Denver, Colorado, it's um, they decriminalize shrooms, and the next step is shrooms. Yeah, shrooms cycle um, um making so, it legal. Yeah, yeah. cycle So uh, that's not the same as DMT. It's psilocybin. Psilocybin. That's it. Psilocybin. Um, it's not the same thing as. DMT. It's not the same thing, but it does it does similar things. I, to the psilocybin, brain. though, I would try, but psilocybin is like uh, it will make you just as sick as um, ayahuasca. Oh, yeah. So yeah, I don't I don't want they something to make you sick. Longer too, doesn't it? Ayahuasca yeah. is supposed to make you sick, though. I mean, yeah, ayahuasca. You take it, purge. you vomit it up, and yeah, yeah. Kind of reminds me I mean, of the young guns when they're all doing the shrooms out on the trail. This is still science, guys. This is just drugs. Yeah, it's the effects of psychedelics on the brain. Well, we're actually going to do an episode on that on non sequitur show when we get it back. Uh, this is why I was reading about DMT. Um, it was fascinating. It really was fascinating. As opposed, you know, fascinating because it's there's actually a, a whole philosophy based upon DMT. Oh my God, this is good alcohol. I just really <laughs> love to hear the experiences people have. Shrooms are better. Maybe I, like I said, I never took any of that stuff. I was not a druggie growing up. I didn't take drugs. Shrooms, shrooms are different. They're not better. They're different. Like trying to compare these, these two, it, it doesn't, it doesn't work. Yeah, I know. I know there's a way to extract DMT from plant matter. I've heard that before, like grass. Yeah, but I'm not a chemist, so that's why people <laughs> want to learn science so they know how to make. Ooh, DMT. peyote's crazy. Right? <laughs> right? Peyote's like, fucking scary. Like, it's like, we'll it's the like chemistry of it. Yeah, I was like, okay, as a kid, we all, and I'm sure Dr. Croon did this well. Did you not blow shit up as a kid? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we all like making saltpeter and sodium nitrate and mixing with charcoal and sugar to make smoke bombs and sulfur to make stink bombs. And we all blew shit up. That's the only reason to learn chemistry. The only reason to be a chemist is two things. This is it. To blow shit up or to make drugs. That's it. That's the only reason to be a chemist. <laughs> I always liked throwing lighters on the ground and they exploded. That was nice. You ever had those little pop <laughs> I things? I like to 
they have, things on they fire. They have silver nitrate in them. You throw them to the ground, and they, they explode. You want to talk about those little... No, I have no idea what you're talking about. There's silver nitrate with sand in it. Mescaline? Little oh. pop it? Pop, yeah, the little pop things. They throw them to the ground, they pop. They pop yeah, they're yeah. They're, yeah. yeah they're, oh, those thingy. Yeah, yeah. They're, okay. Oh, yeah, my kid loves those. That's silver nitrate mixed with sand. And so when it hits the ground, it causes a re uh, friction and that ignites and pops. That's what you're hearing. Smitty likes the DMT. Somebody's asking, what do you have a PhD in? And I believe that was to. Uh... The only PhD in the room. Join yeah, we're just me. having a chat back and forth here very briefly and recently. Join us. John, what is your P what exactly is your PhD in? They want to know. It's in astrophysics. Astrophysics, bitches. It can be further. Pixar, stuff it didn't happen. That's pretty sexy, though. Isn't it? Yeah. I mean, he's hot even to me, and I'm straight. Right. Look at him. Sexy brain, sexy face. I should order a pizza. I didn't eat much today. You could order something else, See, that, like I, me. That just makes you more attractive. Because he's so sick. Cheap. I'm, I'm just using his name for the, the title. That's the only reason. <laughs> Drugs like Smitty. That's true. Drug, Smitty is a drug. Mm. See, here's the thing. 50 dislikes. You guys don't like science, so we're not going to do science any longer. No more. Done. Don't I, you dare. I don't care. I like it, I swear to God. I like when right. people come by and do 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 the dislikes. That means they watched. <laughs> or at least they, mm. have, they came to the video. <laughs> nice. So, so are, are all the people in here sapiosexuals? I am. Yeah. If, if, if somebody, yeah, I can go for that. If somebody does, if so, Pan. Somebody had to ask once, what's a sapiosexual? And I'm like, you're not one. <laughs> 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 what's a sapiosexual? Get out. <laughs> yeah. I don't know you. <laughs> That's grounds for pain. Can I, can I tell a physics oh, silver, I'm sorry. Is it, wait, wait. Uh, Les Nagy says silver fulminate. Is it silver fulminate? Uh, you might be right. I think it's silver fulminate. I, yeah, fulminate is more explosive. You're right. So that would make sense. Because fulminates are very reactive. So it makes sense to be silver fulminate, not silver nitrate. Yeah. Uh, I did use silver nitrate, though, Les. Um, you're right. It's silver fulminate, but silver nitrate is useful. Uh, we used to use silver nitrate. I did qualify secondary chemist. Huh? But you have what's called a turbidity <laughs> test. And you, when you did a sample of water from the, the from the potable water supply, you would take a sample from it, and you would take a few drops of silver nitrate. And if it turned cloudy, it would be um, – you couldn't drink it. It would be non-potable. Um, it measured the saline content in there. And if you got it on your hand, it turned your finger like black because it, 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 the salt uh, with salt, uh, silver nitrate will react and it just blackens your hand. So we would all be walking around with black marks all over our hands. Even though, even no matter how much protection you use, you're going to get silver nitrate on you. Um, but yeah, it's silver fulminate. Thank you, Leslie. I can be corrected. That's why I have a smart audience. This is why I <laughs> cultivate smart people and I call the narrative people that aren't too bright. My Venice Journey, $2. Intelligence. Grr. We do cultivate smart people, though. I, I will say. We, for this great debate community, we have had so many brilliant people in our community. It's ridiculous. So but, what the heck do you got me here for, then? Boobs. You don't even know if they're nice. I, you know what? Does it, does it really matter? You told me. I you, mean. You, ex you explicitly told me in great detail that one time. So. I could have been lying. Steve. Uh... It's a visual thing. Yeah, he is not as vanilla as he looks on. I know. He's you dark. Get Tom. Oh, oh, <laughs> Nikki, Nikki knows. Yeah, Nikki knows. <laughs> I am vanilla. Even my most darkest is still pretty vanilla. Nikki, You're such a liar. The That's worst not I, what I saw on DMs. The, <laughs> the worst I've ever... I, I, I'm still pretty vanilla compared to like most. Would you not say? Definitely. Mm. Definitely. Yeah. Compared to me, yeah, if you really tried, you could For be hope, really good at yeah. it. You just need a good out. teacher. Yeah. Lawrence, you, that was, no, Lawrence I, is like, I'll do it. No, Lawrence, no. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I drinking so much faster now? I'm making drinks. I'm just I, I'm Aren't you drinking like a bourbon drink or something? I'm, I'm drinking Admiral Nelson. Oh. Really good, though. I get smart when I drink. I don't know what it is. I'm able to actually recall things. <gasps> she easier. has a penis? Then I Ooh, Smitty. Ooh. Oh, fuck yes. Wait, who has penis? Yes, Smitty. You can't say penis. Yay. You, you can only say what? I was gonna say you can only say penis live. You can't say it um, off air. But we're live. <laughs> oh, where did the stupid go? <laughs> I 
So we, I cultivate smart people. Super chat. Yay. Well, come on. I mean, seriously, guys. Don't you guys get tired of trying to explain things to people that just do not want to listen? People that uh, yes. oh, don't want to understand. Or open truth. their mind. They don't open their uh, mind. And it's not just creationists. It's not just flat earthers. It's people in general. You try to tell them things. You you do try to tell them, and they just won't listen. And no matter what you do, you're like, you know what? We're speaking two different languages. It'd be like Dr. Kroon trying to explain Matrix Theory to a three-year-old sometimes. I, I, I gave up. i really not going to bother with except it. For, except for the people that I um, uh, argue with politely, they are capable of comprehending the really simple simple facts i present and they just reject it just cognitive dissonance run wild that's what's what's worse do you think that do you think it's worse for like uh somebody to reject things as fundamental truths or just not understand it and not care and be open-minded enough to learn well if they're you mean if they're capable of understanding can, and reject can, it yeah i think that's worse than just not being able to understand it at least they could try maybe they'll have the attitude where they would accept it when they come to understand i'm gonna agree with that actually what do you guys think i think it's worse <laughs> if they reject things that are basic truth i mean in order to have a conversation you have to have certain things that everybody can agree on and if you are throwing out things that are facts and evidence then how can we go forward if if you're not even going to acknowledge those things yeah, I, I think so and but because i know people that i'll bang my head against the wall trying to tell them the truth and and yet i'm the one told oh steve's lying steve's manipulative i'm like oh if you only knew um i've probably been in the seven and a half years i've been on youtube one of the almost honest people i've ever met in my life and, and I, I met myself <sighs> I mean, I, I don't know who could be more truthful than I am. I, I really don't, besides Bullinator. <laughs> I mean, Bullinator might be the the, uh, the archetype we all strive for, right? But, oh my God, I'm so tired of people just saying things wrong because they don't care to know better. You The, the way you structured that reminded me of the time that Trump said, I am the most humble person <laughs> you will ever meet. <laughs> You can't no, Trump is everything. Oh, Trump is the Trump is. I'm not the most humble. Trump is the most humble. Trump is the smartest. Trump is the <laughs> the, the funniest. Trump is. You put any adjective in there and it'll work for Trump. Okay. <laughs> all he knows all the best apply words. To Trump. Yeah, everything applies to Trump. Yeah, well, you realize that that confirmation bias is what skews almost everybody's judgment. You know, and if you're not aware of it, then you're going to be more susceptible to it. And people need to survive. So if, if you're saying things that interfere with their well-being from their point of view or their survival from their from their point of view, they're going to defend it ignorantly, even, you know, to reject what's factual and only listen to what makes sense. Oh, I think so. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, people I mean, that, would defend that, that, the realities. The yeah. And, and, and by doing so, they cause a lot of harm to people. I've seen more mm -hmm. harm done to people out of ignorance. Um, well, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that back. I was going to say I've seen more harm due to people being ignorant than from malice. But I think it's maybe about equal. Well, about and I think there's a lot of apathy as well. I mean, it's like when I get into conversations with people about veganism and animal ethics, a lot of people <laughs> immediately put up a wall because they're getting defensive because it's a core being of what they were brought up with and culture and all of these other things. And um, the constant barrage that we get from commercials and blah, blah, blah. So there's a lot mm -hmm. of things, but you start bringing up facts and other things like that, and people suddenly don't even want to listen to the science or anything along those lines because they're so stuck in what they've always done. And, you know, by you saying that there might be something different, or a different option or a different reality than what they're used to, it, it just flies in the face of, of their belief system. Yeah, no, I think you're right on it, that. I really much so. Yeah, I, I, ha I let only facts and empirical evidence inform. Well, that's because like, you're my, a science. My, you're, you're sci opinion. Yeah, you, you fall into scientism. <laughs> just, I'm just rational. I'm just a rational dude. Well, no, you can't have a. Wait, are you an empiricist or rationalist? 
Or I'm both, oh, but I mean, dude, don't be throwing the like big words. These philosophy. Yeah, well, you no. fuck with me with your it's astrophysics they, shit. I'll come after you with philosophy, dude. They, they, they have. I know what those words. I know what they are, but they have a slightly different sort of uh, meanings in in that context. I know of, what the, words the logic mean. Logic branch of philosophy. <laughs> I know. You know. Yes. And so I'm saying I'm just a rational, empirical, evidence-based guy. Most people are not. They what? just they decide what reality is and reject all evidence and so they could feel good about things and sleep at night. When are we gonna do a math hangout, John? Oh, oh dude, we, we gotta dude. figure out how to draw mm -hmm. equations on a I guess I need more I... sleep fodder. Oh he, have... he needs to do an equation real quick to figure that out. Have you guys have you... <laughs> okay I, I, I have a friend I have I have a friend we'll do it. hang on Come I have on. a friend. He's a PhD student in math. His um I'm not gonna kill his real name, but he's known as um, ethic epic math time. And he has the most awesome. He's using uh, uh, After Effects, and he has a uh, uh, one of those uh, clear whiteboards, and he's got all the cool graphics. And oh my god, it's so cool! If you want to check out real oh, nice. epic math time, dude, go check him out. But he's doing a lot of math stuff, and he's wanting to do something with me. But uh, yeah, no, I could do. We could write stuff. I've got this right here. Um, how do I put it? Um, it's a little thing somebody sent me, and I use it occasionally for stuff. But I, I'm trying to figure out how to use it online, but. This was part of my Amazon wish list at one time, and I still and I, I do use it, um, but I haven't figured out how to really use it online. But you can write on this, and uh, but yeah, I mean, I I saw you saw my videos. I did calc two level stuff. I mean, not high end. I don't, I don't know what I, I don't know that what that was. It just too. looked. What? I use that to sleep. My calc videos. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's what, no, that's what everybody up. wants to hear. I listened to your video and fell asleep. <laughs> okay. Yeah, hey, it's a, it's a I mean, I'm 100 percent serious. Like you're so you're so calm in that too. You did do a good job. I just I'm very bad at math, so it just goes through my head. <laughs> you know, I've been I'm watching between to stop it. That's why. <laughs> Don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> I've been watching a lot of uh, Kit Boga to fall asleep. Do you guys know who that is? No. No. Mm -mm. He he calls scammers. And oh, waste their time. He is brilliant. Oh, I've he seen has it. like a virtual machine. Yeah, yeah. I, so like, yeah, it's fantastic. Um, but, I would, love, you know. By the way, that's not hard to do. I, I sleep a virtual machine well, is easy. Well, but I, well, I think that'd be like, fun. I get that. But yeah. like, he went all out. Like, he made you know fake bank accounts, yeah. fake everything, and it's just like one of his fake banks is called uh, Gull and Bull Financial. Uh, it's fantastic. I think it's absolutely great. <laughs> do, do you, do, do, does anybody else run? I run virtual machines every so often. I, just, I like playing with different ISOs. Oh my fucking yeah. god! Oh, back to the math thing. I have an idea. <laughs> wait, wait, Naked wait. Math. Okay, first of all, you're a woman, so we don't really care about your ideas. But um, no. Oh, <laughs> oh. Well, she follows you, so she's not a real woman. So. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's right. She's not I a real got... woman. I forgot. If you're, if you're, I don't exist. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Go for it. What you got? Yeah. So oh, I'm saying strip math. Strip math. <clears throat> That's a very <coughs> idea. How would that work? Um, <laughs> We're inquiring well, here. To, okay. Unless you would have to do uh, a series of different math, equ uh, either equations. Keep them simple, though, because you know not all of us are big brains. And if you get it wrong, then you have to strip. Can we only do this with men? I'd no, I have to, to see that. that. Well, if it was only men, then you wouldn't be there either. First of all, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I never expected. But then again, yeah, you, I would be naked before the way, last question, before the first Lawrence, question. Lawrence, you don't know what yeah, she's yeah, no, Lawrence, no, man. You don't know what she's packing, trust me. You would be surprised. <laughs> Wait, who? You. Oh, what is that supposed to mean, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> Not saying. It almost it almost seemed like you were implying I have a penis. <laughs> oh, oh, maybe. I don't... That's not necessarily a bad thing. I'm just saying. Yeah, what's wrong with having one of them? I mean, I would love a penis. I don't I know. It gets in the way. It's real itchy. Like it's not great. You're not you a boner. You ain't you using yours right then, Lawrence. And all and all that smegma is just nasty. <laughs> I'm, I'm circus. How about how about this? How about if some if somebody on the stream takes their shirt off? I'm, I'm just, gonna vote Milwaukee atheist. He's the only other cam. 
I was just saying I could, but then you wouldn't know because I don't have. Okay, a this went from science to like way out of left field. I don't, <laughs> no, I don't know what's I don't going know. on here. I'm thinking about it. Do it. No, I'm not Please. a mystery. <laughs> what's Wait, what's it's your real crazy. name? <laughs> Tell me your first name. Lawrence. Uh, it's uh, it's it's Nunya. No. <laughs> Yo. By the way, she obviously doesn't know what you do for a living, and I'm not going to tell her, but holy crap. Oh. Well, for a living, it's YouTube. Okay, well, okay, okay, on the we'll side. take your shirt off. I'll, but I'll, for I'll... extra money. Do you want to tell her? Oh, no, sure I know what this? he does. Oh, do you? Okay. I know yeah, what he porn. does. He can produce my shirt. Good old, good old porn. <laughs> Pator oh, he produces and stars in it, from what I understand, occasionally. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Are you starting? Oh, good grief. What? Well, I, I do. Why am, wait, why am I always the bad guy? Why am I always the people coming after when everybody else? I am not the, the, I am truly the vanilla guy. I am like the reserved, quiet, blushing guy. And yet you guys are all pervs and I get shit for it. I don't get it. <laughs> I, I don't understand it. I get it's, 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 on, easy. The, the dark it's easier that way, Steve. It? It's easier okay. that you take the bullet. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Sex on cam. Take, take your shirt off, Zach. You like it. Do it. I, Zalted, Zalted, Zalted has a request in the live chat. That's fine. Take it, off, take it off. Oh. Take it off. Take it off. Hey, um, Nikki, I don't see you on Chatterbait, so why don't you go do your thing? Chatterbait? Yeah. Mm, I'm okay with Just that. said wish you would for Cheetos. Hey, Cheetos are pretty <laughs> so stop good. Cheetos with her feet on camera. Come on, Milwaukee. Take your shirt off. This, this is like... And Zach. First of all, Milwaukee... Oh, and Steve. It's come Steve's on, Steve. Stream. No, she, she's allowed, it's allowed it's to sexually harass me. I don't know if she all can sexually harass Milwaukee atheists. Dude, they math. Strip math. Come on. <laughs> What's one plus one? <laughs> it, in binary. <laughs> it's ten. Steve, shut up. shut up, you smart dude. Steve, get that, take that button <laughs> off, and do it. Actually, it's not. <laughs> and by the way, no. By the way, no. It's not ten. It's one zero. Take your shirt off, bitch. Dun, dun, dun. I was speaking <laughs> the oh, no, number no. one zero. Uh, 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 there's no ten in binary. All right, I'll t I'm gonna. I'm actually gonna get all the way undressed, but you guys can't see me. <laughs> Prude. You can, send me, you can send me I'm a serious. message. DM me on Twitter. DM me. <laughs> I don't do Twitter. Here, I'll, I'll I'll post my Twitter in the comments. She's usually like DP me, but whatever. Hold on. Uh, that too. I'm taking See, it. I would take my shirt off, but this is Steve's stream, and he just got demonetized. And... <laughs> All right. I'm back. Yeah. Why? How did how did I go how did I go from science to this? Yeah. Can I tell you by guys about being a sexy beast? Fourth Show dimension, me. Jake. Or by the way, hey buddy, so uh, how you been? Here. And see what I see what I'm dealing with, Jake. You see this? Mask and the sex. Yeah. I, 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 they don't know how they treat me. You don't know, man. You don't get it. <laughs> there you go, Milwaukee. I'm just like I'm just like a chat. mind and flesh body bag of water or something to them. You like it? And you know it. I'm not gonna say I don't, but <laughs> I like when you abuse me. I'm I'm okay with that. Mm. Can I watch? I think you have. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have an idea. I got a lot of friends. <laughs> mm. uh, Nikki well, is supposed to be Nikki, CIA? Nikki, if you're really good to us, you know we're going to be streaming from Texas, and um, yeah. maybe you might get a, a nice stream from Sweet and I in Jacuzzi <sighs> Hotel. Maybe. Yeah. Copernicus, $5. Once we pressed, you are giving... Uh, Carice, a run for her money. Ari, your ultra sultry voice. Oh, okay. well, Carice, no, she she has to win hands down. But Nikki, you're giving her a run. Am I? Oh yeah. I'm like I'm like really randy today. So this is like 100 percent. If I if if we if we can do a, if we can do a private stream for you, Nikki, from the hotel, we'll we'll see what we can do. Okay. Oh my fucking god. Because she loves you. <laughs> Sweet loves you. I love sweet too. Sweet is fucking. Did you, did, did you did you hear though? I, I people are. This is swear to God. This is weird. There have been people out there with narrative because they had narrative. Um, Steve does. Steve no longer has a girlfriend. I'm like, bitch. Sweet was never my girlfriend. Ever. We were never boyfriend and girlfriend. So anybody says Steve does. You know, Steve doesn't have a girlfriend or Steve's. You know, no longer has a girlfriend. Well, yeah, we've never were boyfriend and girlfriend. We just have sex. It's that's it. <laughs> <laughs> You know, but it's, 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 it's yeah, I don't. It, 
it's so funny though. It's people like, well, we're, we're enhanced friends, but it's just like, okay. yeah, but we the made it very clear. We didn't friends. want, we don't, we didn't, both of us didn't want the boyfriend girlfriend layer uh, label. And so when people are like, Oh, well, Steve no longer has a girlfriend. It's like, well, no, we, we never were boyfriend and girlfriend. <gasps> so they tell people I don't have a girlfriend because I don't. I have a really good friend with an amazing personality. I'm going to go get more eyes. And perfect no, body. No need to tie somebody down with labels. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what they want to do. They want to label things. And it's just like when, when I said I don't have a girlfriend, people ran with it like, oh, my God. You know, even, even Sweet Heathen has turned Steve. her back on Steve. I'm like, what? No. <laughs> Steve doesn't have a girlfriend. He has women who pine I... after him desperately. That's true. Like me. That's true. <laughs> well, you're a stalker. Mm. It doesn't mean I don't pine. I'm not, <laughs> I'm just I'm just really more reserved than people think. Yeah. I swear to God. <laughs> you would kill me if we ever hooked up. You would like literally Probably. drain my bodily I, I have... fluids. Yeah. So I like. I have like... sent like two people to the hospital for that. Yeah, I I couldn't mess with nice. that. <laughs> yeah, literal dehydration. Yeah, Smitty's right. I joke around, but I literally have only had one girl in my life for a year. Like literally, the only it's, person it's I I let's go with it's that. Me. I I need to say yes because if not, she will hunt me down. You don't know. She scares me. Nikki scares me. But no, I mean, how Do long I... have I how long have I been pining for for sweet? It's been about a year now. Oh. Right. Yeah. Just the just the softness of his voice when he mentions her. She makes me smile. The, the oh. looks. Do you see the, the little smile that I gives? get? I get a little smile. Oh my god! It is so desperately cute. <laughs> I don't have feelings. Stop it! I have no emotions. I think every everybody just needs to like take their shirts off, please. <laughs> I already did like ten minutes ago. Do it, show us. This is not science they, related. <laughs> Yes, but Steve, on that weird note, I do gotta cut out. Anatomy no. is science. It is. Reminded me by science. Anatomy All right, so I'm gonna be back in a second. Um, I got more God eyes. Damn it, Steve. <sighs> Nikki, anatomy of science I'm gonna, the same way porn is educational. I'm gonna put Nikki, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna put Nikki in charge for a minute. Oh, God help us all. That's not oh, a no. good idea. Not a good right? idea. Uh, <laughs> what can go wrong? Yeah. How about how about everybody in the chat? <laughs> Write down your kids. <laughs> no, I got a dagger in the head anyway. Do it. Do it. <laughs> y'all can y'all can also just you know follow me on Twitter for lots of thirsty tweets because um, huh? getting real thirsty up in here. <laughs> Simultaneous yeah, loving, baby. I feel that. Is that is that your <laughs> shit, Sunny? Do you spot lives matter? Um, nice. How nice many city. men? How many men don't even know where the clitoris is? That scares me. <laughs> That's a it, myth, it's... I think. <laughs> <laughs> like the female orgasm. <laughs> <laughs> what if women didn't know where the clitoris was? Uh, I didn't. Unfortunately, yeah, I didn't. I I didn't even yeah. masturbate until after I was married. So yep, uh, I was the first time I ever like touched myself. I was uh, sixteen. How can that be possible? 17? You 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 bathe and wash and like how so, would that even be possible? I, sometime in your but, teens to go, oh, that kind of feels good when I soap myself there. Because, because I grew it was up wrong. Mormon. Yeah, I grew yeah, up that's Mormon, true. and uh, <laughs> you under- you don't do that. <laughs> Yeah, you underestimate <laughs> the religious oppression. Right. So you're, For real, so you're, yeah. So you're talking like, about like some stuff ingrained in you that, hey, you mm-hmm. just don't do that kind of stuff. You don't yeah. cut, you don't want anything that's not anything that you're supposed to even be interested yeah. in until you're married. And then you can apparently, apparently everything is told to you and you, you know, whatever. Well, they, Absolutely. they want men to show women how their yep. body feels oh they God. they want us to be dependent here? on them this is not like, science related this is not physiology this is, this is not biology. You're, you're naming a bunch of scientific fields steve for real i'm out of ginger ale i'm out i want more gin- i want ginger ale i like ginger ale i like ginger ale too i like diet ginger I, like, ale. I don't like the Ver- sugar Ver- Ver- burners yeah. is the best if you want ginger ale Verner's good yeah burners Verner? is good burners tastes like vanilla i I like ginger. Ginger's good. I put ginger 
in ale, and well, this, then I have ginger ale. This tastes this tastes <laughs> this tastes like vanilla, and I like vanilla ginger ale. So. Yeah, Gen I do gingers. spiced rum with peach as a chaser, and it tastes vanilla. Who else is drinking with me here? Just me? I'm drinking. No, okay. I, I am constantly drinking because of the glass. state of depression. Here's my glass right yeah. here. I don't see your glass. It's like a white you don't screen. See you don't is anybody see seeing a white screen? Uh, fourth dimension, you Jake. See I see a screen, gray screen. Yeah, I see gray. Oh, yeah, gray, gray screen. Yeah, for fourth dimension, I don't see any shit. So, so let me ask. There it is. Let's, let's, go, now. let's go into science real quick. So, fourth dimensional Jake, okay. do you take oh. do you take uh, space time to be three D plus one, or fourth dimensional space time continuum? Fourth which dimensional. Be, which is um, Leo Lorenzian versus Mikowski space. If I'm not, Dr. Green, is that right? Leo Lorenzian yeah. is three D plus one, and Mikowski would be four D. My God, people! Alcohol. Yeah. Steve actually gets kind of smart sometimes. <clears throat> but Steve, you got to remember though that they're uh, interchangeable depending on your transformations. Yes, Steve. If you do transformation, Lorentz transformations, Lorenz transformations, you yes. it's a vector rotation and and the four D space. I do that. You just rotate your shit. And I know what Galilean transformations are too. Oh, those are kind of cool. I, I do them on the highway all the time. In your head. No, just by <laughs> acting them out. But yeah, yeah, they're they're pretty easy. When you're Obviously. when you're when you're overtaking someone, that's a Galilean yeah. velocity addition transformation. This is what I transform my serial. Isn't it kind of cool when people get to learn shit like Galilean transformations and and Lorentz transformations and uh, one of these days though, you know what I want to do? I hang on on seriously, and I have, I have people lined up for it. I know um, I don't know if you know Up and Adam. Her name's Jade. Uh, I think her, and she, um, she's really good at this stuff. She might be able to come on. I'm at Astro Athens back. Um, but I want to talk about things like Hamiltonian operators. I want to talk about Dell operators. I want to talk oh, about, yeah. um, um, you know, uh, the high, uh, uh, Schrodinger's, you know, non time dependent formulas. I want to talk about interesting things like hard stuff, but break it down to where a layperson could probably at least grasp the concept, right? You know, we've been talking about hard stuff for right. like the past 30 minutes. Right. Mm. Really that was, hard. A, that was a sex. Uh, at, my, at my age, it's not as yeah, much it as you think. <laughs> until, until you're at least 50 plus, come on, you don't need the Viagra. I'm, I'll, be 50, mm. I'll be 50 in two months. Mm. You an Aquarius or a Pisces? I'm an Aquarian. I'm an, I'm an Aquarian. We don't believe in astrology. <laughs> <laughs> have you heard that song age of aquarius the age of aquarius i wrote that, oh, I love that no, song. <laughs> how could i not know i dude i was born in 1970 and i'm an aquarian how can i not know the age of aquarius song good grief. that is it's legitimately it is a good song it really is it's timeless the movie i like the movie adaptation better did you, did you ever see hair original hair yeah that that movie that it's from no hmm. i've just seen the clip of the of that. How about Jesus Christ Superstar? Who the hell you think you are? Jesus nope. Christ. No. no, no. You ever saw Jesus no. Superstar? No. That sounds awful. Nope. Fiddler, I've never seen Fiddler that. Fiddler on the roof? No, I've never seen. Hard pass. Unfortunately, that music? no. Yes. Nope. Well, yes, I've seen that one. Hills are alive good. with the sound of music. Von I love, I love Lady Gaga's rendition of that. Oh my god. Yeah. Damn. She has not. She has an awesome voice. I'm way too old for you. She people. does. I love her. Oh, how uh, dare you say that? Oh, you let's have let's, let's have a uh, thing on it. What's that? <laughs> what? Remember Sammy Jenkins. Steve's theme song is "When I'm 64." <laughs> Remember Sam? <laughs> Leroy Jenkins. <laughs> <laughs> that guy was immortalized. That's Sorry, a... guys. I ate bad chicken. <laughs> no, that's not what he Wait, said. Wait, what does he say? <laughs> no, he says, "At least I got chicken." Oh, I thought he made and, it. And, and, and then all these years later, he got his lunch back, and he's still having chicken. That guy was immortalized. That that was a group from uh, called Pal. Uh, I think it was Pals and Friends, um, and that it was all fake, by the way. But it was fucking yeah, hilarious for anybody who played WoW. You're like, this guy is like going to go into um, what was it was the rook it was the uh, rookery from um, um, Blackwing Lair, right? And uh, he just goes, they're all like pretending they're all planning the raid out, <laughs> and they're like, okay, you're gonna be doing this, and you do that, and this, and all of a sudden he just runs in, and he screams, Leroy! Jenkins and he just goes aggro it's like every freaking whelp. <laughs> and they just chase him. That has got to be the greatest 
thing I've ever seen. I swear to God, I, I loved that, that was totally <laughs> mortalized. Yes, absolutely. See, we know we know a lot of shit around here. <laughs> Eroy Jenkins. Yeah. I miss well. I really do. But anyways, how can we don't it? I love yeah, I haven't played WoW in three years. No, I don't play WoW in years. I got too well, I got too addicted to it. The play it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I had I had one of the I was probably the best PvP mage on my server. And that's not bragging. If you go look at her stats, I it's I, so bragging. It was bragging. Um, Lilo, <laughs> her name's Lilo. She had she had the second most amount of kills on the entire that's server. My name. Um, yes, she was a badass fire mage. Then went frost because mechanics, but fire was better. Oh bitch! I would lie. I would just dot everything with this and then ignite and, and just sit there and watch people just flame death. It's great. <laughs> wow, that's they hated so me because I because back in the day of WoW, a fire maze was considered to be a true glass cannon. If you mastered it and played it well, you could just fuck somebody hard. But if you were sucky at it, you were mm. you were basically insta killed, right? Do you want to say that again? Sucky. No, suck. fuck somebody hard. <laughs> suck. That works too. Yeah. You can also this stick. is what happens when you get Nikki in a stream. You can't stick with science. You know? <laughs> Arcane was good for a I while. Always. Somebody's like Arcane is the best. Ar I like. I didn't mind playing Arcane Mage, but you had the thing with Arcane Mage was was back in the day. You really had to manage your mana because you would do um, three Arcane Blast, and then you would probably be out. If you continue to do Arcane Blast, even though it increased your, your your damage, you would probably be out of mana in no time, and it sucked. Yeah, I could talk about a lot of different subjects, people. Just bring it at me. Bring it at me. I'll bring it at you soon. Yeah, hor Nikki's horny tonight. Should we all fly? Should we fly to Colorado Springs and take care of her? For real? Really? I wonder. <laughs> you, you you have you have a boy toy within like an hour drive. I do, and it's horrible because it's an hour drive. So, most guys I'm will drive like a, a, most guys would die like a day or two. I know one guy that drove thirty six hours. For it. Same. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I tried PvP with Affliction Lock. Oh well, yeah, Affliction is a badass pvp -er. Now I like Destruction, but Affliction. You just dot stuff up and just let it die, yeah. <laughs> I've been playing a lot of uh, Hold.io because it's just a great game. What's that called? It's uh, Hold.io. There's also <laughs> Slither.io. That's a great one, too. Really, the I.O. games are fantastic. Buy her some vibrating panties and hook them up to Wi-Fi through Super Chat. <laughs> or just Super Chat. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. That's brilliant. Do that. It is brilliant. For for chatterbait and I'll hush hush of course wink and need nod YouTube need need it be informed informed explicitly. Yeah. I'm very titillated. We are looking at it. Was avenues. so bad. I was like avenues. staring at my manager today, just like staring at him, like I'm fuck you so bad. I'm Why sorry. are you guys so perverted? I'll, Somebody I'll needs stop. some relief. Oh, yeah, I need some relief, girl. What's wrong with me? Like Perversion. seriously, no, nothing. Oh, did I did I criticize it? Did I denounce it? Did I say it was <laughs> bad? I just asked <laughs> why she's so perverted. Wondering. I don't know. It's it's weird though. It's like no, I, it doesn't I, I, matter. It doesn't matter how much I'm satisfied. It never. I, I'm never you're, satisfied. You're, you're like you know? a shark with food. You just never, you're always hungry. It is it is a it is a feeding frenzy. What's sometimes? the longest you've ever gone between orgasms? I don't orgasm that much. Well, that explains I a lot like right there. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. I like having sex. We have sex, but... vegan atheists. We have now determined the problem. Right. We, we have <laughs> okay. Problem okay. Now. Let me let me break this down for you really quickly. Okay. The more I orgasm, the more I want more orgasms. That's so like my wife. Orgas uh, me orgasming doesn't satisfy me. It just makes I, me want more, and so my it's wife bad. is the same way. Exactly. Oh, I feel so bad for you, Zach. I, I, oh, I'm, no. not, I'm not. Gonna, <laughs> I'm not going to say anything about my uh, my enhanced friend. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> you know how many sound bites are coming out of this clip. <laughs> Isn't that a great term though? Enhanced friend. I love that. I like it. She's the, she's like the upgrade. She's like a friend, but a bit upgraded. Yeah. What about me? I feel like I don't want to be upgraded. I, I don't get to call her out springs. And you would kill me. <laughs> Who would kill me? Oh, I would kill you. you. Would, I wouldn't be able to handle that. Hmm. What if, like, there was another person to distract me? Well, Vegan's married, but um, <laughs> maybe. But we're, we're, we're poly. Yeah. Divorce. Divorce them, even if they are poly. <laughs> no. Everybody's poly JK. nowadays. JK! Jake, are you poly? That's because... <sighs> Jake. No. No? No. Unfortunately. No. <laughs> Your wife will let you be? <clears throat> Pretty much. Have you asked her? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Desperately. I cried. Begged. That's my idea of foreplay, crying, man. Please. Oh, my God. I did that at one Hey, you guys don't even know, man. Look, look, look here, here's the thing. I'm Jewish and I'm old. So, it's, I mean, half my energy expended is by the first two hours just begging, please. You know? I, I, don't, think, I don't think this requires a lot of energy, Steve. You, you ain't doing it right, then. <laughs> no, I just don't, I don't think you would expend a lot of energy. Well, with, I don't suck a dick, this. so I wouldn't know. <laughs> I do though. Okay. A lot. I was just gonna say I'm not judging, but I just. But I gotta tell you this: I do believe this. I know how we went from science to this, but whatever. It's rum and coke night. This is what happened. It was right? it was me. It was my. It was fault. it was okay. you. So, but okay. Hypothetically speaking, if I ever did suck a dick, would I probably be pretty good at it? I think I probably would be. Because I mean, I I know what. I mean, there's not much to it. Well, I, I how could, your how, how, well, uh, how attentive ah, are you? Yeah, I was gonna say, as, how much effort would I put into it? Be the case. I yeah, don't know. Gotta, yeah, I don't know. Gotta, you know. Depends on Work how the... attentive you are. Come on. I probably wouldn't be that attentive. <laughs> yeah. No. No. Probably not. I'm too you attentive. You would be probably sometimes. be trying to disassociate yourself. I would probably have me. I'm probably having wishing for an out of body experience. <laughs> I don't think you want to. I don't think like, you want to go into my. I'd be, body, I'd be like induction you, now. Be... Induction now. Put me in a different consciousness. <laughs> out, of, out of body experience. Speaking of induction, hey team skeptic, get your freaking hot ass in here because I need them someone else to focus on. I'm feel, I feel <laughs> like I'm a piece of meat here. Yeah, you are. Oh, I was watching one of Team Skeptic's videos oh. the other day. Isn't he gorgeous? Like no, I was just looking yeah, it's at it. not my type either, but I just, people people. say it. <laughs> he's a young man, isn't he? Mm -hmm. yeah. he's, he's, like... a good, he's a good shape. He's pretty jacked. I'll give him that. You know who else is gorgeous? I like older guys. Had me the cat's human you know, good taste. Um, meat suit. It was a hot meat suit. Padme? Padme's a good looking cat. Yeah. yeah well, it's the meat suit that the cat wears that I like. I am a I am a cunninglingus, yes. Um, <laughs> you know, I like Thorn from now. the Hex Girls. Same. Same. Scummer. Like, Scummer has become Thorn a member. Yay, Goddess Scummer. Is Scummer. my background. Mm, Can everybody say thank you, Goddess Scummer? Don't talk on. Hey, thank you, Goddess Scummer. I was obs I was obsessed with her. Nick, so Nick, Nikki, in your most sexiest Love voice, Thorn. say say th thank you, Goddess Scummer. Your sexiest voice. New thank member. Goddess Scummer. That's your sexiest? Thank you. It's better. I can't, I don't know. I don't have a sexy voice. I just speak softly sometimes. Yeah, well, that's all it really is. Do you, want me to, like, do you want me to like masturbate while I say no! it? I could, no! I could <laughs> no! You can't see downstairs. Steve, why on earth would you say no to that? What is wrong? Because we're live! <laughs> This oh, are we, are we live? Yeah, this, this, is, this is not YouTube. This is you can't home. do that live. <laughs> Didn't no. you say two hours ago that this was going to be monetized? Not yeah, anymore. No. It's not no. anymore. This is far past monetization. It, it was. Common folk notes should never Steve. be monetized. Sorry. We <laughs> were as far as we possibly could. Yeah, Steve, did you grab that new member? Uh, yeah, we have water. a new member? Yes, yeah, Jeff. Yeah, I got it. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah, God is coming. Yeah. Um, by the way, we can't. We, we can't. Send them a link. We, we can't even get a hundred likes on this video. I don't get it. Because we we're not talking enough sex. We need to do strip. We need to do strip. Have you, have you not heard oh. of Copa? I could take oh. my shirt off. Matt. 
I could just do that right now. Hey, you just you have to set it to, okay. to make sure it's you you know, okay. not okay. child appropriate. Hey, Lawrence, then I you're fine. Like, <laughs> well, none of these my videos are. Um, but I'll tell you this. If Cheshire gets her channel going on Chatterbait, because she actually is thinking about it, um, we can play something like that on Chatterbait. Cool. I don't care. I I am not ashamed. I really am not. But you can't do it on YouTube. To tell her to hit me up if she wants uh, to, to make some money. I swear to God. Wow. <laughs> oh, fuck you. And by the way, <laughs> speaking of, hey, look at Sp Scott Spangler here. <laughs> Scott Spangler showed up tonight. Scott Spangler was in my very first hangout seven and a half years ago. When I say I have, I have loyal people, I have people that are just amazing, that have been with me for seven and a fucking half years. Scott, uh, Scott has been one of them, and Chucky Darwin has been one, another one. Um, but he's in the Army right now, but he, he comes by every so often. So, I, you know, I, I got to tell you, when I look at other channels, they seem to cycle through people. It's like, oh, just go through. New people, oh, don't like anymore, and they, they exit. I tried not to do that. I want people to, to stick around for years to come. Because uh, we have fun on this channel, and we will be talking about science and a whole bunch of other fun stuff coming up. Um, I'm going to have Ozzy come back. Um, I want to talk about uh, Sosa's paper with him. And uh, I got Malpass on a couple things. So we're going to be doing a lot of stuff in the new year. So just let me have my vacation and um, hit the road after that. You know, hit the road. Well, they say hit the road running. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, Chess wants to do Yeah, Chess wants to do Chatterbait. Yeah, she really does. Yeah. Oh, that'll be a pretty See? awesome. That sounds pretty awesome. I'm jealous. Steve, I want to come Chesh visit you so in well. Texas. I told you you could just come down the fourth, but I mean, did she want to spend Where, money for that? Uh, did I tell you I just signed a contract no. with the university? No, I've been, yeah. dude. I've been worried as fuck about you because you're like one of my besties, and I, I think the world of you. But you, you don't tell me these things, man. Well, I try. You're busy and all that garbage. I'm not busy. I haven't been busy in a while. But we, Don't been, lie. I've been busy. He's been sick though. But have you really? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, that was so fake. <laughs> so fake. That's that's you know what that reminds that reminds me of, of Nikki's orgasms. Oh my god, so fake. It was actually a real call. You lied. Mm. My orgasm. Swear to god, right, so wait, so you got so you your game of crazy people around here. Your game is really employed now. You're fucking cop, I'm sick. Like you're, you're gamefully employed. Oh. Uh, yeah, start in the then January. All right, so, uh, like so or something. You can you can actually be a two dollar member when you get a chance. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Somebody join. Give me money. Science or satire. Is that team skeptic? I believe it is. <gasps> what? I believe it is. Team. What? Hey, you know what? I have a date with team. You guys don't. I'm jealous. You should be. Mm -hmm. I am. We're gonna stream. Videos. We are streaming it though. Our first date. Nice. Yes. That's hot. Dude, but what are you streaming? Uh, team and I have a. Uh, you, we, we, he's taking. It? He's taking me out hear me for now? our first date. Yeah, we have a first date. <gasps> can y'all hear me now? Yes. I've yes. been talking this whole fucking time. Now we can oh hear you. Oh my god. <laughs> no. totally now, now, let, 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 let me clarify that he's he's bringing a woman and I'm bringing a woman as well. Okay, so, is he of age though? Oh, <gasps> oh my god! I think he's bringing two. Well, he's deep skeptic. So he's like, no, I'm not. It's a lot of fun then. Yeah, no, I'm not bringing two. There is a I, child. I, I, Why are we talking about this? What do you? Who are you I'll bring? have a friend. Oh, he's wearing headphones. You have a friend with you. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I'll which, have a friend. Which should be attractive. A very beautiful. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Steve. Awesome, because I mean, sweet lets me look. She encourages it actually. Oh my god. Steve. Uh, you know, I'll uh. I'll send you a picture of her just so you can see. Okay. Before, uh, wow. before you guys come and you, down. You, you'll let me look too? <clears throat> no. Well, no, I mean, sure. She can't stop like me. That, but... You can't stop me. Anyways. I mean, look. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. Can't. I mean, she, uh, I said, look, don't get all fucking she's... weird she's... out of me. Oh, no. no that, uh, <laughs> she's <laughs> like, uh, she's a really good friend of mine. She's a really, really, really good friend of mine. Really, I've known her for really, a really, really long her time. Her sweet will get along? Friends. Oh yeah, for sure, hundred awesome. percent. Hey, that's sweet. weird. Why is my science or satire? Oh, that's yeah. weird. Anyway, so how are y'all doing tonight? We're doing awesome, my friend. We're doing awesome. We're, Morning. We are doing a science hangout <laughs> in Rum and Coke, talking about biology, <laughs> but whatever. Yeah, biology is still science. Yeah. And we're doing a we're doing a, a join drive because I got um, partnerships with YouTube now for members. 
film. Dude, that is fucking awesome, bro. Isn't it? I'm happy yeah. for you. Hell yeah, it yeah. is. It's, 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 that, you know, I'll be honest, that really get, adds a dynamic to the channel. Um, because I got rolled out with memberships uh, when they did the... Uh, when they did like the the promo, you know, when they were doing like the beta for it, mm -hmm. I was rolled out early. So I, I happened to be really lucky to catch that. And uh, it really added a dynamic to my channel. It, it makes it, it just makes it, it gives people, it gives the audience one advanced thing that they can do to show support and mm -hmm. to kind of uh, separate themselves from, you know, from everybody else. I mean, it, it's nice for the viewer. I, I, I think so as well, because look, the normies. I, when, I, when I look at some of these other channels that I think are shit, um, and I see people that, that are actually members, and I'm like, you're supporting a shit channel. You're submitting, you're literally supporting a shit person. That disturbs me a little bit. I can't do anything Steve, about it. Steve, you, Steve, you don't have to worry about it. I don't have any members. It's okay. <laughs> That's true. I don't have to worry about your channel. He's talking about Fight the Flat Earth. <laughs> but it is Wait, we, fight, fight the Flat Earth. <laughs> I he like, just got memberships, I, too. <laughs> I love Fight the Flat Earth. Shut up. I know, I know. Kawasa5000, did Team Skeptic do his mankini dance? I couldn't stay until the end of the stream. Oh, fuck, yes, I did. <gasps> did yes, I did. You, oh, my gosh. You were the one that asked me to do it, I believe. And, and I missed it. Kawasa would ask I... me, yes. Right? Oh, hold, hold this hold is on. a crying shame. Not, not a fucking problem. I believe I can... Well, I'll try to find it. It was a five and a half hour long stream last you, you night. You danced for five oh, and a half hours? Shit. No, I, I wouldn't have been able to do that. But I did, so. throw the, I did throw the mankini <laughs> no, on for everybody. You're not giving yourself enough credit. You I, did, I did throw the mankini on for everybody, and somebody asked me to throw a cup in it. Um, <gasps> I, I assume they meant like an athletic cup, but I decided to go with a red solo cup route. <laughs> so. can, can, can I ask why you own a mankini? Uh, yeah, so, okay, all right, the whole story behind the mankini, the lady? It, it actually oh, has, like, a, yeah, it has, like, a story behind it, it, um, okay, so I asked the people in the chat, what is the next emoji that they wanted, and they voted that they wanted a Team Skeptic avatar in a mankini, so I made one for my channel members, well, after I did that, then at another time, uh, they had said, hey, you know what, uh, whatever, I forgot what it was, I believe when I hit 20,000 subscribers, uh, why don't you get in a mankini for the live stream? And I was like, all right, I'll do that. Yeah, not thinking that everybody fucking listening is a critical thinker that doesn't forget shit. So as I got closer <laughs> and closer to 20K, they were like, oh, fucking yeah, don't forget, Team Skeptic, you said you would get in a mankini. <laughs> and so 20,000 came, ar came around. It, I think it was, well, yeah, it was all, it, I can tell you what night it was for sure because there's a funny story behind it. I did it on October 31st, which was Halloween, all right? I was expecting an Amazon package, and I was uh, in my live show. I get a knock at the, at the door. I go run over there. Of course, I'm in my mankini, whatever. It's an Amazon driver, right? It's no big deal because it's an adult, whatever. They've seen weirder shit before, I'm sure. Well, I get to the door, open the door to get my package, and but I you, forget that it's also fucking Halloween. But you already had your package with you. Giggity. Oh no. Oh, you had there was there was a child at the door. Oh, <laughs> oh no. With their parents behind them. Yes, of course. I had the door like stopped at my chest with my, you know, bottom half hanging uh, you know, inside. They didn't see anything, no. but I saw it? the I saw the kid and I was like, oh my god, I forgot to even get candy and my lights on. And I answered the door in the mankini, and her parents are right behind her. And I I just no. looked up at them and I said, I'm so sorry. I have to go. I'm in a live show right now on the internet. No. <laughs> you shut the door. That just makes me oh, hurt. Yeah. <laughs> There's so much cringe on that, dude. And that happened live. And that happened live. That yes. happened live. You, you didn't even Did they hear you? Did they lie to say you're out of candy? Did they hear that happen? Did they hear it? Uh, they didn't hear that oh. part, but when I got back, I was totally oh. dumbfounded because it was setting in that, oh, fuck, I just answered the door <laughs> in a mankini. <laughs> But it was amazing though, it was a it, it was fun. Reminds me as so now every every so often people say, "Hey, jump in that mankini for us." Reminds me as I don't mind. Reminds me when I was yes, a kid please. trick or treating the things that I saw. Repress <laughs> mem memories. I, 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 thought, I thought that sentence was going to end so differently. <laughs> <laughs> well, to my credit, to my credit, I did think it was an Amazon driver, not you know a kid coming up with candy from the door. We're gonna try not but to I judge. But I doubt anybody will ever come to that door 
any Halloween. <laughs> no, yeah, forward. you ain't getting drink or treaters <laughs> ever again. Yeah, ever. Good, good Even way to save on candy. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> You might get free eggs though. You just have to scoop them up. Off the house. Hey, don't eggs. go to the house. That, that one guy. Yeah, don't go there. <laughs> you always get one in the neighborhood, right? That like that one house. Your parents say, "Don't don't go trick or treating there." Yeah. Uh, my parents just said, there. "Don't go trick or treating." Period. Oh, uh, really? Were they overprotected? Oh my god! Yes. Really? My my mom was. I mean, my mom was a, like you know typical Jewish Jap, not a pejorative. Um, she really is, and she um. She was always like, you know, go in groups and, but she was very paranoid, but yeah, we were fine trick or treating, but it was that whole razor blade and apple scare, you know? Yeah. Oh my God. They, they, uh, they moved us out to the country and isolated us from everybody. We didn't do trick or treating. It's the devil's holiday. We didn't watch TV. Oh yeah. God, I fucking feel like it. We were just non-denominational Christian, quote Uh, unquote. Younger, young earth. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> dude. Dude, the we had um like answers in Genesis. Oh and, um, God. Yeah. Wait, are your parents still like that? Um not really. They're divorced and um my mom is still kind of like eh. but the, the the most amount of thing my parents ever got into cult was uh they tried doing Amway for a little while and that didn't work, but uh that they my my parents were never into any of that stuff, but Amway to me is a little bit cultish. It depends on which section. Of, depends on which part of Amway you're in. There's there's so much variation to it. Possibly, which... but it was still MMLM. If, if you're if you're in a pyramid scheme type of product reselling, it's a cult because yeah, I, I have more so family. I have more, I have more family members that want something to do with me because they're pyramid scheme than any other reason. Yeah. Legally speaking, Amway is not a pyramid scheme, though. I know it's technically yeah. technically not a Ponzi, but it's still an MLM. Well, Ponzi, no, no, not yeah, a Ponzi. I'm, I'm not talking about Ponzi scheme, which is where it's illegal. I'm, it's a pyramid scheme it's because pyramid, if, you yeah. make mo- if you make money based on somebody's sales underneath you, it's a pyramid scheme. Uh, all pyramids. Okay, okay. Oh, wait, literally, wait, wait, hang on, hang on. how does every business not look like that? Every business every, doesn't look like that because the business every business has, looks like a pyramid. No, because it serves because because when you have pyramid schemes, it's all about sales and sub sales, not about a product that's being released by right. professionals. Can I well, speak on that? You're going to you're going to avoid. No, 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 be, for, hang on, you're going to avoid a Ponzi scheme, uh, technically, if you have a product. But the, the, the problem is, most of those models are unsustainable. Kawasa five thousand PSA for new followers. Steve also still owes his fans a shirtless show way back. <laughs> I'm going to delete, delete that super chat. Um, I, thought for, I, thought you, I thought you said you weren't going to do the uh, um, shirtless. Let, let me clarify this. That was uh, that mm. was an episode to be done on the non sequitur show, which I have not have back yet. Kawasa. Mm. Okay, so we'll do that there. Mm. When, I get, when, when I get in better shape. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is that, that going to be part can, of the mm-hmm. inaugural uh, no. of uh, No. No. Hey, can, oh, can I uh, comment on... That just sounds like moving the goalpost, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> can I comment on, that, uh, on the pyramid scheme? Yeah, go nuts. Because uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I actually have some inside um, knowledge go on walk, that. Because I dated, I, I dated a girl whose stepfather was like a one of the main people in uh, pyramid schemes. So like these people, okay, they, all, they have a, their own network. So they agree amongst each other at the top that this is the product we're going to sell next. And this was when they were pushing uh, Noni Juice, N-O-N-I, Noni Juice, I believe is what it was called. And I got to witness it from, you know, from being just part of the family unit at the time. I got to witness him selling it to other people. There was nothing to sell ever. There wasn't there. Yes, there was a Noni Juice product, but the people at the top never sold that product to anybody. All they did is sold the idea to sell the product to people. And then they told those people, hey, if you want to make money, don't sell the product. Sell the idea to sell the product to somebody else. And the more people that they sell the idea to sell the product to, the more the pyramid builds up. And then once they've flooded everybody at the bottom, they just move on to a different product. Yeah, and then they like go back juice. to the other guys <laughs> and they, they say, hey, check this out. Now, this is a uh, foot deodorizer powder. This is the next big thing on the market. Nobody ever heard of this. There's science behind it. You should tell all your friends who you got to sell the noni juice. Tell them to sell this stuff next. And sure enough, that shit works. And the, there's nobody that sells it. <laughs> that's that's generally correct about most um, MLMs, but it's not correct about 
Amway, and it's not correct about in some cases um, Mary Kay. Um, like I've 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 been involved with like uh, the knife people. I forget which one it was. Hinkle. Filter Queen. Knife knife and... was Hinkle. Uh, that's I don't remember if that yeah, was there, the one that there, I was in. There was Hinkle knives. I had three people that were trying to get into that as well. <laughs> but with with good with knives, Amway. Please. With Amway, they literally have. Um, a whole set of products you you have like your um what they started off with was the organic cleaner shit mm -hmm. and it's actually a good cleaner okay truth be told it's a good cleaner yeah, the they products now aren't have bad a yeah bunch of other products like they have a sports recovery drink it's an energy drink but it's all natural and shit like that like there there is a lot of different products that if you're really engaged in selling the products which i i know people who i used to be involved with but i i don't do that anymore but it the who have a good customer base there are a lot of people who have a good customer base like you would have like um a store without a storefront or an amazon store something like that where somebody has a, a lot of customers that they're constantly selling products to you're you're not gonna be the person on the top um if you join late that, that's true but that's in, why it's pyramid style yeah, yeah. but it, the it's yeah it it's not something that i think is good for me but it's not exactly as underhanded as uh you were making it out to be earlier no, like, no, not no, every no, single no. one of them is that way not i wasn't every, trying to make not, it not, underhanded. Not you, um, it's not scientology shit the, 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 no no the word the word scheme does not necessarily make it something to the effect of being shady they all sell products they all have something that could potentially be useful or beneficial to somebody but they all work on the same principle of you making money based on the work of others selling a product that is marketed from the top down yeah that's yeah. what a pyramid scheme is. It doesn't mean it's shady. It just means it's a pyramid scheme because it builds on a pyramid model. Amway was one of the first. Tupperware was like that. Coppercraft was like that. Um, we see a lot of products coming out these days. Essential Anything oils. That, yeah, essential oils is another one, but they're all based on products that have potential value. But the, but the point being is, is they're all based on, hey, this is the next thing to make your life better. And they get their family members and friends to try to sell for them so they can make money based on those sales. That's what, okay, like for example, the Hinkle knives thing, the way that operates, you, you have to, in order to get started in that, you have to buy a set of Hinkle knives, which are good knives, but they cost about 300 bucks for a set. And then you basically sell to your friends and family. And then once those people are done, nobody else wants to buy them. These are start, these are fast, they're called fast, um, uh, God, fast something or other, but basically this is how they work. They'll, they'll get you. And they'll say, hey, we got to wait for you to make money. And yeah, you can make a couple bucks out of it. But you've already sold to your friends, your family, your parents. And then you're not going to sell anymore. So you made a couple bucks, but you made the company freaking Boku money, right? Yeah, but they're not sustainable businesses. They're not sustainable. They're not None sustainable. sustainable. Yeah, well, I've said they're, that. They're, well, they're, not, not, brick, they're, they're not brick and mortar. They're, they're not brick and mortar in any way. And if you have a product you don't that, need that maybe... Mortar. I'm not saying that you need it, but I said they're not brick and mortar and they, and they do work ba based on the basis of, Hey, let's get it out there. Let's market it hard. And then let's move on to the next product. It's not a sustainable product over a long period of time. Right. But again, that, that depends on which one you're talking about. It, it, it is no different than any other business. You got the people who created it, the people who are at the top, who are going to earn the most amount of money. They're going to market hard to the people who are lower. If, so for instance, you're at like Ashley Furniture Company. The people who own Ashley are going to market hard the products that they happen to be selling at that time. That is and a the poor correlation. The you, you cannot compare no, Ashley yeah. Furniture with a, with a network marketing or a top-down marketing. No, it, it's not that different of a business model. The, the, it, it, the difference is the product at the end. The no, the, di the, the difference is the difference is it doesn't go beyond the salesman. Salesmen don't get to create salesmen, and that's what network marketing does. Salesmen sell to other salesmen. That's and the then it, the, the best salesmen go on to be the managers and hire more salesmen. No, 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 no. They've done this with legal products. They've done this with services. Yeah. And the whole thing is is not about the product itself, but about selling people to not only purchase the product but to sell it to others. Yeah, it, again, it, it depends on which one you're talking about. It depends on what they're selling. That's my point is if I'm selling beds 
or I'm selling something for, let's say, you know, a mattress firm, I'm not going to my brother and going, hey, if you can sell a few mattresses, this will be good for you. You buy one and then sell to others, and I make money off that. That's a pyramid scheme or a network marketing scheme. When you work for a company as a salesperson, Carl Sales, bed sales, whatever sales, you're not sitting there selling people to sell. That's the difference. Well, if, if you're if you're in a position where you can um, uh, franchise out, it, what we're talking about is like, think of it like this. Uh, MLM is like a franchise. You got the people at the top who own it. You got the person who owns the franchise, the manager and the salespeople. And these managers and salespeople have the op opportunity to franchise out as well. The difference is MLM is much more short form, much more um, smaller, smaller groups. But it, it, it is not that different. The, the difference is like you're not going to be selling knives over and over and over again to the same people. Your, yeah, your you furniture you, isn't going to be selling. You just sell it to your friends and family. That's what they're relying on. They're, they're fast. Right. fast I, I, there's a name for it. I can't remember what it's called. But a Fast turnover. It's not even that. It's, um, oh, what the hell? Now you can make me look this shit up. I don't like looking at that. But see, that's, that's also why the, the uh, pyramid scheme is so effective. And, and the, the whole idea is not about the product, right? You no. can sell those knives only one time. Exactly. Now, what you yeah, can after, do, after you, you can sell them to your friends and family, you're exactly what the knives to sell the knives to their friends, too. And <laughs> then you can sell them. Also, don't forget, sell this idea of selling knives as well so that you build up this much greater you know uh, a number of people that are buying knives but it's also going through four or five different hands now because you've convinced people to convince people to convince people to sell the knives which which is which is exactly my point the 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 end product makes the difference that's that's the difference in the whole thing um you you have companies like the knife people, like the essential oils people, like the legal people, they're they're selling a product one time, when or or very few times. You you take a look at um, Mary Kay and uh, Amway, they're selling something that uh, is going to be um, bought over and over again, sometimes multiple times a month. Uh, Mary Kay is makeup, Amway is literally everything. Um, if, well, okay. if you can find so, it on Amazon, so guess, you can find it in uh, Amway. Well, well, I guess what you're really trying to tell us, in my opinion, is that Amway and Mary Kay have a better pyramid marketing scheme than knives and it's you know other things because it's more it's more sustainable. You can continue to do this because it's, you're not selling knives one time; you're selling toilet rotating. paper. Yeah, toilet paper. Yeah, you're, you're selling reusable. Uh, the what do they call them? Uh, consumables. Consumables. Yeah. Consumables. Yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. it's not a bad idea. It's a great idea, but it's it 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 kind of like I've had family that's done this, and I've also had family that sells cars, and you kind of get the same thing from those. Those are the people that always call you and say, "Hey, uh, you know, you haven't bought a car in two years. You, you know uh, what they should you sell? You want to come down here and look look down at our lot? We got a good one, I think, for you." Tim and you're skeptic? like, "You're my, huh? You know what? The, you know what they should sell? What's that? Guns." <laughs> Gunway has access to guns. Sell guns. Their Be a gun seller. Everybody should own a gun. Always a market. Always a market for that. Well, you know, I'm a, I'm a big second second amendment. Essentially, so. I would I would be. I, I think it's okay to call like the knives and the legal, a prepaid legal, and and the other ones. They would be a pyramid scheme. But the Amway and the Mary Kay and no, I don't think any similar schemes, ones but... are are no more pyramid than any other job. Well, no, they're pyramid, um, but they're not schemes. But the thing is that I don't like MLMs as a whole. I think it's a really shitty business structure. Um, but they're not they're not illegal. They're not Ponzi, but they are based upon Ponzi Ponzi type um, methodolo methodology, right? I mean, for example, like you can get away with having a Ponzi scheme if you're actually selling a product. <laughs> and I'd also like to argue that point that you just made about um, all businesses are basically pyramid schemes because that's not necessarily true. Let's say you you have an owner. We'll just say a non-CEO where there's a singular owner and the yeah. owner decides, hey, you know what? 
I have this I want business owner. structure. I have this business structure <laughs> structure of what I think my business will run most effectively as and uh, and get the most profit. And he says, "Okay, I think I'm going to bring in $100,000 if I run it this way, so I have $30,000 to allocate to this person and 30,000 to this person, and they're going to have a few people under them to make sure that their jobs are being done and and everything." But the whole idea is that whole group is working for the one person at the top and the one person at the top is actually paying them out of his pocket to ensure that he continues to bring that profit in. It's completely different than a pyramid scheme because in a pyramid scheme, and, and I'm, I'm, I, I know you don't want to call it a pyramid. We can call it a pyramid structure. It, Amway is still a pyramid structure because the person at the top is making money off the people underneath yes. them who are making money off the people underneath them and so forth that's and so pyramid. forth and so that, forth. That, no, that's, that's exactly how a regular business works. No, you have it's not. CEO no, it's or, not. No, 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 no. Listen, no, no. It's you're, not exactly you're, the same. It's not exactly the same. Okay. Correlations. But there is there is a definite correlation. The, if you take a look, the person at the top, the owner, CEO, whatever, right? They earn the most amount of money. The managers underneath them, they no, have a but no listen. Stockholders earn the most amount of money. They elect the board of directors. The board of directors elect all the executives that run a company that provides a product or service. When you're selling Amway, it's based on the sales scheme of said product or service. Yes, exactly. 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 And that's the key. And that's the key thing. Look, I've been in retail sales for 20 years. I've been operations manager, store manager, assistant DM. Okay, so when I'm a manager in a managerial context, I don't make money off the individual amount of sales. So for example, if I have a salesperson in my force, he sells and say he sells ten thousand dollars that month. I don't get a commission of that. He gets a commission of that. What I get is after all the things all said and done, books, net profit, everything else, then they say, you know what, this is how much the company made. We're gonna give you a portion of that or the store made. It's so it's not a direct relationship. I don't get a direct commission off somebody else's um sale that not, depends on the structure of the business i've never had a and, business where it's not right like right but not not to mention the the singular thing that kills your argument is to say that a, a kid at best buy could go in there and sell nothing and still get paid an hourly wage when that would never happen and any pyramid scheme would nobody could do nothing could not have people already working underneath them see that's the thing is that in that, in that any kind of, the pyramid, structure of the business how about we ask the resident yeah. genius in the room nikki yeah. Um, no, okay, John. <laughs> John, you want to weigh in? You're the smartest one. That was so. mean. I Damn. love you. You're just that here for me. you're just here for the eye candy, Nikki. <laughs> she's but, okay with that, but it's good eye candy. <laughs> she's she's got you know. So it's a, in in the pyramid schemes though. It's she's typically you candy. always have a set amount that's going to be made by the person underneath you, and the person at the top can also sell the product it's it's a real so it's like oh sorry go ahead. yeah yeah it's, it's just basically like a repetition a copy of boxes all the way down and every box is making the same off of the boxes underneath them but they're also making you know whatever percentage of the boxes that are underneath those boxes and continuing Correct. more and more and more so it's it's a cumulative effect it's uh i'm trying to think of the word uh like it's kind of residual, you know, you're, you're making money off of people who are making money. You're just making a percentage yeah, exactly. of what they're making and the no business term, works that term, way. Yeah. The technical term is network marketing and it has a coined phrase because that's exactly what it is. Whereas your typical business does not run that way. All yeah, right. Well, we beat this all. topic to death. Oh my God. John, is I, I'm trying to, is yeah, science? I'm trying to get John back <laughs> in here. Economics. It's economics. <laughs> We have economics, <laughs> which which may or may not be science. But but yeah. Ask. By the way, let me tell. We have a PhD here in astrophysics. Right. And we're talking about MLM. And, let and me, come on. Let me tell you. Let me tell you something, Team Skeptic. <laughs> I took macro and micro. Multi-level marketing works. I, I took I took macro and macro. I took macro and microeconomics from A M um, A and M Texas enough. College. Okay, extension. And let me tell you, macroeconomics was the hardest. I think one of the hardest classes I ever took in my entire life. I didn't understand fuck all from it. It is magic. It is evil. It is wrong. It shouldn't. It should not exist. Um, yeah, macroeconomics is way harder than any science because nobody gets it. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? Who took who took macroeconomics? Anybody? No, nobody? Really? <laughs> I took. I took. I think I took it in high school, but I don't think no, I took it in college, college level macroeconomics. Yeah. Not in high school. No, I took macro level ec. You didn't find it was hard. I did not find it was fun. Is it was the in... worst teacher ever. Can, can, it, it was. It was back in two thousand five. I was a 34 year old man and he told us that we didn't understand things that were third grade math in his country. 
<laughs> oh my god, dude, it's differential equations. It's literally Keynesian <laughs> uh, supply and demand, which is diff EQ. It actually used differential so. equations. Yes. Yeah, he, yeah, he was like, this is third grade math oh, in my bullshit. country. What's wrong with you people? Oh my god, hell no. It was harder than any math class I ever took. No, I did he, understand. He, he was from, he was from India. He told us it was oh, third grade math god. in his country and made everybody feel like idiots including my 34-year-old self. I got to be oh, in the class. God, that no, is I a great it. way to teach. Yeah. Well, I, 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 feel like I got a B, and I swear to you, I'm not even bullshitting. I have no idea what the fuck I did in that class, and I still got a B. <laughs> I didn't understand any of it. I it was the most rote memorization I've ever had in my yes. life. Just fucking did it and said, "Fuck <laughs> this, it sucked." No, you and me both, because I was like, I was like, I'm sure I got a C minus. I have no clue how that turned into a B, but I, 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 Dude, I talked to my supply class, line, like, the, the demand line, cross like this, go like this. D you try to do figure out a cost analysis, and then you've got like multiple lines like this, and you're doing what's called a um, optimization problem. Have you ever done optimization? Yes. Yeah, remember doing optimization with with differential equations? I'm like, yes. I'm like, I don't. What? No, no. He was like, what is wrong with you people? You this is understand. third grade math in my country. This is third grade math. You don't understand this. Oh, and we're like, God. no, we're just ignorant Americans. Uh, sorry for our poor education system. Yes, I, 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 I wasn't used to that. Um, I didn't understand how to do optimization very well using calculus to figure out how to do. You know, I didn't have Dr. Kroon around to help me, which well, would have helped. Maybe. Sure. John, did you take macroeconomics? Did you fall asleep on us? What? Dad, can did you hear me? Yeah. He's like, are you just going to say multi level equations? Are, are, are you alive, John? Are you okay? Yeah, I uh, took a nap. I texted you saying uh, I don't uh, there's no physics, so I got to take a nap. Oh. Now, uh, now you guys woke me up. That's good. Now That's we good. could. Uh, Go back what's to up? What are you, what... I sent you a Have you ever on. Do you remember how to, did you ever take, did you ever take macroeconomics and how to do optimization problems using differential equations? No, I remember taking differential equations and doing an optimization problem in the context of economics. Okay. Same, <laughs> same thing. I mean, it's a little different. different. It's a little well, okay. Different. Similar though. It sucks. It advanced. You got like, I remember, I remember you had like three lines and you had like, Say okay, if this was like the supply, this was like the man, this is like this, and how much, how much you got to sell per widget for this much amount of money? If you sold this many units at this amount of price, at this amount, it was, it it sucked. Don't forget wow. the GMP and the gross national pod product and the domestic product, <laughs> and, and 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 if if you have you have two years of recession, then it's considered to be a uh, inf, uh, was it stagflation and recession? Yeah, I hated all that crap, dude. What's yeah. the matter, Steve? You don't understand third we, grade math in my country. Can we go back to boobs? Can we go <laughs> back to astrophysics? Yeah. Hey, all right. So let's go back to astrophysics for a second. TJ, I said, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. TJ, that? we're going to talk about how, astro about how about the astrophysics of boobs? We're, well, hang on. TJ, TJ Tuttle happens to love astrophysics. It is like his favorite subject on the planet. Yeah, he, he, he messaged me earlier going, God, I love this conversation. I so want to be a part to talk about astrophysics. And I was like, dude, okay. By the way, I'm going out with TJ on the 4th, too. We're going to have a double date, so. No tongue. Oh, cool. Hell Satan. What's that like to live deliciously? Hey, so what, what are we going to do, Steve? Me and you. Oh, when? When? We're, we're, when? Okay, first off, what's, we need to discuss plans. If not on air, at least off air, oh, we yeah, need we to will. discuss plans. Well, I'm, okay, first of all, I've got a four-star hotel with jacuzzi. <laughs> inside the room or outside the room um, <laughs> i don't know it says question. private so i don't know what that means i think it's outside but whatever big room i got a, it's a nice hotel um i, I but uh let's see okay this is my itinerary Clickety clack. we fly in we fly in the second um we're gonna have our own day for that we're gonna meet up with tj and jim we're gonna hang out with them for a while um <gasps> jim no jim no no jim hall Aww. Oh my God, her. Uh, and and we'll hang out with them for a while. Then obviously, uh, I'm, I'm probably gonna have dinner with Sweet. I like to take her out to dinner that night. The third, we're gonna be doing um, a a seminar, a Q and A called uh, Agnostic Epistemology. That's gonna be at the Atheist Christian Book Club in Arlington, Texas. Uh, TJ and 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 Jim are gonna be working that out. They're gonna be our chauffeurs, I guess, or whatever. Um, on the fourth, we have a meet and greet, and I think that's when I'm gonna meet up with Team Skeptic. And uh, anybody who wants to come join us. The fifth, I'm going to be spending all day and night hanging out with the suite. And the sixth, we, we fly out. So that's my itinerary. Sound good? 
Yeah. Awesome. So the fourth for sure. And then just let me know yep. Yep. When, anytime else you're going to be doing something that. Well, if you uh, want to come by on the third after the, uh, if you want, are you going to go to the, uh, the uh, Q and A that I'm doing? I don't see why I would not. How far are you, are you going to live stream it? Yes. Well, I'm, I'm not too to my far channel. to walk. I'm too far away to walk, but I'm sure if I jumped in the car, I could probably get how, there. How far are you from Arlington, Texas? About 20 minutes. Oh, fuck. Driving. Yeah. Yeah. Come down on the third then. Why don't you RSVP and why don't you like join us for the <laughs> agnostic epistemological Q and A thing that I'm doing, which by the way I don't know what I'm doing, but TJ can probably we're gonna get really drunk and we're gonna like get fucked up and we're just gonna party. That's just pretty much what I do every That's night. Really all we're gonna do. Yeah, I mean it's not like we're gonna do anything serious. We just get fucked up and party and, and I well, love that, that idea. far away. I probably won't be able to drink too much that far away. No, I get uh, that because I got drive back. But um, but when on the fourth. If uh, where, where are you day. trying to meet up on the fourth? I have something. I have a place set aside. For Anything us that you want to do on the fourth, head. we will, we will make okay. the fourth your ball game. Everybody right. can fucking come too. It's at a it's at a fucking wing shack. I so come. it's like a sports. I know you do. It's like a it's at a sport. <laughs> <It's> a, <laughs> Sorry. I'm like, way yeah, too quick. I'm way like, too quick. I'm way too quick with it. So. I know you do, baby. Uh, I know you do. <laughs> I, I will stop mid conversation just to to give an ironic answer to a woman who needs it. All right. So um, oh, I need it. it. I know you do, and uh, I got it for you. Mel, but hey, that, yes, sir. Yeah, real quick, uh, Mel Fagan. Thank you for becoming a member. By the way, I saw the other day. Thank you, Mel Fagan. Everybody says thank you, Mel. Yes, thank I'll, you. I'll read. I'll read off all the names when I'm done. I have a list of all the names of people that have become members. So thank you. Go ahead. So on the fourth, we want to do what? Oh, just we're going to go to this little wing shack called the uh, the Winged Nut, and I've already talked to them. Uh, they're good personal friends of mine. The owners are. Mm. They're going to give us drink specials that night, so we can sit there have a conversation. If we want to set up and pull the cameras up and have a yeah, little live stream from there, they have that. a badass fucking. Fuck. They have badass well, fucking Wi-Fi connection, and we can party over there and. I've, I've told, I, the, the I'm told Sweet to bring her little black dress or something accordingly where she can like um, be looking fine and uh, <laughs> also easy access. <laughs> but we're, uh, this is going to be amazing. I, I'm really looking forward to this uh, trip. Um, it's, it wasn't what I expected, but I'm okay with that. Um, I didn't think I'd be going to Dallas. I'm not a big Dallas fan. No offense to Texans, but... What the? You just lost so many fucking cool points with me, bro. Now, this place is amazing. Anybody well, out there looking for? A place I'll let you. To curse, I'll let you convince Alex. me otherwise. I will. Let, I will be open minded and let you convince me otherwise. And if I have a fun time, I'll be like. Then yes. I'm showing up in a fucking meat tube. What? 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 <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm showing up in my mankini. No. The meat tube is real. Why is that? I don't want that. <laughs> We talked about the meat tube. It's the Taco Bell thing that yeah. nobody remembers but me and like everybody else. We're gonna have fun though. We're I, I don't want to drink too much, um, so I'm not a big drinker. But uh, Sweet can get hammered all she wants on the fourth. Well, maybe we'll have to uh, reserve ourselves for just fine quality liquor. Fine quality liquor. Um, I'm I'm so we don't I'm have a, to get, get fucked up, but we can we can sip on it for a while. I'm a sipper. I'm a sipper and liquor. Yeah. Mm, I mean, I sip my, I, wait, sorry, I sip my liquor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Fix that one, okay? What are we licking? We're gonna we're gonna tell you later. I know okay? what I'm licking. Right. Now, now we're super excited to have you come down, Steve. I and thank you, TJ. I'm glad. Thank you for the invite, hey. and I am too, man. It's gonna be fun. We're gonna have a blast, yeah. dude. You're gonna, you're, 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 you better be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been trying to organize this for a long time. You you better be ready for a big old man bear hug. Oh yeah, you said you fanboy on me as soon as you saw me. You said you said you fanboy on me. So. I'll fanboy on you. Ah, it's an atheist edge. It's TJ. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's so cute. Hey TJ, do you live in Dallas or are you flying no, into uh, GP? I live in Grand Prairie. But... Oh, okay. we go well, out yeah, you live in Dallas and TJ. Oh, yeah. We'll yeah. TJ, yeah. for when all go, these people, they think we live next to each other on a map. So when we go out, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. When, yeah. we, when we go out for drinks, TJ, do you want me to tell the bartender there, like, do you guys know who this is? It's like the TJ. The TJ yeah. Do you guys know? Who this, do you guys know who we're like, hanging out? Depending on where we go, like, they might actually say, "Yeah, fucking hell yeah, I know TJ." Yeah, you're so famous down there. Go, yeah. How about how about we go pay a visit to Matt? That'd be fun. Yes, that would be awesome. Ambush guys, Matt. Uh, Seriously. Hey, aren't you going to Austin? 
That would be amazing to see you guys. Uh, you no, I'm not going to Austin, although I wouldn't mind seeing Eric Murphy, but I don't think yeah. I'm going to traveling down there. He might come up to see us on the 4th. I think it would be amazing. Wow. I love you. Matt, Matt, Matt Austin, I might go with you down there too. I'd be, hey, hey, I'd be like, hey, Matt, let's talk. <laughs> and say it just like that with a wink and everything. <laughs> hey, hey, Aaron, let's have a beer and let's talk to me. I mean, I'm telling you, I can live in that I love Aaron. I, I don't know why he won't love... talk to me. I, 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 Aaron will talk to Theist all day long, but he's he, when it comes to this kind of stuff, he won't talk to me. Okay. Steve, me and you have that in common. I, I disagree with Aaron on a lot of shit. And but we're still friends, man. He fucking comes around. I don't around, get that. Why am I not friends with Aaron then? I I love Aaron. I don't know why he hates me so. Yeah. That's he what we're gonna have good. to do while you're in he Dallas. We're gonna have to get Aaron to come out with us. I would totally. I would look. I will tell you this. If Aaron wants to go have a beer, I will give you my word. I will not even mention anything about atheist or agnostic or nothing. Because I happen to like Aaron. I really do. And I'm sorry he's that he a, doesn't feel the same way. Guy. But he's a good guy. Yeah, I have, I have the utmost respect for Aaron. He doesn't think so, but well, that's been other people whispering in his ear. I know yeah. the truth. I'm not having a problem. I just disagree with him about it. Well, so do I. Have you met me? Look. Yeah. <laughs> I find that opinion opinionated to people uh, always find you can find something to disagree with them about at least once in their lifetime. Yeah. yeah. But but here's the thing though. Um, you know, I made a name for myself because I can actually show Matt and Aaron to be wrong using actual books and logic and reason. And I think that they, they don't like that. And I get it, but it's like, come on. It's like we're talking about actual like stuff that can be validated here. It's not like I'm a theist so hey, God exists. Let me show you why, Arn. It's like hey, God, Arn, you made mistakes in philosophy. Why don't you just accept that you're wrong and learn from them and become better? I don't get it. Because it interferes with his theme and his narrative. Oh, you're right. No, he's always he's told me that. He's like, look, if you're right, Steve, then everything I've ever worked for is is gone to naught. It's like it's basically useless. It doesn't something. mean he's wrong. It just means the reasons why he got are wrong. Yeah, and but I told him, I told him before. I was like, Arn, it doesn't work that way. If if you were to if you were to realize and take into account um, things I've told you and, and that Ozzy has told you and Malpass has told you, it wouldn't affect you as much as you think. But he doesn't believe that. He really thinks that because he has to, he would have to change everything he's been saying for years, people would lose like respect for him. And I'm credibility. Like, yeah, he yeah, thinks he's going to lose credibility. Right. It's all about credibility with him. And he needs to get outside the anti-theist viewpoint and really adopt an agnostic or atheist viewpoint. Because if he would get out of the anti-theist, I think he'd be better off. Well, and that's up to him. But here's the thing: I took I took a hit because I knew the truth and I understood the topic. And other people have told people him that you know I'm not an idiot on it. I took a hit. I lost a lot of people in my life because they were not willing to listen to me and be open-minded, and they rather come at me sideways now because of it. What are you going to do? But I'm not going to change the fact that. I'm not going to bow down to them. I'm not going to cow down and go, oh, yes, you're the wonderful Matt Dillahunty. You're right. No, it's that's what he wants, but he's not, and neither was Arn. And I'm sorry. I cannot, in good conscience, do that. And so I will never be big in that community. But you know what? My integrity is intact. So, but hey, I, 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 miss, I wish him the best. I do. I, I miss Arn. And I would definitely love to see a official debate that is Steve versus Matt I on the topic. Him. And I think that would be amazing. But here's the thing. There's no possible way he can win that debate. Because he has no he has, he has no evidence to back it up. He would just be using rhetoric. I would bring actual papers to the table. He doesn't like that. Right. And uh, but he I still think it would be an amazing debate. For ch I would do it for charity, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. But he would never he would never do it. He's been so soured to me. Um, and I know, I know why, but you guys have two different areas of expertise. That's apples and oranges. Yeah. Like you're saying, Oh, I want to see, I want to see a debate with two, a person debating on how it is to be a giraffe and one person on how it is to be a, a lion. Yeah. You no, know, I, like... I think you're right on that. Okay. Let's go back to astrophysics. We got John, John's board. John. Hello. All right. I'm going to ask you some astrophysics no. questions. Shotgun. No, it's, I... it's, it's round robin time. Shotgun. Let's finish this up tonight. Because I have my, right. my last bit of alcohol. Let's get to 100 likes at least. Come on, 100 likes. And anybody else who wants to join, become a member. We appreciate it. Um, I have a science question. All right. I did too. All right. We'll, uh, go for it. I, okay. And this is probably for the science, uh, the PhD, and the philosopher up here. Okay. I need, I would like a better explanation for why 
science doesn't really prove anything in the mathematical or philosophical slash logical sense. Oh, I love that question. I'm going to let John take it first, but then I'm going to say, say that one more time. Great question. Yeah. So um, I, I always hear people say it and I kind of say it too, because I kind of understand what it means, but I want a more, uh, I want a better understanding of what this actually means. This statement that science cannot really prove anything in the mathematical or philosophical slash log logical sense. Okay. All right. So the only thing you could do like definitively in the, in terms of philosophy and logic is show what's not true. You could design, it's, it's all about designing an experiment uh, to test a hypothesis you have about the way something works. And you do the experiment and you repeat it and, and you say, huh, I was wrong. Let me let me redo it and rethink the problem. Then you get it right, and other people confirm it, and it starts gaining traction. It, it, by the time it gets predictive powers, then it's a scientific theory, which is like the mo the highest echelons of of scientific thought. And science allows <laughs> the possibility that it was not the whole picture, not necessarily that the whole idea was wrong, but that it's not like the end all be all. That's the beauty of science. That's the, that's the, it's greatest strength is yeah. not being tied down permanently, infinitely, like tooth or nail, whatever metaphor you want to use, like to just this one hold so steadfast that you cannot take in any more newer information that you didn't have prior and be true to the cause of these objective and rigorous scientific protocols designed to ferret out the truth and remove human bias from the process. You uh -huh. can say what is uh, like with 100% definitive end all be all statement, the way things are not. Right. And that's that's the, the that's the way it works. And I just can, wanna, can I'm, I, gonna, I'm gonna say, hang on, I get my right, answer. Right. I'm gonna say on that. Not wrong, not wrong. Uh, yeah, he's right on the money. Um, here's the thing with science. Science only gives us explanations for things, right? We observe something and we come up with a natural explanation for a natural phenomenon. And we don't want to prove anything in science. Science never proves anything. Contrary to what people think, science is a, in science never proves anything. And the reason being is because once something is proved, it can never be unproved. It is proved in perpetuity forever and ever and ever and ever. And we want science to change. We want it to grow. We want to be able to have theories that are falsified, exactly like Dr. Krum was saying. We want to have theories that have falsification criteria because if they were proven, they could never be changed. They could never be modified. They could be wrong. Once proven, always proven. You can never unprove something. That's why but, science But at the anything. same time, there's, there's a certain proof. level. Math Sorry. can do with proof. Math can prove things, but math is not science. Yeah, math is math a tool of science. Yeah. 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 Math can prove things, sure. But math yeah. is not science. Yes. Yeah. So can right. this is, this is you, you do you do a mathematical proof. proof? If I do if I do science a mathematical proof, things. you're right. He's right. Science doesn't prove things. Yeah. Math but, does. So, but if I do a mathematical proof, that proof is is proven. You can never disprove yeah, yeah, yeah. a proof yeah. ever. Now, as a <laughs> excuse me, as a follow up, I would like to say, uh, is that kind of what the no hypothesis is all about? So, like, if you wanted to test gravity. Um, between two objects, right? The gravitational attraction between two objects. Uh, and you put them together and you had a way of testing this, like the Cavendish or one of many ways. Would you not test the null hypothesis to ensure that it wasn't something else causing the gra while, while you, you postulate you hypo your hypothesis is that it's the gravitational attraction between the two masses, but you can't really prove that it's the gravitational attraction until you eliminate all null hypothesis, whether it could be uh, electromagnetic uh, attraction, hydrostatic attraction, okay. electrostatic attraction, you know. Okay, know. so gravity is the word we use to describe what's already a factual, truthful reality of the way the universe works. It's just called gravity. Yeah. And so that's something that kind of starts bordering on the lines of semantics. I love this branch of philosophy of talking about how you have to invent a set of words that we just all agree mean a certain thing. Otherwise, no one could communicate. 
And then you could investigate the properties of that phenomena and establish a mathematical framework explicit with physical principles that guide and explain the governing dynamics of the observational phenomena. Then you could do you can make an experiment that has predictions to test that theory. And it has been said that there's there could be no greater test of an idea than its predictive powers. If it's if it's just completely wrong, it's going to fall flat on its face. Right. If, um, if you try to make a prediction, but if it's legitimately describing the way nature really is, you're you're given the the gift of uh, of foresight. You know, you could predict what's going to happen in in certain contexts and certain systems. But even with all of this uh, epistemology aside, on the the fact that you never prove anything in science. You know, 100% of the time, when you turn that key, your car is going to turn on if it's been serviced well. These laws of thermodynamics, they're very well understood, very well flushed out. Same with gravity. You would never walk off the edge of a building thinking, maybe I'm going to find the one time in 100 trillion, 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 trillion that gravity, there's some fluke of the universe and I don't fall. You, you would never make that. I, I certainly hope you wouldn't. And I, I didn't address your null hypothesis thing. But, yeah, you um, did it. But, but okay, so I agree with all that, by the way, uh, wholeheartedly. Um, but the null hypothesis is basically what's more likely the case, that you're explaining something this way or the null hypothesis. And you want to you be able to say that your explanation is more likely with a certain amount of confidence measure, right, based on your confidence level. So when you do the experiment and you get your p-value, whatever you, you, you set for your p-value, what is supposed to be less than 0.05 mostly, um, mm -hmm. then you have enough confidence to say, I can reject the null hypothesis as an explanation. And it's more likely that my experiment, that the explanation is the more likely the case to be. So you're dealing with probabilities. You're dealing with the most likely is the case of an explanation that you're trying to move any kind of statistical error. You're trying to move any kind of a, a alternative explanation for an, for an observation. Uh, that's what, you, that's what you're trying to do in an experiment. And you want to avoid, you want to avoid either one, you don't want to reject the hypothesis, reject the null hypothesis incorrectly, and you don't want to not reject it when you should have. Those are type one and type two rejection errors. I try to remember something. It's been a long time since I've done this shit. Yeah, yeah, me too. You, you, people don't realize you forget about this stuff if you don't do it often, you know. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know? But yeah, this I is. Try keep, I try to keep my questions intriguing. But uh, when when people say like atheism is the null hypothesis, that's why I get triggered. I'm like, oh Jesus Christ, no, that's not how any of this works. Oh, but but you did mention something about like um, how oh, could we be sure that there's it's not like electromagnetism or something. You could go and design experiments, and you know that electrostatics and electromagnetic forces have repulsive and attractive, mm -hmm. and uh, all matter is, as far as we could tell, it is. Um, exclusively attracted yeah. and uh, mm -hmm. works on a, a fundamentally different principle. All the matter of the earth is electrically neutral. And so there's uh, actually zero electrical charge between uh, neutrally charged objects. So these are the sort of things you could do in your lab and you can investigate the other side, something that is a competitor model for explaining a phenomenon. And you can, and all of this has been done. So why, why is it gravity? Okay. Uh, based upon modeling. Now I, I tend to scientific instrumentalism, although there is a case, good case for scientific realism. Uh, I, I agree with that. But let's assume that's scientific realism for a second and assume space time is actually an existing substance. It, is, it has, has ontology. It has curves. Mass causes it to curve. Matter of fact, the only thing that can actually cause gravity is mass. So, why, based upon that, though, can you conceive of any possible way that you can have a gravitational situation? that it's repulsive because even in the no high boundary proposal by Stephen Hawking, um, there is a repulsive force to be added in to Einstein's uh, field tensor equations. So do you think that is possible based upon just what we know about physics, that you could have actual pure anti-gravity, literally the anti-bending of space time by some measure, <clears throat> by some means? Yeah. Space itself is a very curious thing because it's actually space that's, um, um, causing it's essentially causing an anti gravity like repulsive force that we just call dark energy, uh, causing the accelerated expansion of the universe. But it's not mass and it's not energy, it's the, the quantum mechanical properties of 
space time and more space is created uh, as space stretches and expands and now that there's more of this stuff we call space time there's more repulsive force and so that's why it's an accelerating process but um we don't really know what dark energy is the, the dark just me a, a lot of people you know take take this in many different ways but it really it just means we don't know it's a statement that we don't know it's, it acts like a form of energy force accelerating the universe same for dark matter it's a type of matter we believe because it has intrinsic gravitational properties you could see you could actually map three-dimensional structures of the dark matter halos and, and galactic clusters uh, they're pretty high accuracy. We we know it's a substance. So a lot of scientists these days are dispelling with the model of interacting parallel universes mm -hmm. and gravitational forces leaking into our universe being the cause of this apparent dark matter. And so those have been, last I checked, um, largely losing traction right now, at least in my opinion. Um, when you, what when you say parallel universes, do you mean like the mini worlds type parallel no. universes, or do you mean more uh, the, uh, the like the multiverse? multiverse. The multiverse. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Dark, yeah. Just, just make sure. There's something called dark flow. Yeah. And dark flow would be one of these other universes, actual universes, that are somehow influencing causally, and I don't know how, our own universe. Because in, in, in normally universes are spatial temporally locked; they're isolated from each other. Any causality from one has no causal relationship to another. Period. But dark flow seems to somehow violate that. John, how does how does how does, how does a, a different universe? How do we have any effect on us? Or is there no direct causal relationship? We're just seeing, like for example, maybe I've maybe I describe it like this. Let's say we have a balloon, and I just press on the balloon. Um, there's, is, are we just seeing a deformation of the universe to another universe, or? How is that related? Because there should be they should be spatial temporary locked from each other and isolated well, from each other. So so M theory, um, even though we haven't tested it yet, and it's and, and by the way, this is one of those really unfortunate situations where here theory is not it, it, it means math. It means it's just a fully analytical, mathematical closed framework that's self consistent. Mm -hmm. uh, typically theory means a scientific theory that's well proven and well not but well established. And all that gets the uh, gold star blue ribbon. Right. Um, here, M theory um, could explain if the dark flow indeed is some interaction between our universe and a different one in a sort of multiverse sort of scenario. Then, um, if you if you look at particles as strings, um, and you have the four fundamental forces. Uh, like strong force, strong nuclear, rather weak nuclear, gravity, and E and M, and they are vibrating strings. They are they could either be open strings or closed strings. And that's very important. If they're open strings, their ends are attached to the the P brain of that universe. They're pretty much the four plus dimensional um, fabric of that universe. They're sort of anchored down because they're they're open ended. Would that be but like gravity, a guitar string? Would that be like a yes. guitar string attached at each side and it just goes yeah. from one side of the universe to right. the other is a right. string? Exactly. Okay. Well, yeah. you're right. Okay. And okay. so, but with the graviton in this uh, sort of super string theory known as M theory, it's actually an agglomeration of uh, different versions of string theory that's now called M theory. Um, the graviton is different and it solves the hierarchy problem where we have about a factor of, what was it, 10 to the 38? in um, um, normalized units, like non-dimensional, like normalized scaled uh, relative strengths, like gram for gram between the strong nuclear, weak nuclear, E and M, and gravitational. And the strong nuclear force is equal to one. It's the strongest. E and M is um, like 1 over 137, or is that the rest? Anyway, gravity is like 10 to the minus 38. It's like way, 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 way too weak to, it's, it's like a red flag. Like what's causing that? That's yeah. something we should want to understand. It's not random. It's mm -hmm. not meaningless. It's certainly not numerology. There's a physical thing causing that discrepancy. So it turns out under the M theory um, uh, perspective, the graviton, if it exists, um, the, it is a closed loop. So there's no open ends to attach down to the, the P brain of our universe. So it literally leaks 
out of our universe into higher and, and essentially into the bulk and it could go between universes and and it leaks very readily and almost all of it is lost and so we're only feeling the teeny tiny little residual effect of the gravitons that do stick around long okay. enough to mediate so, the force so grab okay so if there is a force carrier um, a graviton which would be the boson force carrier for gravity mm -hmm. um so if that does exist, you're saying because I, I like I'm liking where this is going. I never thought about this before. As, as I, I'm, I'm thinking back to Leonard Susskind's the cosmic landscape for some reason here. But, yeah. um, but okay, so you're saying that because the graviton is a closed loop, it can actually theoretically be mi migrate somehow or influence from one causally locked t universe d through dark flow to another. Yeah, through gravity. that would be gravity. weird as hell. Ex 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 because I'm extending its influence how, hyper dimensional. But, but if they're type, if they're temporally locked, how how would it even temporarily interact? Well, well I, can I me, can I can I ask that because uh, I want to ask this question, and it has to do with that question, Steve. Mm -hmm. Um, now I know that it's not going to be exact, but is it somewhat analogous to like a uh, quantum tunneling? where uh, you have a, like an electron or, or something that tunnels its way through a physical barrier well, where the, the you would that, norm but that, but that, sorry, has, that, that requires time, though. Whenever you're, whenever you're in the breakdown region, like a Zener diode, which would be known as a, as a, a Skosky diode, you're working in a position where you want that quantum tunneling effect. You want it to be overcome the potential barrier mm -hmm. between the, the junction, the PNN junction, so the electron can actually travel through it, which normally could never, never do because of electrostatics right you cannot go through the barrier because it's repulsed by it but because of tunneling quantumly it can actually pass by that barrier like it wasn't even there but it requires time well, I to think, do that. i think it's still but i think yeah well that's why i agree i agree with that that's why i was saying it's not an exact analogy i'm, I'm trying to but say i can like, see what you're going with it, sure. to visualize it. All right, John, but i do want to i do want to say that um in, in that uh description you just gave there i do believe uh touch screens is kind of similar to what you're saying right because they rely on quantum tunneling. Well, yes. there's always still going to be a certain amount of electrons or, or, you know, elementary particles or whatever that are going to make its way through that barrier. Just pressing on the barrier increases the the uh, number that make it through. I think. Right, what do you think about that, John? Do you think there's a pressure exerted on like between the brains that something can actually um, travel through them like that? P brains. Um... I don't remember much about P brain, uh, B brain, D brain. I don't think so. There's also a really interesting question in the chat too. Mm. Um, it said, uh, "Ask would these different membranes have different cosmological constants?" Yeah, they could. Yeah. What about gravitational con uh, constants? Any of the constants? Yeah. Because look at, mm -hmm. um, and John could again correct me on this. I, I like, I like saying this stuff, then I have, I have an expert to tell me what's it's right or wrong. But with the natural units, the natural things like the the speed of light, um, the the charge of an electron, the uh, um, Boltzmann constant, any of these fundamental units, they're fundamental for a reason. And if you know certain constants, you can derive a lot of other constants from it. And they're the same whether they're on here or another planet. So you could use dimensional analysis using matrix theory. I've actually done this. And you know, like the speed of light, you know, G, um, using qualitative analysis, you can actually find other natural units. They are discoverable through mathematics, pure mathematics using matrix theory. It's fascinating. Hmm. But the, the fact remains is that like the natural logarithm, that's going to be the natural logarithm for any point of the universe, right? I don't have to prove mm -hmm. that one plus one equals two in Andromeda. It, it right. just is. Uh, so a natural unit should be fundamental throughout the universe. There should be no variations in these things because they're derivable as natural units through qualitative analysis. Yeah, absolutely. It's all, It almost defines the universe in yes. this multiverse picture where there's like a, a fabric of the multi-universe cosmos and they all, when they were big banged into existence, they had different initial conditions that precipitated out different uh, constants. So they would be very bizarre. And you'd be careful if you were like Dr. Who or someone, you could travel between universes because you might go there and all your atoms just instantaneously disintegrate because you now have to obey the, the local laws. You know, yeah. it doesn't remember the, what they need to be from your original universe.
I, I would say it's very similar to different planets throughout the universe. Um, you might Ooh, be okay on this planet, but if we go to another planet, we're not going to live there. Uh, <laughs> it's going to have different properties and everything like that. So um, universes would probably be the same way where we might go to a universe where the, the constants of the universe might not be suitable for our you know, physical design of our body and our uh, – like intermolecular intermolecular chemistries and yeah there could be a, there could be an infinite number of units now the, the cosmic landscape puts the high number of 10 to the 10 to the exponent 500 i believe it is that's a yeah. high that's pretty high by the way but um now i'm gonna ask i'm gonna ask dr crooner i don't want to go too technical but so very simple questions but i have one that i i i told somebody the other day and i want to know if you think it's correct i think a level yeah. one multiverse has been confirmed and let me give my reasons for it I think a level one multiverse has been confirmed because if you take a level one multiverse to being just a Hubble's volume, it is almost self-evident that because of the boundary conditions of the, this, the Hubble's volume, that we cannot travel past that. That would be, in and of itself, a level one multiverse universe. To me, that's confirmed. Yeah. Well, yeah, we, we discovered that because of the, the flatness of the universe. Exactly. Of the universe. So it's just like, take a 4D universe and reduce it down to uh, 2d for now I and mean, think about the surface of a globe like the earth is you flat earthers and um within your visible horizon like three miles in every direction it looks flat unless you know what you're looking at then you could you know it's it's not indeed flat it's pretty obvious we have a horizon um but the earth itself is a sphere so when you look on really really tiny spatial scales of a curved object it, it looks flat it's just basic geometry so our universe looks flat in four dimensions or you could say throughout different time slices and 3d space so what they think that means is the actual universe beyond our cosmic horizon is unfathomably larger like probably like 10 to the 20 light years or 10 to the 40 light years or something crazy like that and we're just like this teeny tiny little fraction of a, a, a portion of it and so the huge curvature from our cosmic horizon looks flat hey, okay okay well follow-up question on that because <clears throat> again agree with all that um <clears throat> have you not seen the last week or two they're revisiting the flatness of the universe which is weird because they were sig they were at six sigma confidence level of the flatness yeah. in the universe and now they're taking, they're revising that a little bit. They're taking a new is it because of the the Hubble constant yes. fiasco, or is yes, it, I think yeah. it's, I well, think that's... it is. So I, I don't, I think it's an anomaly. Do you guys, do you remember way back when, um, when they they discovered neutrinos that were sixty uh, nanoseconds faster than C, and, and it was a yeah. buzz. Everybody like from the from the from the one from CERN or from yeah. the supernova SN nineteen eighty seven A. It wasn't from nineteen seventy eight. There... No, it was from CERN. Oh, nineteen eighty seven there's there's two neutrino fiascos, not just the one okay. at CERN. There's two incidents where we thought we had discovered superluminal neutrinos, and they were both debunked upon further scrutiny. Okay, yeah. so so the, the I'm talking about not 19 okay 1987 1987A supernova is fascinating. We'll get to that, but CERN no. What happened was the the, the 60 nanoseconds for CERN was they found it was a loose connection. Loose connection. Right, yeah. but but they were all up in arms about it, going, oh my god, we found neutrinos faster than light now. That one's already been resolved, right? Even though I thought at the time, look, I, th it's not going faster than the speed of light. I think it actually is just an anomaly that we can figure out, right? That's the thing with anomalies. You figure them out. You don't jump to conclusions. That's how you, that's how I, you don't go to science and go, hey, look, we have a 60 nanosecond anomaly here. It's going faster than the speed of light. Einstein's wrong. Relativity's wrong. Let's start from scratch. That's not how science works. Yeah. Now, the 1987, though, the 1987 supernova, correct me if I'm wrong, but that actually is a brilliant way to determine at least a lower bound for the age of the earth around 600 some a thousand years or whatever it was ago that because light can because they detected a flat a reflection of the light from that supernova and they know by using triangulation that it has to be a certain amount of distance away because of math not physics but math and so yeah. therefore it, the universe cannot be less than whatever it was right like 670,000 light years or something whatever it is it was 168,000 light years. 168, it was a supernova in the large Magellanic cloud. Okay, so 168,000 light years away. So by, by mathematics, they have determined that the lowest bound possible for the age of the universe cannot be less than 186, 186, 168,000 years. 
Correct? Yeah, absolutely. So, by the way, creationism falsified by math. Not scientism, not physics, by math. Nah, just, yeah, but, yeah, but doc, Dr. Lyle disagrees with you, Steve. He thinks light <laughs> is, it travels instantaneously in no, one direction. Do, Dr. Lyle, we're going to talk about this one of these days. Dr. Lyle <laughs> has. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What did you just say? Dr. Oh, Lyle, I, I'm not making it up. Yeah, I'm not making it's it called up. asynchronous light transmission, he calls it. Yeah. Oh, he, but wait, look, when you start adding in anything you want, then, like, if I, hey, hey, if I, said, if I said, John, hey, I'm going to write a paper. And I'm going to show this to be the case, but in order to write this paper, I am going to take the natural logarithm, and I'm going to make it 2.86. E. I'm going to take. Mm. I'm going to take. I'm going to take pi, and I'm going to make it 3.65 instead. There's yeah. a problem with this, right? Yeah. There's a problem, but this is what well, I see creationists do. I actually want Humphreys did it in a paper. Humphreys, Doctor Humphreys, literally took the natural logarithm and made it a 10 base t logarithm in order to make it closer to his numbers. He took huh. a formula, a well substantiated physics formula, and changed it. That's blatant. That is blatant. The fact that he's a PhD and he did that, he got called out for it, but he didn't care. Yeah. They're, they're, they're all dishonest, dude. Creationists are just dishonest. But by the way, do you know I was mentioned in the uh, the journal Creationism, issue forty three, third third quarterly, the quarterly. Huh. Yeah, Doctor Humphreys and the other they mentioned me in their paper. So I was thrilled for that. I actually, I'm actually in a paper, but it's <laughs> it's a creationist paper, whatever. Oh, I know, right? I finally, I finally get somewhere. <laughs> it's a fucking creationist paper, but it's true. Oh, I was mentioned in the uh, journal creation. Yes. What? You should do your own paper. I don't know how to write a paper, and I don't, people have, people have said that they said I should write a paper on philosophy, yeah. on the on the well, atheist agnostic thing, but I. Yeah. I don't know how novel it would be. I would paper. You write a paper to add to the, the thing, the the evidence, and I don't, I don't know what I. I, I would co-write a paper with somebody, yes, but I couldn't write a paper myself. Steve, mean you should write a paper. On what? You're a science. You're a physicist, dude. What the fuck do I know about astrophysics? Yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, but you could you could do some of the writing. Let me take a nap. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was gonna say I'm not an astrophysicist. I just know I just yeah, like yeah, the once top we thing. have a beer, dude, you'll be totally. Like just flowing, you'll have some mad flows, man. Dude, dude, do you? I remember stuff like the no hair theorem from like literally high school. I was reading books on black holes in high school. Oh, that's why some people think the black hole might just be a a, a project a forty projection of a subatomic particle. There might just be like uh, all the matter is compressed into a string mm. because all because it's rotating. All the matter. It's not. It's not a point. The singularity isn't a point because it's rotating and there's a wobbly. Well, if it's and a, so what when you a, take a point and you spin it around, you get a string, uh, a toroidal. A toroidal. Loop. But that. But what about a Schwarzschild? A Schwarzschild don't rotate. But those don't exist. You're in talking nature. about von Neumann. Mathematical. Appro talking about real ones and the. Okay, universe. so you're talking about. Rotate. Okay, so in a von Neumann. Okay, let me correct. I'm not, I'm not, let, me, let me correct myself here, so I'll make sure I get this right. In a Schwarzschild non-rotating black hole. You would only have a point, but if you have a von Neumann or you have a rotating black hole, the singularity will form a toroidal type singularity. Yeah, it would yes. be a string. It would, it would be, be a, string. a one dimensional string. Now, let me ask you something. For somebody who's never taken astrophysics in their life, I took astronomy in college, but I got to admit, how many people know that kind of fucking shit? Not many, I don't think. Well, know what? Oh, uh, well, yeah, give you mad props. Because I, I actually, believe it or not, this used to be, I wanted to be an astrophysicist growing up, dude. It was my favorite fucking subject. I couldn't get enough of it. I read more about astrophysics than any kid at my age probably should have, and I forgot all of it. Well, except for the basic oh, stuff. But I know. Doctor yeah. Kern, can, can I ask you what, what was your what was your uh, specialty in? In grad school. Well, I mean, what do women. you specialize in? What did you women and period? Oh, PhD I, on? Like, just like right now. Okay, so I specialized in analytical solutions for high energy astrophysics. So like gamma ray flares and X-ray transients from black holes, yeah. you can write down a differential equation that describes how energy is exchanged through space and time. And if you could find an analytical solution, get this, get this. We would sometimes use mathematical handbooks to find the exact analytical solutions to small portions of the problem. But we, we came across one where this integral had no known analytical closed form solution. So guess what we did? Guess what I did? I proved it and then published my result, and it's going to eventually be added to the books. Oh, yeah. So well, there's these big tables. 
All right, so let me ask you this. Are you familiar with the analytical solution? Are you familiar with familiar with the analytical solution for three body problems? Uh, I just saw, whoa, that was the very recent thing was there was no analytical solution right. until just recently. Right. I saw the, the headline recently. Yeah. Now, again, I didn't, I didn't there's another question in the chat. Science, bitches. We, we love this stuff. Says, What's next? What about the current hypothesis about some black holes not being gravitational wells, but a source of quote, dark energy and dark matter? I think that's been quote. obliterated. I, I think yeah. it's it's probably a clickbait article, yeah. I, uh, unless I knew more about anything observationally <laughs> substantiating. By the way, Scott Spangler, you want to come in, my friend, dude? You Scott. know what? You've convinced me. I'm going to start drinking right now. I haven't I, been I'm drinking. I'm bloody alcohol and it, science, dude. It's time. This is what I want my channel to be. I'm tired of the fucking bullshit drama crap that I keep helping people and I get fucking screwed for it. I'd rather talk science than just be done with that stuff. All right, well, Steve, do you know why the neutrinos from the supernova got here before the light? I'm sure yes. you do. Yeah, well, Can okay. I try the answer? To, I'll, I'll try to answer after yeah, Steve. But, okay. Um, if I'm not mistaken, because of a shock wave, the light um, reflected more than the neutrinos, which passed through with un, un, uninhibited. Reflected, reflected. Off the, off the, you want to use more, um, use more Okay, so, so let me, okay, let me try to work this out of my head. Because um, going back to like the Hemholtz mechanism or something, you have you have a balance between gravitational force and gamma pressure in the star. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when the fusion starts having less energy, there's less gamma rays being produced, and so you have a collapsing. The gr gravity is going to be you know, the higher force over the gravitational or the the gamma ray pressure. As soon as it collapses and produces those neutrinos, they fly out uninhibited. But there was some reason why the photons, if I remember, didn't. Oh, what was the re because photons can be, can be captured and released. Like for example, in the in the before the recombination period of the black uh, the Big Bang, the universe was opaque, and so photons couldn't escape. It wasn't until re there was recombination, electrons combined with pr protons formed hydrogen, and light exploded out, and that was the, the Big Bang. Something similar wasn't it something similar in 1987 that you had the neutrinos being produced. Uh, prior to the photons, or at least yeah. Okay, let's let the this other dude science or satire. Oh, it's team skeptic. It, it, I don't team know why it skeptic. says. Yeah, I don't know why it says science or satire. So I'm going to say that it's the same reason that we see uh, neutrinos on Earth that are about a hundred thousand years um, older. Or yeah, they'll be they arrive here about a hundred thousand years than their yeah, was photon counterpart. I thought, it was micro, I thought it was like less than seconds. They it, was, it was it was three hours. Okay, three hours. Okay, three well, hours. So. Okay, no. What I'm saying is, uh, right now we're receiving neutrinos that we won't get the photon from that star or from our star until the photon makes it all the way out to the surface and then is emitted from the surface. Yeah, that's why yeah, I thought that. 3D random walk, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Yes, so, so that's what I think that, that's why I think that we received the neutrinos first is because even though it was only seconds apart they come from that, the surface not the interior where the photons are going to be produced. yeah yeah so we're, we're, we're seeing them coming from the surface and while the neutrinos themselves did not have anything prohibiting them from leaving so they did appear you know a, a certain amount of time ahead of us but that's just the amount of time that the photons had to get from the center of the star to the outer of the star during the new uh supernova yeah so that's essentially correct but let me put a spin on it let me put a spin okay. on it so the neutrinos are always traveling slower than light and at mm -hmm. a single speed the whole flight. The photons are always traveling at a single speed the whole flight, but that's equal to exactly the speed of light. The neutrinos had uh, about a three hour or so head start. And then once the blast wave uh, blew the star apart and released all this light energy across the electromagnetic spectrum, and flew out in every direction trying to catch up with the neutrinos it, here's the cool thing it would have caught up with the neutrinos if the star that blew up were f much further away yes think about a race going like 25 miles an hour on foot versus 24.999 yeah, but the slower one gets a head start it's just a linear Two linear equations, really trivial yeah. stuff. The further, the further and away, so the longer the lag they're going to have, right? Yeah, and so yeah. if it were further away by a certain amount, then you would get to a point where they arrive at the exact same instant, and then further yeah. than that, the photons <clears throat> beat 
the neutrinos, which I find to be really interesting. Oh, I yeah, so okay. I was going to say that, but I wasn't, I didn't want to say something dumb, like the neutrino was actually moving slower than light, but I, the neutrino is just, uh, it, it's an actual physical particle. So yes. it is going to be moving slightly so, slower than the speed of light. But yeah, mm -hmm. I, I just, that, that, that is amazing. It, it's, it's amazing that we, uh, that we understand the the fusion uh, process and the process of stars the way we do to that point mm -hmm. and and something that i i really loved that i read uh, not too long ago was that because we know the, of the um the power outage of the sun from a thousand years ago be or a hundred thousand years ago because of the photons that we received from them and we know that the the neutrinos are associated with a certain amount of energy output from the sun we can now say with confidence that the amount of sun, the amount of power that the sun put out a hundred thousand years ago, is the same as the amount of power that the sun's putting out today, or roughly the same. It's relatively the same. It yeah. hasn't changed mu yeah, enough to constant. stay. Yeah. yeah, it's it's fucking different. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so one last question to John. Um, uh, uh, what was going to ask him? Um, oh yeah. Um, why are the stars disappearing? There, lately, there's been. Um, research where they see stars um and they notice that some of the stars are gone they're just vanished oh, just blink yeah. out oh blink yeah, out. yeah oh, that's, that's a, cool. a cool one can i talk about this for well, a yes that's what i brought oh, you please. in for is it just for your, <laughs> yeah. you think i brought you in for your looks jesus christ uh, man Come and on. my screen is blank anyway okay no, <laughs> talk to I, I, I am sure a question in the chat now too. you guys know why i love john a lot I love, or, I love you, dude. I love Steve. I love you, too. What's the chat question? Vegan atheist oh, sure. Yeah, it says, um, I have a question. Is there a known mechanism for the alignment of galaxies seen with their orbital planes orthogonal to the dark matter slash energy filaments between galaxies? So they're aligned. You mean when you look at a galaxy and it's edge on? I, this sounds almost like an electric universe question, but answer the, the stars first, then we'll get to that. That's yeah, a... I'll do the stars. Okay. All right, so um, <clears throat> so some stars that are massive enough to have a core collapse supernova event, sometimes, and this is actually a, a great problem for like supercomputer simulations to tackle, the core collapse happens in a slightly different way, producing significantly different results from a traditional supernova that's really bright, where instead of having a bright supernova with a leftover core turned into either a neutron star or a black hole, the black hole is formed too quickly and actually eats the entire star that's actually exploding, but hasn't reached, like the blast wave hasn't reached the surface yet and released all the light energy. It just goes, it just like collapses almost instantly into a black hole. And they're really rare. I think we found like a hundred in the whole universe like across time and space and uh it's really fascinating that's incredible <laughs> yeah. what's the mechanism a... that drives that the th the theoretical mechanism that drives that so, that keeps them okay. from being a supernova or hypernova or just nova yeah so what you have to happen what you'd have to have happen is uh, certain conditions in the star where your core is really big and there's a lot of mass in the cores because remember only the core is doing the nuclear fusion and the core and uh, so before a star goes supernova it's in the red supergiant phase so it's all puffed out it's this giant thing and the core is much smaller than it and when it's, it goes unstable and it's about to die the core collapse super fast it's essentially undergoing spontaneous nuclear fusion of heavier elements iron 56 is the end point for uh, exothermic thermonuclear reactions right. that's to say iron 56 and beyond are endothermic they actually absorb energy from the surrounding but um when it contract when the core contracts really quickly um Actually, part of the energy of the supernova comes just from the change in geometry. Just when you have a, a, a constant mass go from that bigger size down to this like tiny size, it releases gravitational potential through the virial theorem, where you get one half of the energy in the form of electromagnetic radiation. And that actually is added to the energy of the shock wave due to this like uh, spontaneous thermonuclear explosion. 
But if the core is massive enough and it becomes a black hole before the core has collapsed all the way, well, it would, but now it's inside a, a, an event horizon, it could actually rapidly accrete the whole star into um, the black hole before any of the blast wave energy is released. And so we have to discover more precisely um, what that would what that would look like in terms of uh, are there other conditions, other criteria for this to happen, like the the radiation versus convective zones and the outer layers having a certain a uniformity or lamin laminar flow sort of behavior, <gasps> and it's all laminar flow. It's all plasma remember. physics, so it's, it's going to be it's going to be complex. But essentially, you just got to form a singularity quicker than the star can be blown apart, and then you get this phenomenon. Uh, all right, let me ask. The, okay, you're going to. I'm not going to ask you. I'm going to ask the live chat here because it's easy for you. So I'm going to ask live chat for for bonus points. Um, the, the 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 there's a number that relates the laminar flow to the chaotic flow. Okay, there's a there's a boundary condition there. So if you have a pipe or you have something and you have a linear laminar flow, it starts becoming chaotic at a certain point. There's a number attached to that. Tell me what that number is called. Dude, is a name. Do, do, do. <laughs> Wait, what, what's called? The number that's related to looking at it when laminar flow now starts becoming chaotic flow um, involved with the Stokes equation. Oh, it's like the Marcolini number. No, no, no. It's, like no, it's simpler than that. I thought a, a, nur a, nurse, a nurse would know this number. Yes. Hi. No, Justin Hoffman thought... got it. Justin got it. Oh, Randall's uh, number. Randall's yeah. number. Dr. Kern, could I ask you a question regarding your explanation? Way to go, Justin. Uh, okay. The, so the way I understood what you said is that basically the supernova occurs, but it occurs inside of the uh, inside of the event horizon, so that we would never see it because it's it's disconnected well, from us. Well, I mean, essentially, essentially right. at that point, it's all a wash. There's not really a supernova, and it's just a That's black what hole. Was the, be. The, the, you could think of it like that, but um, or you could. I mean, would there be like any this. kind of explosion that goes on within the event horizon? Say, theoretically, you could be inside of the event horizon to watch it. Would there be anything no. that chaotically happened, or would it just collapse? No, because. Um, General relativity still works pretty well inside of an event horizon as long as you're not at the singularity. And what we know about inside a black hole is that every direction you look and all 360 degrees left, right, up, down um, is towards the singularity. Like yeah, there's not even a way out. And furthermore, uh, the time dimension acts like a space dimension. Mm -hmm. And it points towards the singularity. So it's pretty much like the quintessence of inevitability that you're going to the singularity. Like you cannot get any more inevitable than that. Space itself and time itself tells you your future world line <laughs> is yeah. that singularity, which I find to be pretty powerful. Well, you I, know, and, I love and that shit, I, dude. Future yeah, world lines but, and closed timeline theories and, and Mikowski diagrams yeah. and Penrose oh, diagrams. Yeah. The, oh that's my all god you're gonna be hard dude uh, you're gonna be so hard you don't even know <laughs> honestly honestly that's what i was gonna say is that uh a lot We're of people really now. get a misconception about the the uh what the event horizon is and they say oh it's where you know you have to travel faster than the speed of light to get out but that's not true it's a convention that the speed of light is the escape velocity at the event horizon but it doesn't matter. Even if you could travel faster than the speed of light, once you've crossed the event horizon, all forward lines in time point Converge. towards yes. singularity. Yeah, you yeah. Just that's, get yeah. To, you and that, that's to, a good point. You wouldn't be able to, that's yeah, you wouldn't be able to find the direction of out. Yeah. Every direction exactly. you move is towards the center. Uh, and by the way, yeah. I want to talk about that for a second. Oscar Bagash, thank you for joining. You're now a member. Yay. Oh, I love community. that guy, man. He's amazing, uh, Although he's dude. been around for, oh, Oscar's been around forever in a day. Uh, but here's the thing. I love what you put that because you're right. A lot of people have the misconception to think that if you could travel faster than speed, you could overcome the event horizon. But no, because like you said, all timelines go to the center of the black hole. Yeah. All of them, no matter what path you take, no matter how fast yeah. you go, you have to follow a, a space time line, right? So yeah. where, where are you going to end up no matter what direction you go? There's no direction you can go to avoid that. That's, that's critical. And a lot of people don't understand that. I'm so, how, how the fuck did you know that, by the way, team? You're smart. 
<laughs> uh, because I've studied a lot of general relativity. Awesome. Trying, you're, you're, trying to understand it as much as possible. This is why we do these types on. of hangouts, though. I love this kind of shit because you're right. Um, a lot of people don't think of that. They just they See, don't. Somebody asked, here, here's what happened. Somebody asked me the question. I already knew about the general relativity and timelines and, and yeah. all world lines going towards it. I already knew the answer to that. But they asked me, what if you could be at the just outside of the event horizon and stick a pencil into it? And I was like, you know, the question you're asking really doesn't you know, make sense. Yeah. You wouldn't be sticking a pencil into it. it you, you have to understand that as you get closer, you're, you're, you're starting to go into general relativity and relativistic effects. Even mm -hmm. as you get closer and closer and closer and closer to the event horizon, from your perspective, no matter how close you are, that pencil would never actually get there. So it would just, it would never seem as though your pencil was going in, even though it had crossed already, uh, you would probably end up reaching into the event, event horizon trying to push the pencil closer that would and closer. Bad. <laughs> you don't want to do that <laughs> you want to come well, back yeah, and, and not to mention the tidal forces would spaghettify you in like a nanosecond yeah. We well, to, well, that, well yeah, we had to put all that aside you, you could have stick well, with a pencil i mean if you have if you have but a here, here, massive black hole you could avoid gravitational effects if you you know at the event horizon right but check this out check this out steve suppose we're on a at, right on the doorstep of a super super massive black hole and you stick your your, your arm all the way up to the elbow in there mm -hmm. what's crazy is because like your your movement of your arm is based on essentially electrical transport through your your nerves communicating from your brain to your nervous system to your muscles but since this is mediated by the electromagnetic force essentially light the 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 boson is the force carrier for anything electrochemical or chemical or electrical you wouldn't actually be able to communicate with your arm anymore Isn't that you wouldn't weird? be able to even feel it right you wouldn't feel that you have an arm that's not yeah you just blew my mind and then you would you would just watch it you would <laughs> But what did it just basically look? I mean, eventually it would just go into the infrared after the thousands of millions of years. You never actually see it go into the red horizon. It would what, just stay your, there. Your arm? Yeah, you wouldn't see well, it go in. You're, anyway. you're, you're pretty much kissing the thing. I mean, you, you would you would be relatively in the same space time geometry as as. It's not uh, something I want to do an experiment with. Right. Yeah. I was gonna say. Uh, now, this is one of those hold my beer sort of things for physicists. All right. So, all right, so, all right. <laughs> now, how about this? Suppose, suppose you had a micro miniature black hole, like a primordial black hole, and it was like the size of a photon. A proton. Ooh. So it was like ten to the negative, fucking meters. I mean, it's small as shit. Okay. But, but, you, but the amount of energy in a micro black hole, the size of a proton, is enough to destroy a small city. Still. It's a lot of freaking energy in there. It will kill you if you had a... It's going to fuck you up. It'll fuck you up. And the reason being is because that because your surface area is so low, Hawking radiation will be so intense I'll fuck that you it'll, up. it'll evaporate almost... It'll evaporate in a in an ungodly amount of short period of time. And as it does, yeah. how much energy is being released? All that mass that's stuck in that small amount of, of space <clears throat> is now turning into energy in Hawking radiation and released. Yeah, I think when they asked me the question about the pencil at the black hole, I was I was like, you, you, listen to what we have, listen to all the things that we have to discount, guys. This is why the question makes no sense because but, but you, you, you think, the Hawking radiation would kill you. Yeah, just but think about that. With the micro initial black yeah. hole, you could you could actually go in the in the in the red horizon. I mean, you're you're having it in your pocket, right? It could pass right through you. Um, but that's weird to think about because it, it, what would happen if a primordial black hole passed through you? Um, and how would it not evaporate? I don't know, but that's another thing. So it's, it's Steve, it's 500 million tons is the mass Jesus. of a pro, uh, black hole size of a proton. And it would radiate about a billion watts. That's a lot of power. And uh, but, but it would live for a tiny fraction of a second. So the total energy might not be a, a whole lot. Uh, I would have to calculate it here. Here's a Hawking radiation calculator. This is what I this is what I do at night. But um, so you yeah, you know to, that you the Schwarzschild. <laughs> yeah, I do. You're right. The Schwarzschild radius um, of a black hole equals three kilometers for every solar mass. And I do get out. What do you know? <laughs> <laughs> I was I was rocking karaoke a, a nice. couple of weeks ago. Is is there any truth to if if you could go faster than the speed of light, your time would go backwards? I don't think so. 
Yeah, I don't think so either. I think that Penrose, he was talking about that, and Paul Davies, they did some, some work on that area. I don't, I mean, you would think that it would, but the problem is Intuitively, going, so intuitively, intuitively would, yes. again, the question makes no sense because you really can't travel from point to point faster than light could. It, well, what would it mean, though? Don't... I mean, the only way it would make sense of the question is that you're actually riding space time, and space time is going faster than the speed of light. That would make sense. So okay, so, okay. So yeah, let me let me pose it. Let me go faster than if you could go faster than the, me, go me, faster than the speed of light, and you're inside the event horizon. Either pray your, your your timeline goes backwards, or hope for a white hole at the center. Well, you're automatically right. you're going you're automatically going to the center of the black hole. Doesn't matter. All world timelines past the event horizon go to the center. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So intuitively, you would think of it and say that yes, time would go backwards, but also. Uh, your volume relative to the rest of the universe would begin to expand. Yeah. Hey, Vigan, so you, you, in, oh, sorry. Instead of getting smaller, you would get start. You would continue to get smaller to the point that you would be inverting yourself basically and expanding in an opposite direction. If that even could make sense. Vegan, you, you liking this talk, Vegan? Is this working for you, girl? Absolutely. Yeah. And we have another really, really good question in the chat. It awesome. says. I have a question about the electron. I was taught that the Philippine wine dance demonstrates how a point can rotate 720 and return to its original position. Is this an accurate geometric example? So, uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's the question asking, is. It's I, asking, I, I'm going to touch this one. I don't know. Let me see if I get this. They're asking about a Filipino dance. Yeah. Where you rotate on point and yeah. do a 720 degree, a, a two full rotations. Mm -hmm. And come, why wouldn't you come back to your starting point if you do It's a geometrical. Uh, it's I'm like, not sure how it relates to the electrons, but. Yeah. Right. And electron, I'm electrons, not... I think of, okay, this is how I look at it. Electrons, I don't think of as a particle. I think, I think. What is They're point the, particles. Yeah, I don't, I don't, but I don't think of them as a discrete particles. I think of them as probabilities that exist somewhere in a range in a orbital, or, or for even maybe, in free space. They're just yeah, maybe yeah, this uh, is a reference to something that we're not getting. That could be because because electrons are a point source. They don't have any, as far as we know, they have no internal structure. Right. Yeah. Very so, on says, I heard the same thing that electrons had to be rotated 720 degrees to come to their original orientation. Oh, so instead of just I rotating, mean, they have a spin too. Oh, I see what they're saying. Thing. They're saying that if you just rotate an electron 360 degrees, um, it's not going to have the same properties if you low, rotate it at 720. Right. Yeah. But I'm not sure the is, reason. Is, is that is it is well, it right? Spin one half. Why see, is that? They're first... anti-symmetric fermions, so they have spin one half. Well, I mean, would that be uh, okay? Well, maybe I'm just getting that wrong. I thought it was whatever their spin was is how many times it would have to rotate before it, it might be. It might be coffee. one over the spin. I don't. I've never seen you, that. Maybe that's what it is. You think, it's the the you think it's reciprocal? It might be. Yeah, I'm not. I that's don't know. why a photon with spin one it should take by this reasoning only one spin. Yeah, what, photons what, have a, a spin of one. Theoretically, yeah, let, let's ask the, well, let's ask Steve first. Oh Jesus I'll Christ! Rest, no, because this is give the right answer. <laughs> I remember Steve fermions are one half, processes are one. Um, you know, I don't remember fucking. See, you you uh spin. you busted me on a, a sharpshooter question at one point with about the holographic principle, which I should have fucking known. Which I, I do accept, by the way, holographic principle. I do accept. So, if a graviton, a theoretical graviton, were to exist, what would its spin be? Uh, what's a boson? All bosons are one. Oh, Steve! Can I? No. Okay, okay. Steve. Is, it, is, it, is it wrong? I, I would Steve. love to try to answer this just off of the top of my head. Would it be zero? zero? No, God damn it! It's both wrong. What is it? What? No, it's, what? They're both wrong. Can I tell you why? Yes, yes it's, please. There's actually a reason for it. It's, <laughs> it's, it's spin two, and I'll tell you why. It's really cool. Oh, fuck. Okay, listen to this. This is cool. So the equations that you write down that are called the the stress energy tensor that describes the the the, the field that we're talking about, the rank of that tensor equals the spin of the gauge boson corresponding to that field. So wow. photon is a, has a rank, uh, the electromagnetic force has a rank one 
uh, stress energy tensor. You could write it down, all the components of electric and magnetic force. And so it's got a spin one gauge boson. If you do the same thing for Einstein's equations and the stress energy tensor for gravity, it's a, it's a rank two tensor. Yeah. Spin two boson. Oh, that's good. That's great. Yeah. You know what? I, I, I actually have seen that before now that I think about it. So fuck. Okay. You got me. <laughs> I like we're, it. I'm and an now, idiot. One, okay, one. Steve's stupid. We're one, we're one oh, and one, Steve. God, you get the next question for me one day. Oh, you can ask one. Great question. We both got you it wrong. Only off, you're only off by like one or two. That's pretty close. That's yeah, pretty yeah. goddamn big. <laughs> what I'm talking about. We're, we're, we're particle, stupid. Though. Okay, we're just dumb. What do you want from us? No, you're not. <laughs> Somebody clip that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't care. Anyways, so we're going to wrap up. Um, I've had enough to drink, and I gotta go make a pizza. I'm hungry. Um, but this was fun. Uh, I like Roman Coke nights. Again, we're gonna be doing it on Saturdays. We pick we have various things. I think we, you know we'll do like biology one week, or I don't know. We'll figure out something. Or just whatever you guys want to talk about. Um, but I want you guys to have a safe New Year's. I won't be broadcasting until I hit Texas. Um, until we we might do a we might on Monday do our caffeine corner. Chester and I haven't decided yet. I kind of think we should skip it. Myself. Yeah. I think we we've done like twenty episodes. I think yeah. we we need a break. Um, and it is New Year, so yeah. I don't want to do a New Year stream. I gotta I'm gonna get ready for going on my vacation, and so I I will be streaming on the fourth, so a week from today. I I may or may not have a New Year stream. I I don't know. It depends. You guys want, but I, I we're, we're gonna have fun with Team Skeptic. We're gonna be streaming on the fourth and the third. Mm -hmm. So how cool is that? That's gonna Hell be yeah. awesome. awesome. And I'll definitely be watching. We love you. Will you marry us all? Steve, you're I'm gonna be you're Polly. That's fine. Yeah, of course. You can marry us too, John. <sighs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. No. Steve, I'm going to probably be texting you uh, just once or twice to uh, touch base with you over your trip because I, I, I found a flight for $57. Nice. Uh, one way. It's uh, skip lagged. Oh. Are you going to get a hotel? Because. I'll just sleep in, in my car. I'll uh -huh. rent a car and just sleep. <laughs> make you... No, t talk to TJ Tuttle. He might be able to put you up for a night. That's what I do. He has a, he has a, he has a couch. <laughs> he has a couch. Right. He has a famous couch that Rich, Richard Carey even slept on. And I oh, have cool. a lap. That I was going to sleep on, but he told me it was like not that big for two people. And so I was like, okay, that's not going to happen. So I decided to get a nice hotel instead. But actually, best is me tomorrow on it because I'm going to go make a pizza and I've got to eat. And I'm going to shut down my computer for the night, I think. Nice. Good night, everyone. Time. Thanks for your input. Good yeah, night. thank you, Messenger. Love you guys. Thanks for for the people that joined for membership. Um, I really do appreciate it. it. Does show that there's a lot of support oh, for this channel. Oh. One, but, one last thing. Yes. Make sure everyone catches Atheist Sunday School tomorrow morning. Yes. And wait, tomorrow's <laughs> not Sunday. Well, today yeah, is, is technically Sunday. But, <laughs> yeah. At least for tomorrow. tomorrow is exactly Sunday. Oh, oh, because uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> You're right. Never mind. It is. I don't know what you're yeah. Can I can I plug something real quick? Because I think uh, yes. for everybody looking for some for some more shenanigans for tonight, I think I'm about to jump on my gaming channel, Team Skeptic VR, and uh, play some Call of Duty with a friend of mine. We're pretty funny. So nice. will you do it in the mankini? <laughs> I might just do that. I might I don't have my camera set up to my PlayStation, but I might just put on the mankini just for you. Uh, and do it anyway. We need mankini to, is actually quite comfortable. We need to figure you out put where. Put the mankini on. I'm coming. We need to figure out what Chesh, hey, Nick, are. and uh, mm -hmm. Vegan and uh, Sweet. <laughs> they all can stream with more appropriate attire. Yeah. I need to do the strip map and uh, mm -hmm. I'm down for that. I'll just show up completely naked already. Yeah, she's like, well, I'm done. I suck at math. Here you go. Yeah, I suck at math too, but you know. I don't like games. I like getting to the. It's a good thing. It, you know? It's all about the naked. Yeah, we understand that with you. <laughs> yeah. Very very quickly, so it'll be okay. <laughs> oh, good grief! All right, guys. Once again, thank you for becoming members. Uh, hopefully, we'll pick we'll up a few, and uh, it does mean a lot. Like I said, I've seen a lot of these other channels that that are being supported by by people, and it just boggles my mind because this channel's been around a long time, and we try to help um, and do what we can, and we try to educate, and we're gonna have a lot going on this channel the next year. Uh, also, with the non sequitur show coming back, it's going to be intricately re related to that. So, what we're going to be doing is having discussions on the non sequitur show, and then doing the, the after show over here. How cool is that? We're awesome. going to be, yeah. So we're going to be working things out. Um, so the people that do support this channel, they're also supporting 
you know, like hopefully the non sequitur show as well. But that's going to have a separate thing as well. But uh, thank you guys for watching and uh, good night to you all. And uh, boobies. Everybody say, yeah. bo everybody say boobies. 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 Good night, everybody. Those are birds, by the way. Birds, you dirty pervs. <laughs>